My cat is already screaming! The cat is screaming! Good morning! Good mo I am alive. I am alive. I went to bed so fucking late, chat. I... I went to bed so fucking l I need, like, a, a team of schizophrenics working with me. <laughs> Is it bad to be attracted to a cartoon fox that you don't even know that well? Good morning! Good morning. Hello! Hello, good morning! I don't wanna... Good fucking god. I have... <laughs> so much in the tabs today, chat. I figured you did, you fucking dummy chasing a tangent. I had to, alright, okay? I had to. I like six thousand year old lolly cum demon. It's a gato posting. The, the gato cat. posting will continue until morale improves. Or razor makes the damn mouse. Hell it's yeah! Time. Hell yeah! Thank you, thank you for cat posting in solidarity with me. Sometimes, sometimes I have to let that tweet go, and then I, I don't look back at it. But I appreciate all of you who who still comment on it or retweet it. You're fucking, you're fucking nuts. Dan Zanagri, thank you for the twenty dollar doodles. Thank you, thank you. How did my boat summoning? Oh! I'm so angry. Angry at boat! You're cute, chat. Didn't I want to do a sponsored? I have a sponsored stream to do? Wait, hold on. Wait a minute. What? What? Did I forget? Nim? Nim, am I forgetting something? I don't think I'm forgetting anything. But just in, just in case, I have to ask Nim. He is he is my oh my, my God, SSD. Nim, Nim. <laughs> I for, I don't I don't think I have one. But just in case, unfortunately for me, Nim is not paying attention to stream. It seems like, <laughs> and unfortunately for me, is it bad to be? Attracted no worries. To the it could just be you. I don't I don't know. I have to- I have to keep, like, a literal detailed log of everything I do. Cause I can't remember jack shit anymore! That's how I ended up with, uh, four appointments quadruple stacked on one fucking day. Needing to spread those out on the Thursdays throughout the month. I can't believe Kirsha forgot about her HelloFresh sponsors or- FUCK YOU, BODY! Nim. Nim. I forgot that today is Tangent Friday- oh, I didn't forget that. I didn't fucking forget that, dude. Mind eating hat. I will not put you on. Thank you for the 14 sex. You had a hot dog. Very appropriate. Hit. Help. Did I become the count from Sesame Street the other week? So maybe the stream is sponsored by a letter. This stream is sponsored by the letter F. For a word I'm not allowed to say. My Azure Lane is fucking broken. I hate emulator. Welcome to Kirsha stream and her spot. No, not sponsored by Hello Fuck. F stands for fruit. It does in more ways than one. Rats J M. Thank you for the YouTube member. Thank you for the member. Oh no, based soda. Thank you for the sixty-nine dollar doodles, my guy. Ramadan in a week. Any plans? Uh, I mean, when I was forced to go to church to be a Catholic, I didn't participate in the. The week that I'm only supposed to eat fish. I can't even remember what it's fucking called, so probably won't do Ramadan. <laughs> probably, probably won't do that. But thank you for the sixty-nine dollar doodles. I'm sure. I'm sure that is a uh, halal. What a Lent. Show. Thank you, chat. Ten ten. <laughs> Cheese ward lose game. Lent. It's on Quiz. Fridays. Quiz. I can't remember the names of things, Genesis chat. Fast, scholarly stimulating, secure, select, sincere, uh. spry, statuesque, supernal, sagacious, salient, svelte, spruce, strategic, sumptuous, uh. supportive, serene, swift, skilled, sublime, suave, scintillating, sagacious, sagely, satisfactory, snow fox, Saturday. Oh, yeah, that's the good stuff. God, I love alliteration. Why is it? Why does it feel so good, dude? Why does it feel so good? Slow motion re, true. Star Phoenix, thank you for the three month member. After watching side scrollers, I don't know whether to thank Kirsha for letting me know I might have to send out W nines for my side gig or cursor. Ah. Uh, my my CPA has also confused me because he said something different from my tax preparers from the past few years and from what like companies ask me for as well as an independent contractor. So now now I need to find someone who knows how to do taxes and ask them a question to ask them whether my CPA is gaslighting me. 
Uh, or I'm just not explaining well enough to this man what what I need. But I don't have anyone I can ask these questions to. I tried asking Econ Man and he was like, this is outside of my wheelhouse. <laughs> <laughs> don't let the feds get you. Oh my God. Oh my God. Um, but uh, I'm glad I'm glad you had a good time watching side scrollers. That was a, that was a fun ass time. That was a fun ass time. Certified penile applicator. What the hell? When will Lil B wear a shirt with my face on it? When I have the D surgery. I'm too ugly right now to put on a t shirt. <laughs> Moose Nugget, thank you for the ten dollar doodles. Catch up tithe, madame. May more normies be aware of the profane act of sounding and the insidious implementation bridge. So that their baleful influence might be purged. I agree. I just, I get so excited when I get to talk to people about bridge. I also get really nervous when I ask, get asked for like a quick rundown that I wasn't prepared for in real time. Like like when he was just like, tell me about Niji Sanji. I was like, oh God. Oh God, can I remember everything? Glorious Saturday to Foxu and chat. <clears throat> Saw your side scroller's appearance. And while mostly good, it seems that streamers feel the need to spend so much time on Super Chat in the middle of discussions when it isn't relevant to the topic at hand. Eish love. I agree. I feel like that's a, that might be a flesh streamer thing, since that happened on uh, on the last stream as well. See, it seems like flesh streamers just like, I don't know, they, they read they read the, the chat interaction like in real time. And I get it, dude. Like, it took, it took several collabs for me to not feel like hella panicked. When I would just ignore you guys. <laughs> Especially because I wasn't used to doing collabs, really. Alright, like, I just, like, I hadn't done too many. I was by myself on my own little Terra Island. So, it's a specific thing to that group of people. Okay, well, I mean, I maybe I'll believe you. I don't I don't know. I, I don't have much experience, but it's like... I, I just I just feel like when I, when I collab with people on my stream, I would feel very rude if I did nothing but, like lick you guys right that's so i'd rather have like a makeup stream which i do oh, need to i do need to dig into the archives and and thank some people from tuesday because i got behind in chat even without a collab <laughs> ignoring us is second nature now oh my god forgot to mention that the music video selen made was paid for entirely out of her own pocket and niji still took it down yeah i mean like i i can't remember everything off the top of my head when people ask me for a quick rundown and i don't i don't have like notes in front of me I have to, I have to like look Wait, at something to recount long? it, which, holy fuck, chat. I got, I'm, I'm sorry, but I got a oh, little bit of a black pill later. <laughs> Based soda, thank you for the ten dollars. When's the Herman Miller sponsorship? I have a, I have a secret lab chair, not a Herman Miller chair. I got, I got a secret lab. This thing is comfortable. This thing is, this thing is pretty comfortable, dude. 40 days-ish from Ash Wednesday to Easter. I remember Ash Wednesday. I, I would get palm leaves or palm fronds. I don't know, palm something. And I, I remember I would like, I would shake them around and they would wiggle. I, li I liked shaking them as a kid. Here's the chair we bought Asmund. Oh my God. Uh, light side darky. Thank you for the member. And rad storm. Thank you for member. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I was like, that is one thing I will say. As much as StreamYard seems like crazy boomer friendly, and OBS has like so much more customizability, I'm kind I'm kind of upset that StreamYards has that like ability to pop up the supas and shit, and like there's no way for me to do that in OBS. I'm a I'm a little bit jealous of that one feature. It's butt time. Andrew Lee, thank you for the five dollar doodles, Mistress Kirsha. Please accept this meager sum. To help repair the cracks in your Who armor that your recent collabs have caused. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for five dollars. The topic of today's stream is peering into the crystal ball and mind break. One guy on YouTube did a video on alternative scientific theories, which incorporates some form of magic. Sounds right for this stream. Can you link? I don't have... I don't... I, I, I gotta repress my internal urge to tangent. Because I don't even I don't even know if, if I'm gonna like get to everything I want fox. to today. And you put the fox in your house. Put me in the house! It's gonna do fox things. I do the fox things. What was cool about that podcast was on how many streaming sites they are aviable. Oh. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, fox shoe. 
<laughs> you saying I need to stream to more than just Twitch and YouTube? I can't handle more than two chats! Two chats is... Two chats is hard, chat! <laughs> I can't... I can't bring in more than two! I'm gonna end up like a fucking whore stuffed with hot dogs at the block party. <laughs> where's my... where's my fucking blue stacks? Here we go. Does it work? Hell yeah! She hates us! <laughs> Need to find a way to plug the chats directly into Kirsch's brain. True and real! Asmund only been taking L since the cuck chair? Yeah! My mega tangent today is gonna start with one of his videos, cause uh... Damn, he had a shit take! <laughs> uh, no. A gotcha? Yeah, I am a huge gotcha addict when it comes to Azure Lane. Uh, I've played this game for, like, five years now. <laughs> I've played this game for five years and I can't stop. I love, I love my busty boat women. They're beautiful and wonderful and I love them. As you can see, I'm level 138. You can't see it, but like, there you go. <laughs> so yeah, I play, I play a little bit. I play, a, I'm 1,000 off from doing a pull. Let me, let me grab... Let me grab my ticket and then I can yell in anger. Look, look at this, look at this fucking garbage. Look at this fucking garbage chat. 170 out of two. This is the worst fucking luck I've ever had trying to pull for a UR. I have never, never in my life needed to hit that fucking 200 pity, dude. Never needed to hit that 200 pity. I'm so fucking mad. I'm so angry! And you know what's crazy? I'm 170 pulls deep. I got like five or six copies of the of the fucking lolly bitch. I haven't seen a single copy of either the UR or Pomiat Mercuria. Ni neither of them have shown up in 170 pulls. I'm actually fucking molding. I have never had luck this bad in this game, dude. You had to do 136 pull to get yours. Usually like 130, 140 has been like the max that I've had to do, man. Just swipe? Why? You don't have to swipe. Do you see, do you see how many fucking cubes I have? I have 697 cubes left. It's not, it's not like I'm hurting. It's not like I need to spend fucking money, but it's still annoying that I have to use so many of my resources. Tora, thank you for the member. Don't worry if your Oshi has bad takes. It happens sometimes. Not to me, though. My Oshi only has good takes. Yeah. Like when I say eugenics is a good thing. <laughs> I sure love Meta's taking up space in my dock. Not me, dude. I, I can't remember the last time I actually used a Meta ship. I'm gonna be real with you. Your 20 pulls in and you got all of them, but Pommy at fuck you, buddy. <laughs> Fuck you, buddy! You only have 65 cubes left? You got two UR in the lolly, no elite or pom yet? Wait, how are you so low on cubes? You've been playing like as long as me! When a streamer becomes a cuck, they instantly just only have L takes? That's true. That's true and real. Slightly buff weeb! Thank you for the eight month member. It's almost been nine months! Can I end my membership and then reinstate it so I don't have to be born into the scary world yet? No. The Wait, time for birth is rapidly young? approaching. It's rapidly approaching. Radstorm, thank you for the five dollar doodles. You've been listening to Kirsha Tangent VODs all fucking day. Feel like you're about to OD on the Foxu? Well, welcome. Welcome to ZomboCom. Andrew B, thank you for the five dollar doodles again. I'm good. I've read it twice. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> Master Goa, thank you for the five dollar doodles. Kirsha Himbo, it's gonna have to take her to church. Her soul needs it. We've all seen the darkness of the boss's streams. Love the darkness, but you know. Sometimes, sometimes the darkness surprises even me. Let's, let's fucking, let's see if you guys are lucky for me. Let's see, let's see if I get, I get the UR because I pull on stream in front of you. Bling! Star Phoenix, thank you for the two dollars. Eugenics is a good thing. <laughs> Sanger intensifies. <laughs> Fuck, my dick was full! Have you you bitch! How Sweet Baby Incorporated has angered the Latin American community? One of them, though, they could point their minions at them and it just kicked the beehive. 
I don't know what's going on with the Latine community. I see all these people talking about Latinx, but you guys are like five years behind, dude. They've replaced Latinx with Latine. Everyone in South America is a toilet now. You gotta, you gotta be up on your progressive lingo, okay? <clears throat> also, no, you guys aren't lucky. Fuck you. <laughs> How could you do this to me? How could you do this to me? <laughs> I will throw you another PVC ball! A New Zealand deck a dick? No, I call my dock a dick because you put the women in it. Right? You know, it just makes sense. All the women are there. All the women are there. I used to- I used to have a hundred percent completion. Like the dirty dog you are! And then the donathon happened and Nim didn't understand what I meant when I- when I asked him to do the event for me. So I'm missing one shit, but it's okay. There'll be a rerun eventually. Thank you for the member? The fuck is your name? You're like a lake in Massachusetts. What the fuck? <laughs> Who am I missing? Uh, some French bitch. Some French bitch, not even 30 minutes, and she brings up sounding. <laughs> Stop manifesting snakes in my one. room. I was trying to say this man's name. <laughs> Master Go, they give the two dollars. Some of us might be evil, but we still have faith. True, true, and real. <laughs> I graduated top of my class. That was a magic. That was someone's name. <laughs> That was their name! <laughs> Get the ultra rare Russian waifu yet? No, I'm 180 pulls deep now! I'm probably I'm probably gonna get her on pity, dude. <laughs> Elizabeth, thank you for the member. Um, I heard about the trans with HIV in Canada who's breastfeeding his infant with the support of a lactation clinic. Your country is fucked to allow this. Uh I ha I don't even I don't remember if I talked about it, but I definitely had a tab open for scientists being like, hmm. A transgender breast milk is just as nutritious and healthy for babies as a uh, normal women breast milk. And I was like, this is why nobody trusts the science anymore. Go fuck yourselves. AIDS breast milk lotion when? Chat, I got so many tabs today. <laughs> let me let me find because where I was. Scratches, like I'm a real pet! Manya, manya, manya. There is a curator on Steam listing the game's Sweet Baby Incorporated <sighs> influenced and they have gone into panic mode from the light being shown on Oh, them. chat, you are not ready for my Sweet Baby tangent today. You are not fucking ready. Like I I got a black pill for you, unfortunately. Un unfortunately. We, 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 we have lost. <laughs> not surprised. Let's see here. Where, where did I leave off? Why did I leave off? I think I remember reading about Susan's kid ODing. I think I remember that. Mama na mama na ma. Rubbish soldier, thank you for the 499. Your brother pulled up Azure Lane as soon as he heard me mention it and he got the UR in 70 out of a 200. Fuck your brother. Fuck your brother right in the ace. Start with, with the black pills, we can end on a high note. I don't think I can do that because I, I I might go over time with how long my sweet baby tangent is, man. As as vo as fucking crazy. Um. Okay. All right. <laughs> Wait, is this too far behind? What was Tuesday? <laughs> What was, what was Tuesday? Tuesday was the 27th. Sorry to hear about your bussy. Sorry to hear about your bussy. Oh my god, I'm way behind. What the fuck? Okay. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I thought I was doing good, but in fact, I was not! This is the 27th, okay. Someone clip it as Kirsha promotes in incest? What the hell? <laughs> I only played the incest game. I didn't promote incest. Um, okay, I think, I think it was a uh, here. No. Oh, man. Oh, man, we had it. We had a we had a people lying to you loop. I see. 
あのあれ、あんがら、あんがら、スタート、ヒー。So I might, I might thank a couple of you guys、uh, twice, just in, just in case, just in case my brain can't remember. I was up until like fucking 7 a.m. or some shit. It was rough. I think I didn't fall asleep until like 9. More, Where's my browser? More milkies. Where's my browser? Browser Discord. I know. The amount of drugs that the certain people need to, or the trans people need to take to get milk out of them, women, look what they have to do to mimic a fraction of my power. To be fair, there are men who try inducing the lactation without claiming to be trans. I feel like, I feel like the people who end up being like, I need to start lactating and feeding babies have taken their fetish to a degree、uh, that they just shouldn't. Right? Like, there's, there's no way you're gonna convince me that you need to breastfeed a baby to stop feeling dysphoria. That's a fetish thing, and you should not be bringing actual babies into that. That's fucked up. <laughs> to the wood chipper. See, the baby has earned the heckling, honestly. Honestly. Torgo the White, thank you for the $5 doodles. The side scroller's appearance is great. Watching me break Craig and Blabs over and over again with the respective facial reactions was amazing. I, I couldn't even pay attention to their facial reactions because I was like, I, I don't know. I get really nervous when I'm in new places, dude. I'm always, I'm always really just like, oh god. Oh god, I'm in somewhere new. How terrifying. <laughs> Had an awesome party last night. It was very drunk and jolly. Some of your clips added to the laughs. Oh my god. Thank you for the hundred biddies and bringing me up at a party. Men don't need drugs to lactate. You knew a guy in high school who did it as a party trick? I just don't believe you. <laughs> Feet first into the wood chipper. Great face. Thank you for the two gift subs, my guy. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. You did great. You fit right in. Well done. I just like, I, the, only, the only thing I knew about Mel was that she was the, the lady that says the F word on Twitter. <laughs> I've seen this lady before. Everybody gets mad at her because she just says the F word and don't care. <laughs> Did I cover the sweet baby black pill yet? No. No, we got, I gotta start with thank yous. All right, we're thanking people. And then,、uh, and then I gotta go into a different tangent and then we're gonna loop back around to sweet baby. The sweet baby tangent is like 40 fucking tabs deep, dude. I, I don't even. I fell down a hole and could not find my way out. Fun fact, lactating without associated pregnancy might be an indication that you have a brain tumor. Well, as a man, though, you can't get pregnant as a man. <laughs> Watching Blabs practically rip her earbuds out from my ketchup was hilarious! She did what? <laughs> I love, like, even if I don't eat ketchup as much as I used to, keeping it on my desk still for the hilarity factor is wonderful. Nim Jubble checked, all cleared, no sponsor streams. Thank you, Ziz. Thank you. Are, you, are you typing in my chat because he said something and I didn't see it? <laughs> Says the F word, doesn't afraid of anything. I don't want to mod it yet either. I know I said I like body temperature milk, but not like this. Blazy, thank you for the five dollars. What, what, if, what if we kill you and behead you and then gut you like a Twinkie? And then we pour the milk inside of your flesh bag. And we use your penis as the little doohickey to drip the milk from. Like you're one of those beer steens. What about that? That's like, that's like a cannibal party, right? The sweet baby is what Anita Sarkeesian wishes she could be. Oh, you are more correct than you know. Hello, find me from the LMS stream. My content is incredible. Thank you. Thank you. I am very strange, VTuber. Kirsha noises are always great. Non FBI, thank you for the two. Ah! Is trans milk nut milk or man milk? I mean, man milk because it's not from nut. Should apply to be one of those monsters from Hellraiser. I felt a hiccup coming, but then it didn't happen, you bitch. <sighs> Consider Sudoku. My brain isn't big enough. So weird how the Sweet Baby Inc. is happening right now for the 10 year anniversary of Gamergate. No, that's not weird at all, actually. <clears throat> Motherfucking C. Thomas Peasant, thank you for the $2 on Tuesday. 
We can be friends! We all got a touch of the tism. That's true. True and real. Rodrigo, thank you for the two-month member. I mean, gay guys might just see me as the masculine counterpart to their femininity. Maybe, but I do not wish to date gay men. It feels like a coincidence. You're guessing there's some reason for it? Yep. Seven's Requiem, thank you for the five dollary doodles. Did you hear me say that them garden tools ain't loyal? Yes. Them hoes ain't loyal. Don't, don't trust them. Pretty sure you've been possessed by Kirsch's Hiccup because you've been getting them a lot lately. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but also please take them away from me. Nim's touching grass and didn't type in chat here. He responded in Discord when we asked and pinged him. Oh, I didn't know he was touching grass today. You, you know what's sad? We are bound and likely to deal with this for another 20 to 40 years. If we're lucky, only 20 to 40. That's true. <laughs> a dumb little snugget. They give the $2 on Tuesday. No, that's how you get turned into a coat. Do you have any idea how many courses you would need to make a coat? It takes like 200 chinchillas to make an adult-sized coat. So it, it would probably take around 100 Korsha to make a coat. <clears throat> the gay men are calling Kirsha, except the strap on. No! No. And for creatine, thinking of the $10 doodles. If you ever pulled that crap with a girl, you swear your grandfather, Greek Orthodox priest, would crawl out of his grave and choke you out with his bony fingers. That or your still alive grandma would. <clears throat> Those are good people. <laughs> those are good people I wish we had those to threaten the men that I try to date Infernal Saxon thank you for the two dollars I find you intriguing let's have a chat we're chatting right now Korsha chicken farm for their fur do not put them in icky conditions I read that before I mean probably my, my purview is I would rather thank people twice than forget to thank people entirely and when I get behind in Supa Chats, I have like a bit of a catch-up segment so I can thank the people who supa that I that I didn't get to in a stream. It happens sometimes. So if, if I thank someone twice, you know, I just, it's just I'd rather thank you twice than not thank you at all. Chinchilla coat would attract the mold in humid areas, true and real. You're gonna catch up! Yeah, exactly. Grandma used to have a silver fox hang around her neck. Uh, there was a clasp in the jaws, so it would bite its own tail. That's kind of cute. That's kind of cute. This week in your job, you're cabling costumes about contract reasons, and there was a woman which was literally named Pippa. How funny is that? Do the Korsha. One of the times I saw Pippa trending on Twitter, I was actually a British autogynephiliac CEO, and I was very confused. <laughs> this is a sweet baby backlash Trojan horse. It's uh, we'll get we'll get to sweet baby. It's crazy, dude. It's it's kind of crazy, dude. Improv man, they give the two dollars. It is decided you will have soup later, but not Campbell's soup. Fuck Campbell's, dude. Master Goa, they give the two dollar doodle. What time? Well, the government is making Kier's men gay to stop her jeans. You know it's probably true. It's a government conspiracy, so that my my bloodline does not continue. A Phoenix DS, thank you for the five Canadians. Where you live, the gene pool is rather shallow, and they've been all around the block more than I can count. Sad that I see them while at work. You're saying that your view while at work is just watching incest people wander around the streets? Where in Britain do you live? Animal fur coats are pretty disgusting, in your opinion. If you aren't using the fur for warmth and are just being vain, you're a bad person. I mean, I don't, I don't really care if people have fur coats. I just like, shrug. <laughs> It's the global depopulation agenda at work. Lives in the same town as Andy and Lele. True, true and real. Max euphemism, thank you for 499. You couldn't decide on a major in college. You flipped a coin, landed in electrical engineering. Your trajectory was decided by fate and the cosmos. Oh, thank you for the 499. I hope you're enjoying where fate has thrust you. Or thrust into you, I guess. And for creatine, thank you for the two dollars. What's gay or traps or fuda? They're both equally as gay. Fuck off. <laughs> Neon Suspenders, thank you for the $5. Just got an in-person interview for Sysasm, and we're gonna make it! Good luck on your interview, if it's if it's not already happened. I hope you get the fucking job, dude. The world needs biker lesbian babies. We will find Kirsha a man. Maybe. Al Malone, thank you for the ten dollar doodles Slightly related question. Would I befriend Chris Chen in my younger years? I remember this one. I remember this one. Romans had it right. It's not gay. You're just sexually dominating a weaker male. No, that's gay. No, that's gay. And also, I'm not- I'm not sure. I don't know how autistic I was when I was younger. <laughs> I believe that we need to eat meat to survive. Well, yeah, we're- we're omnivores. 
You're okay with being gay for liking Fuda? Give me the taker point of view prawn, bro. I mean, it's okay to be gay. It's just, it's just admit it, you know? Radstorm, thank you for the $2. Is it gay for women to like traps? Do not the Fuda. I wouldn't say that it's gay because the trap is a man, so no. Phoenix DS, thank you for the two Canadians. I want to know warped? Just look into furries. Why would you assume I don't know what furries are? Why would you assume I don't know about rainforest? I think it's gayer to try and defend it, right? Five hounds, thank you for the five dollars. B64, have tall girl fetish? The Lord has already blackpilled me. This man needs to hunt for like college basketball women. Are you sure you're behind? There hasn't been a single one I didn't read on screen yet. I thought I was, but maybe I'm crazy. I don't fucking know, man. I don't. F I, th I thought I was behind. I rem I have a memory in my brain of me saying I'll have to do catch up on Saturday because I know I'm behind. I remember saying that. It once took an hour long test to see what job you would qualify for. The universe told you to be a window washer. What the hell? You swear I've read all of these. I remember the Filipino Frank one. I remember that. Randomly randomly setting off ASMR with tappies. I don't remember that one, so thank you for the two dollars, goob. Thank you for the two dollars, goob. I don't I don't remember I don't remember this either. Phoenix DS, thank you for the ten Canadians. You could do a hot ones challenge. Reaper 51 is 1.5 mil SCH compared to Da Bomb. I don't know what any of that means. Like I know you're talking about hot shit, but I don't know what that means. Infernal Saxon, thank you for the five dollars. Mail on stream! It's USPS on another note, since it's been brought up again. Do you know about the secret underground cheese bunkers? How come how come there are so many people bringing up the cheese bunkers to me recently? How is how is this humanly possible? I was like, what? Cheese bunkers are like so fucking surface level conspiracy. Uh, like they they might as well be in the hands of people on the island. It's a meme now. <laughs> Can't even handle mustard. Hey, mustard's kind of spicy. <laughs> a post about it went viral, so now everybody's an expert on it. Oh, okay. It's someone's birthday, and they asked me for nail taps on the mic, and I did like two minutes of the tappies. I don't think I did it for that long. And there was a tappies thing like way, way above there. Maybe they were behind in chat. I don't know. All right, Hidden, thank you for the four ninety nine about sundresses. <laughs> Necron Overlord. Well, thank you for the two dollary doodles. Good luck for your promotion in Montana, dude. Good luck. Oh uh, no. Oh uh, no. <laughs> Sergeant Buck, thank you for the $10. Even if I read this before, on an event day, I can spend up to 18 hours on the clock between prep and on site work for cater catering. Hassan probably works so little with his hands, he can't comprehend a grilled cheese sandwich. I fucking love grilled cheese sandwiches, dude. I haven't made one in a hot fucking minute, but I love them. Master Go, I think you have the $2. Kier still has to manage and fire us sometimes. True and real. Evil man Drake, thank you for the member! The streaming has nothing on being a lifeguard. You failed to guard a life. It's been 10 years and it will never stop haunting me. Minimum wage, by the way. I don't I don't know if this man was joking or not, but if not joking, that is actually horrifying. It, that is actually horrifying. To have like tried to save someone's life and then like it just not just not being able to? God damn. I'm sorry you had to deal with that. Thank- thank you for the member. Sorry to hear about your bussy. That's good timing, thank you. <laughs> Danny D, thank you for the 999. Hassan is the same as the mega church pastors who say God needs you to give money. Preaches about the virtues of holy poverty while being worth 33 million dollars. <laughs> Peak hypocrisy, true. Very true. Hayden. 75. Thank you for the five dollar doodles. I don't think anybody is saying streaming isn't hard or stressful, but he's saying a real job isn't so soul sucking is where he fucked up. Yeah? Yeah, probably. I was uh it was like very poor wording, and then like him and Asmin trying to defend that wording have been have been nuts to watch. The fact that we trust teenagers to save kids from drowning and then pay the minimum wage is kind of fucked. A little bit. User unknown, thank you for the two dollar doodles. Sweet baby's gamergate too. It's like poetry. It rhymes. What? Uh, Master Goa, thank you for two dollars. It's fun, even though she hates us. I don't hate you. I don't hate you. And I'm trying my best to not tangent on Sweet Baby right now. I apologize. I was like, I'm struggling, dude. Sergeant Buck, thank you for the five dollars. Catering is tough with long hours, but it's worth it when the client comes back to the kitchen and tells me their dinner was the best they've ever had. 
I look forward to when I have a wedding, having like the catering for it, but it also makes me nervous because like, what if, what if I order a cake and then the cake shows up and it's like some nightmare amalgamation that doesn't look anything like what I was promised, you know? Human lives are something I shouldn't be left in charge of. Relatable. Rel relatable. As long as they're adult humans. I don't want to be responsible for adult humans. <laughs> Have I seen young Rippa's take? He says it's soul sucking because Hassan is a phony. Uh, I don't know who Young Rippa is, so no, I have not. But like, soul sucking is not the word I would use. It's definitely draining. But like, again, I also have anxiety and I need to sleep like 12 hours just by going outside. So I think I have a warped perspective on like how draining is. Eric July is Young Rippa. Oh, okay. Okay. I, was, I know him by his name, not Young Rippa. You heard me breaking things. Nim, I didn't know you were out touching grass. A soul by a They give you the five dollars. To the dude who was a lifeguard, I would give you a hug, man. I hope that's not true. Also, hi, Kirsha. Hello! Hello, hello! Eric July is the creator of Ripaverse. Ah. Nim. I'm not good at names, Nim. chat. So even if I know something, I'm probably going to forget the name of it. I'm going to be real with you. I'm going I'm to be fucking real with you. Abyssal Tech, thank you for the five dollars. Well, you were in the Navy, you saw a guy almost scalp himself running through a hatch. They made us clean up all the blood. How? How? How does that happen? I mean, maybe I can't visualize what a naval hatch looks like, but what? Having a chair on stream reacting to videos is soul sucking, clearly. I don't know, that man, that man's kind of weird, dude. He kind of weird. Emperor Creatine, thank you for the five dollar doodles. A spring 2020 was your last college semester, went into IT. It wasn't that bad for you either. Unfortunately, you could not create free money LLC though. That's a shame. You could have gotten a free twenty thousand dollars if you could have. <laughs> he scraped his scalp on the metal rim of the hatch. Yeah, but like how do you scrape your head on the metal rim of a hatch so hard that you start like peeling your brain off? You know? Like how does that happen? A brominated vegetable oil. Thank you for the ten dollar doodles. Life changer. Buy or make garlic butter and use that as the spread on the outside of your grilled cheese. Use a combo of mozzarella or provolone with American cheese. Thank me later. Is I don't like American cheese. Cartoon Fox that you don't even know that well. I'm not a fan of American cheese, but the rest of that shit, hell yeah, hell yeah. Sometimes I'll put fresh garlic and uh, oh god, what's that type of cheese? What's that type of cheese? I'm losing my mind. It's, it's cream cheese, but it's not cream cheese, and it's got a very Italian name. Mascarpone. Thank you, chat. <laughs> I like I like, uh, I like spreading mascarpone and uh, fresh garlic on the bread uh, before I put, like, actual sliced cheese on it. American cheese has its place. I just don't believe you. I just don't believe you. Did the guy die or leave? Well, I mean, they didn't say he died. It said almost scalped him, so... Uh, squeaky moose. Squeaky moose. Ba 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 I love the butter dog, man. Butter dog just makes life so nice. Sweet baby, they're only good when dead. They're vermin, as I've said, and worse. They're. <gasps> They're what? You can't just cut off like that, TTS. Lord Brown Bear, thank you for the 69 butter dogs. And for making me want a tangent on Sweet Baby again already. <gasps> thank you! Thank you, thank you, Lord Brown Bear! I'm sorry about the glow he's getting you with the end of your sentence. <laughs> thank you! A squeaky moose. Thank you for the 4 dollars I was working on condos when I was younger and an illegal worker fell and died. His people threw him in the dumpster. That was a day. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? We were... I don't understand. I don't, I don't understand, man. I'm so glad I don't have to work these kinds of jobs. Hiro Takasugi, thank you for the 9.99. Your predecessor messed up a budget calcu... Help. Calculation and expense projection. 50 people lost their jobs, including him. Imagine the sole expense and stress every day 
and his salary is less than Hassan. Ooh. Ooh. I can't imagine making like one error in a budget calculation and it affecting that many people. That is, that is terrifying. <clears throat> What stream are these super chats from? Holy shit, Tuesday. <coughs> they were uh, from Tuesday's stream. That's hella rough. Emperor Creatine. Thank you for the five dollar doodles. Work from home. You can't do that. You're not a rich upper class liberal. You need to go back to the office like the corpo slaves you are. And this is what I mentioned on side scrollers that I recently talked about the working from home shit on stream. <laughs> Super Iron Bob! Thank you for the five dollar doodles. I benefit from working in the office, especially since it allows me to coerce people who refuse to respond to email or Slack. I just- I just do that, like, office speak per my last email, following up on this, you know? <laughs> I would Sudoku if that were you. Oh, Jesus. That sounded really chunky. I, uh, I tried Mucinex, uh, at the beginning of the week. Uh, I don't like... I don't like how when you take Mucinex, you can taste it in the back of your nose for the rest of the day. ...that the final chapter will be as long as the previous two combined. It might be wise to complete the second chapter before the final release. Especially if you want to see the alternate endings. I have no idea what you're talking about. I'll have to reread that one later. I'm, I have no idea. I don't know what endings you're talking about. Maybe Attack on Titan? Question mark? Mucinex dries you the hell out too. It does! It does! Uh, no. As a synapse, thank you for the 10 er. When you mixed environments, you'd at times be too lazy and at times hallucinate work calls while sleeping. Buying a second computer and using one for work and one for play resolved both issues. My biggest issue with like remembering stuff for stream is exactly that. <laughs> Like, I don't think I've hallucinated anything, but I've definitely had dreams that felt like they were real. And it's it's gotten to the point where, like, my, my routine is so set in stone that my dreams can mimic reality to the point where I think I'm still asleep. Like, uh, a few weeks ago, I, like, I, I was, I was dreaming, right? Like, I was dead asleep. But in my dream... I was like getting up and peeing and setting up for stream only to realize that it was a dream and then being re like relieved it was a non-stream day and then like waking up in the dream and then like falling back asleep because I didn't need to stream and then like it, it would go through the whole thing again right so like I would get up I would pee I would go to my computer and then like I would realize oh I'm still asleep and then I would like go back in the bedroom and like see myself asleep and then like lay back down you know, and then, like that that looped just so many times that like I felt I felt a little a little bladder tinge and I jolted awake because like I was I was probably close to pissing myself, dude. <laughs> that was like the most horrifying dream I've had in a long time. I was just like, please stop the piss loop. <laughs> That's probably what the loop was about, yeah. Please don't become a piss tuber. How the fuck do you see yourself in the bed? Because I was asleep! And it was a dream! But since it was looping, I couldn't tell when the dream, like, ended, right? <laughs> Sounds like it could be an episode of Twilight. If you ever see a toilet in your dreams, it's a bad sign. The worst dreams, for me, are the ones where my teeth fall out. Those are the most horrific ones. To be Kirsha's sheets when she pees. What is wrong with you? Once dreamt that you were a Walmart greeter sitting on a toilet taking a shit while you greet people? I hope you didn't shit the bed. <laughs> yeah, my body was trying to wake my ass up. <laughs> Speaking of dreams, you should get to watching Twin Peaks. Every time you guys make a Twin Peaks reference while I'm playing a Deadly Premonition, I've never watched Twin Peaks, so I don't get the, the Twin Peaks jokes. Which is probably a good thing, because it might spoil things in the game for me. Junbagu, thank you for the $2. What kind of NPC would I be? Be an ice cream cart salesman. Phoenix DS, thank you for the 10 Canadians. A streaming room so soundproofed that you could scream bloody murder in it and no one would know. Streaming room level 2 also doubles as a safe room with a bar fridge, bed and wash, and kitchenette. That's just like a studio apartment, what do you mean? 
Of course, I come in and you're talking about almost pissing yourself. What do you mean? Of course! That's not a normal topic! Master Gowen, thank you for the $2. It could have been astral projection and not a dream. I don't think it was astral projection. The game is more of a spoiler for Twin Peaks than the other way around. Oh, okay, okay, all right. Anya? What? Evil man, Drake! Big, big balloons. You should expand on your lifeguard story because it could sound worse than it is. Guy had a heart attack. Detective said you did as good as it could be done for him. Still doesn't stop the guilt. Yeah, I don't think I would feel guilty about that because like he didn't drown, right? You're a lifeguard. You're not. You're not God. You can't resuscitate someone from a COVID. Sh I mean, a, a heart attack, right? Like you're. You're fine, dude. I was like, I I get feeling bad because like he still died, right? But like you couldn't you couldn't have done anything about that. Heart, heart attack, pretty fucking serious, man. That's pretty fucking serious. So were we 100% ripped off Twin Peaks for the game? That'd be one thing if he admitted he was a fan, but he said he had no idea the show existed when he included shot-for-shot -shot references. Oh, that's kind of silly. If you used references, just, like, admit it, bro. Like, it's not a big deal. <clears throat> Spider Dude 93 thank you for the $5. Still work on horror stories. Your dad saw a co-worker lit up like She's a Christmas tree kid. on Christmas! Wait by an industrial electric panel. When I was in middle school, I was in special education, sitting in an empty classroom doing literally nothing the entire school day. Began having loop dreams, wake up, make it to the end of agonizing day, nope it was a dream, wake up. Hundreds of times. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? My favorite dreams about high school were when I would light people on fire that I didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> Toast Engineer! <clears throat> Thank you for the $10! <laughs> That's horrifying? No, it's not horrifying. I lit them on fire in my dreams. I never I never did that in real life. It'd be horrifying if I did it in real life. <laughs> That's sweet, Kirsha. Thank you. Sometimes I would even incorporate Pokemon into my pathological maniac dreams. Hey, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd have, like, a Charizard who would help me light them on fire or something, right? Or maybe I would freeze them in a block of ice with a dugong. Sign of a warm nature. <clears throat> Never had dreams about that period, but plenty of college nightmares about failing exams. I don't think I ever had a single bad dream about failing an exam. You should wake up. Fuck you, buddy. Fuck you, buddy. Also, I don't think I would like to see someone get electrocuted to that degree. I'm glad they lived. Uh, unfortunately, they were crispy, though. A best of lazy. Thank you for the hundred pounds. What the fuck? Thank you for the hundred pounds. God damn. God damn. Now I feel extra bad. Because I don't, I don't know if I thanked you for this when it happened. I hope you don't hate me now. I hope, I hope you don't hate me and, uh, and aren't planning a super villain arc to find me and behead me. Is it bad to be attracted to a cartoon fox that you don't even know that well? I work from home and I find it better than the background noise in the office, but the soul-sucking part is when I realize that my field, consulting, is a glorified scam and parasitic in nature. Oh, thank God. I did answer this. Oh, thank God. I'm not- I'm not a cunt. Hell yeah. Kirsha, you've been in a coma since 2009. Please wake up. I wouldn't- I wouldn't doubt it. Thank you again, Best Velazi, for the- uh, the hundred pounds, dude. King Heavy Meta! Thank you for the $20. Job market was terrible during lockdown. And companies listed positions that didn't exist just to get federal money, was laid off as an IT admin, and it took seven months to find work in construction. That seems like a really long time to find a construction job. What the fuck? Hello! If we talking work horror stories, I got a few. When I was a blow molding technician, one of the breakers had a faint black stain on the floor in front of it with two footprints. What I love the? environmental storytelling. What? I would be terrified of touching that, dude. What the hell? What the hell? What the hell? Master Go, I think you for the $2. We dream so we don't have to commit war crimes. Exactly. That's what the Korsha is for. Steel King, they the $5. Would have been kicked out of the military if you hadn't taken the job. You did what you had to. You're taking the jab. Yeah, yeah, we loop on the jab a little bit here sometimes. Razorwind VT, thank you for the $5. It infuriates you. Now the spoiled idiot thinks he has it harder compared to, say, someone like you who's stuck working awful retail jobs wanting to die. I remember this one, and I remember you made a follow-up one because we talked about this. I remember! Ghost X, thank you for the $10. I remember reading this one. Rough Times, thank you for the $2. I remember that as well. M 
super creatine. Thank you again for the ten dollar doodles. Razor one, thank you for the thank you for the the, the follow up of five dollar doodles. Bob Davis, thank you for five dollar doodles. I remember I remember this one as well. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to hear about your mom once again. Jesus Christ. Brady Crippen, thank you for the five dollars. Only COVID shots you had were two shot glasses. It's a COVID <laughs> shot one and two. Rum the ham, thank you for the five dollars. Don't forget there's an unknown amount of people who just lied to their employer in colleges. Those cards weren't hard to forge. Based, honestly. Master Goa, thank you for the two dollars. MRNA should be avoided at all costs. It mutates DNA. I don't know why they rolled that one out uh, so quickly. What the fuck, Lala? Thank you for the two dollar doodles. Hey, can I ask why you don't like short fat otaku? No. Master Master Goa, thank you for the two dollars. MRNA is the slippery slope to forced transhumanism. I don't think that is the case. I don't I don't think that's the case. Spiker Ileron, thank you for the 199. Instead of UBI, a better idea is to slash taxes. You wouldn't be able to pay for UBI if you slash taxes. Maybe people would have more money. I don't know. My bra my brain's not big enough to like think about what to do in those sort of conversations. Prime example of a candy ass. So I, I don't know. There's been there's been a lot there's been a lot of people recommending SFO videos to me recently. If you're one of those people, I'm gonna let you know right now. That's just gonna get ignored forever. I'm not watching that. <laughs> just uh, this is this is your one sign. Stop suggesting I watch those videos. Is this a rewind? Uh, I'm thanking people. It's not a rewind. I'm just I'm just thanking people from Tuesday because I got behind in super chats. It seems like I missed a section in the center and then like started reading them again. I don't know. My brain is mysterious and doesn't work all the time. If they wanted to force transhumanism, they would just release a virus that changes your DNA. Yeah. Yeah. Do your reps, chat. DRT is king. Thank you for the twenty dollar doodles. Most homeless are structurally homeless, meaning that the drug-addled homeless will forever be with us. I remember. I remember. <clears throat> I remember reading this one as well. Thank you again for the twenty dollar doodles. A spike or island around, thank you for the 199. Uh, no, thank you for another 199. We get tax on all levels of government. Looking at houses again recently, one thing that didn't tick in my brain until, until like last week was, oh fuck. What? Mm, geez, what about the states that don't have state income tax? Wouldn't that be a better place to move? Work horror stories. I spent the better part of five months living out of a semi in St. Louis. Oh if I had a nickel for every time I saw someone get meat crayoned by a truck, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird I've seen it twice. That is weird you've seen it twice, especially when you were living out of a semi. What the fuck? Also, I don't like the I don't like the term meat crayoned. I'm not a fan of that. Property tax is there to gape you? I mean, Every state has property tax. You're not going to be able to escape that, right? But some states don't have sales tax and some states don't have state income tax. So at the end of the year, when you have to pay your income taxes, you only have to pay to the federal government and not the state government on top of that. Welcome to Which, like, I'd sweats. rather not pay to either of them, but if I can cut out one of those, that'd be a good idea, right? Fima. Uh, reven, reven, and tax, revenential taxes. I'm illiterate. Thank you for the member. Thank you, thank you. A spiker Isler on the of the one ninety nine. Imagine all the taxes going back into your pay. I wish I could imagine. Christopher A, thank you for the fifty Mexicans. We're gonna transform into the fat blobs from Wally. -E. I wouldn't doubt it, actually. DRT is king. Thank you for the five. Better option to UBI would be mass extraterrestrial colonization, as those skills are not needed in the core and will be needed at the edges. Maybe? I we don't have the technology quite yet to terraform other planets, but maybe maybe in the far flung future where I imagine UBI would be unavoidable, we will have the ability to colonize other planets. You know? Maybe maybe we'll be there. New Hampshire and Vermont are kinda like the Florida of the North low key. Every time I try to look for Victorian houses in New England, I get fucking pissed. All these fucking boomers who have turned these really nice houses that were one family homes into fucking apartments that you can stuff five different families into. I'm sick of it, dude. I was like, it, it makes me just want to like kill all of the boomers on, uh, in dreamland, of course. <laughs> Claymore. Thank you for the five dollars. Working at an amusement park, one of the maintenance guys almost got his arm torn off by the wheel that pushed the swinging pirate ship. Why? 
That sounds scary. Is, is this why carnies are also all juggalos? Cause like they don't they don't fear their arms getting ripped off by the rides. Danny D, thank you for the 499. Tax dodging is an obligation. Yeah, that's why you try to write off as much as humanly fucking possible. I'm watching you. You can't say that. What do you mean, Nim? What do you mean? In Terraria. True. Hidden, thank you for the 499. Turn them into soil and grain. Solve world hunger. I do not want the ethical cannibalism. Radstorm, thank you for the five dollars. Playing Warhammer 40k Power Wash Simulator DLC to de-stress from work, while listening to Kirsha to re-stress about everything else. Why is why is there a Warhammer 40k Power Wash DLC? Mm, cheeseburger. <laughs> that seems like a weird crossover. My last job, I worked for the Department of Transportation, and we helped police with traffic control at accidents. I've seen twelve fatality crashes that I can what? remember. It sounds bad, but you get used to it. I mean, I'm sure you get used to it if you see it all the time, but like, God, that's still a lot. That's still a lot. Like, I've seen people get shot and left on the sidewalk, but I'd still get shocked if I saw another person get shot and left on the sidewalk, you know? There was a SpongeBob Power Wash DLC. I mean, at least that one makes sense, right? I, I, just, I don't know. <laughs> If they get the chance to make it, of course. I'm not saying it shouldn't exist. I'm just saying it's surprising. It's not what I would have expected. <laughs> Some grumpy goat. They give the $5. Speaking of self-serving AI robots, have you seen the Polish self-serving cat robot named Kerfus? It follows people around and offers chips. I have not. Hidden. Thank you for the nine ninety nine. When people require a baseline level of stress or they fall apart, I wish I had less stress. I'm falling apart with too much stress. My baseline level of stress needs to be... Empty brain. No thoughts. A Bennington Brock. That sounds like a porn name. Thank you for the five. Ah. After nearly two years of lurking, you decided this will be a first super. Here's to all the years of white pills and day making jokes to come. Thank you. Thank you. Liquid Bismuth. Thank you for the 499. Am I familiar with Deadwing Dork? If yes, what are my thoughts on him or his content? Nope. Never heard that name in my life. Do you live in Detroit? What the frick? No, I haven't seen people get shot since like moving to the south, but. I've seen a lot of disgusting people since moving to the South. The people getting shot was when I was in Massachusetts. Lance, thank you for the 499. And thank you for coming on the side scrollers this week. Craig and Blabs are not prepared for the donkey and VTuber facts. Please come back on. I'd love to. I had a fun ass time. I thought it was real fucking fun. Radstorm, thank you for $5. I will have you know that the Warhammer 40k Power Wash DLC fucking slaps. Are you cleaning the blood of your enemies off of your palace? Like, what? how does that work? Star Phoenix, thank you for $2. K Schwab, look, it's either the Soylent or the Bugs. I don't want either of those! Nocturnal007, thank you for the $2. Oh, the corpse starch pits don't clean themselves. I guess true. You say tax choose it, and while they have crazy taxes on, like, sugar and soda and everything fun, uh, they still don't have as high property taxes as, like, New Jersey, I've learned. Never played Viscera Cleanup Detail. I played Viscera Cleanup Detail before I streamed, I'm pretty sure. If, if it's that old, I'm pretty sure it was bef either before I streamed or like while I was streaming, but not on stream. I hated Viscera Cleanup Detail. I thought it was a shitty game and it was boring. Sorry, chat. <laughs> I'm for Creatine. Thank you for the five dollar doodles. 40k demands you purge the unclean. So it's natural for there to be a Power Wash Sim DLC for it. God forbid you make 40k fan projects, though. Hmm. But in the Power Wash simulator, are you, like, power washing humans that are strung up on walls? And the power washing is so, like, powerful? Like, the, 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 the force behind the water can, like, slice them in half? Is that, is that what you do? Can confirm I'm from New Jersey. Our state booty blasts us with the property taxes. It's fucking nuts. It's fucking nuts. Power washing the streets of Mass Massachusetts. Ma Massachusetts. Power wash the mechs and the vehicles. Oh, okay. So you're like literally the janitor of the world. James Moore, thank you for the five dollars. Miss Cherry, don't forget about your protein. I forgot when you're supposed to take it, so I'm just reminding you so you can remind me. 6 p.m. I think it's past 6 p.m. Not now, but like in the past. Tim Combs, thank you for the $10. They give you UBI to tax your UBI to give you UBI. Same way if the government makes resources, 
the government makes the goods, foods, entertainment. Why not give it directly? I'm 50 minutes behind. I mean, y you do have a point. Kalanon, they give the $2. Subbed, just found you. Love the energy. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know how to breathe. Star Phoenix, they give the $2. You got paid to steal. You're the government. I don't remember what that's in reference to. Slinger, your name continues to terrify me every time I see it. Thank you for the $5. The phrase, teach me what you want me to do, does nothing for you. Good to know. What? Master Goa, thank you for the $2. Bows. Eat more before we have to give you batteries. Do not, do not sound me with the batteries. Do not do that. Do not. And uh, let me, let me take a look at Twitch here for a second. Oh God, it's broken. Blue reprisal, thank you for the 50 month resub two days ago. Thank you! 50 months is a hell of a long time. I can't do math, so I don't know how many years that is, but that's a lot of years. 20, 24 months is two years. But 24 and 24 is more than 50, so that's not that's not four years yet. I don't know, man. That's a lot. That's a lot of years. Winter Winter Sparrow. Hello. Four years, two months. Wait, really? It's over four? That's a 20. Oh, 24 and 24 is 48. Chat. I can't do math. My brain's like not too tired. <laughs> I can't do math. Red hair across, they give it five dollars. Did I see the cutest fuck McDonald's Japan pixel art cat girl ad? I did, I even retweeted it. Master Goa, thank you for the two dollars. Take Soylent over the bugs if you can choose who. Can I just choose to martyr the person giving me the options instead? And then eat them? Radstorm, thank you for the five dollars. It's a dirty job and I am the Emperor's cleanest soldier. Are you though? You're the brother from Kubi? And you want to ask if I can raid her Saturday? I don't know who that is. Is this a bot? I don't I don't know who that is. <laughs> what would be the difference from the Soylent? Well, the Soylent's liquefied human, and if I kill a guy in front of me, if I kill if I kill a guy in front of me, he's going to be fresh meat, you know? They're definitely spamming. Oh no. Long pig. Yeah. Has anyone ever sounded with the tongue-eating parasites that screw fish over? Why? Why would you ask that? Account was created yesterday and spamming that message. Oh, if he's been spamming it, that was the first time I've seen it. <laughs> Rob Sham, thank you for the slubby bubby, thank you. And Rob Sham! Rob Sham slapping me with his cock while Welcome I'm offline? What the slice. fuck? Rob Sham, thank you for the 10 gift subs yesterday. Well, I wasn't streaming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank On the topic of dreams, I had a vivid dream when I was seven of entering the office of some weird man in a black and red suit and he offered to make a deal for, in his words, abilities for the years to come. Kind of creepy, looking back, not gonna lie. How did you have an office dream at seven years old? That's my question. That's my question. <laughs> Sky Zanon, thank you for the six month resub. Uh, for real, Joe the second, thank you for the four month resub. Rub a dub seven seven seven, thank you for the thirteen month tier three resub. Big you, thank you, squish me, thank you, thank you, thank you. Rob's Bert, thank you for the eight month resub, dude. Real Sebastian Monroe, thank you for the eight month resub. Another hacking month with the Foxu. Well, butter my dog. Gecko 74 you thank you for the five month resub my guy coconut tackle thank you for the nine month resub i hope you enjoy being born have a little doctor slap there otto von biscuit thank you for the eight month resub cammy illis thank you for 16 months thank you <clears throat> jkvt thank you for the seven month resub smiling reaper thank you for 26 months of prune when you miss the sub date and get bombarded with one out of 10 30 second ads. But it's worth it to watch our favorite glowy foxu. Yeah, the beginning of stream will always have three minutes of ads because there's not there's not a whole lot of people here. And I can disable the pre-rolls for an entire fucking hour while people filter in during the during the first hour of stream. So always always ads at the beginning of stream while there's a waiting screen and nothing is happening. I appreciate Ziz for remembering to slap the ads button when I am uh, too, too preoccupied. 
Bye, Toast. Thank you for the 13 month resub, my guy. My, my singing Steven. Oh, thanks for adding some spicy cat to my life these past three, 13 months. Mistress Kirsha. I'm not fandom! May my meager tier one sub be enough to satisfy you at least a little. I've had this ready for the whole month because I knew my sub would renew on Friday, but you know, no such luck. I'm sorry! Can I please start telling the other chubas about the pre-roll ads for no ads during the first hour? Dude, is that not common? Is that not a common thing to do? What ranking is my state in the federal aid dependency? Low 50 or high 10? Higher the rank, the more dependent they are in the federal government? I don't know. I don't know. Unfortunately, no. No one else knows! What the fuck? Kate4394, thank you for the seven month resub. Mind breaking, we will be mind breaking. Coupon 9, thank you for the 11 months of prune. Thank you. Thomas3022, thank you for the eight months of prune. Thank you. Desert Ghost, thank you for the three month glowy resub, dude. Thank you. <laughs> Buller was Hassan, thank you for the prune. Campy and Rel, thank you for the four months of prune. Four months of disturbing Foxu. Must be something wrong with me. What do you mean? How have you been disturbing? You tune in and Kirsch is not reading a wall of text. I'm doing a wall of thank yous. Get up on the wall, but instead of a bullet, you get you get a, a nice hug. <laughs> Shugazi, thank you for the 11 month resub. Are you just saying cock? That's Nim's job. Thank you. Uh, Dama Blaze 8, thank you for the 100 biddies. Uh, what was the name of the cologne you need to attract a crazy woman? Spice Bomb. Just the original Spice Bomb. There's like five different iterations now. Just the original one. Original Victor and Rolf Spice Bomb. Literal pheromones to attract the crazy women. Ragnarok 311, thank you for the six month three sub. Hell yeah! Uh, Tecom, thank you for the summy bubby. Continuing your sub from your prime. Thank you, thank you. A rough times. Thank you for the 100 biddies. Good morning. Finished watching side scrollers. Did a great job. Educated a lot of people. I'm always happy when I get to uh, give the quick rundown on how Insidious Bridge is. It makes my brain tingle. Bleezy love. Thank you for the 15 wanna... month resub. Day 182. I've yet to find the exit since my nine month sub anniversary. I'm beginning to lose hope that I will ever find my way out of the depths of Foxu. May God have mercy on me. Thank you! Thank you, Breezy. Zalpad, thank you for the seven month resub. Ogay Rinosai. Ogay Rinosai? I don't know what that means. Zero Null, thank you for the 12 month tier three resub. You've been here for 12 months and yet to be banned. Blame the mods. It's very hard to get banned from here. <laughs> Aliciously, thank you for the six month three sub. Happy six months. Fox woman has me wrapped around her sounding rod. I don't have one! Goombus, thank you for the 14 month three sub. If only September let you buy more than six months at once. But at, le at least you can do the six months pre purchasing during September, though. So you get, you get a nice chunk of a discount. Vizard Kurosaki, thank you for the 100 biddies. You're so happy seeing the fallout of that smile company. Nice to see a boycott. More fun to watch them squirm. Means that people are resisting bridge. Yes, I agree. Tapeworm Rage, thank you for the seven month resub. Your Korsha arrived in the mail today, completely shaved, emaciated, and I hate it. Can I get a refund on my cubes? What? Panchan, thank you for the three months of prune. Thank you. Penguin Mine, thank you for the prune, my guy. Sarmation, thank you for the prune. Adam Sandler, Vivo Official. Thank you for the five months of prune. That name will never not make me giggle. <laughs> thank you for the five months of prune. That's 22. Thank you for the five months of prune. Oh, thank you, thank you. One joke, man. Thank you for the 100 biddies. Off topic question. When am I planning to fight for managed democracy? Hell Divers 2. Uh, probably never. <clears throat> Nim said I wouldn't like that game, and I believe him. <laughs> Beer Ninja Assassin, thank you for the four month resub. Doomwalker 510, thank you for the prune. Wizard Kurosaki, thank you for the 200 biddies. Oh god, I'm assuming it's about the Hassan crap. I don't know. Lord, Lord Brown Bear, thank you for the eight month tier two resub. You're late, but you're here. What are we doing tonight, brain? I'm gonna get to these goddamn tangents, I swear! 
Visit like Kurosaki, thank you for the hundred you biddies. Are. Keep sending bits until not left on red. Uh, Quasi Cody, I thank you for the five month resub. Finding out someone you have huge respect for has a dog shit take is a very normal thing. We all get it though, weird coyote lady. Yeah, it's just a part of life, you know? Azehara, thank you for the 18 month resub. You plead the fifth, you did nothing wrong. I'd make a cock and ball torture joke, but like, you already tried pegging me as a lewd tuber on Twitter the other day. <laughs> Yet another VTuber fan celebrity shows up. The Adam Sandler Vivo! <laughs> Wizard Kurosaki, thank you for the hundred biddies. The chat that just got sent serves to correct the previous bit send, not smile company, sweet baby. I knew what you meant. Skate Geek, thank you for the nine month resub. A little bit of a sloppy birth here. You're covered in blood, but it's uh, it's all right. You're crying. It's fine. I am born. Deus Malice, thank you for the hundred biddies. Had an awesome party. I remember reading this. Thank you again for the hundred. Grape Faced, thank you again for the two gift subs. Thank you. Wizard Kurosaki, thank you for the 400 biddies. Dumping the rest of your bits, though more may come much later. Lost your job because of poor communication and management. Looking forward to the tangent. Stop giving me money if you lost your job! You, you need your money. I mean, you probably have savings, but still, if, you, if you've lost your job, please do not give me money. Adam Sandler Vivo shows up a lot in Hollow Live Supa, same level as fame as eating Mike Tyson's ass. True and real. Guava. Guava fruit. Thank you for the four month resub. Thank you. Daft Punk, thank you for the hundred biddies. Thank you to both you and Peeba carrying you the last few weeks. Life sucks, but you two make you laugh. I hope your life improves, dude. Life, life always has some dips and it sucks to be in them. It feels great once you can climb your way out. Revenant465, thank you for the 100 biddies. You're here specifically for the sweet baby tangent. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Maka, thank you for the 8 month resub. Thank you. Space is Lugbert, thank you for the 3 month resub. Check it in from taking extra hours at work to support your favorite spicy foxu. Thank you. Thank you. Helenraiser978, thank you for the 9 month resub. Oh, it's the birth. The birth of my fellow accented men. You wish to return? Take me back Welcome inside! Dog, Sorry, are. uh, even if I was a lewd tuber, I don't think I would do unbirthing vor ASMR. I was, I was just a little bit out of my wheel wheelhouse, you know. I, uh, Red Goliath, thank you for the eight month resub, my guy. You want to see Saratoga? Thank you for the 400 biddies! Speaking of horror stories at work, when your dad was in the army, he was training for an exercise where he was a wounded man and he would be airlifted to safety. That day he was supposed to do this for real. A lot of army bigwigs showed up and your dad's company was swapped out for another. The two Blackhawks that were supposed to evac the wounded wound up colliding midair and your dad saw the guy who replaced him on the ground get crushed underneath them. Holy shit. I wonder if your dad had a moment of feeling bad or a moment of, yeah, that's why I trained for months for this, you idiot. <laughs> She types and can read fast. I just saw a paragraph, so I was like, I got, I got a speed, dude. Ferocious Ukitsu! Thank you for the 11-month resub. Good morning, Fox Wife. What is your wisdom this morning? Your wisdom is to let people suffer from their own mistakes if they don't take advice. That is good wisdom! That's very good wisdom! Dark Tide Jr., thank you for the two months of Perum! A revile, thank you for the eight months of prune, my guy. Mazozhul. Mazozhul, thank you for prune. Thank you. A devil's wasabi, thank you for the sub, my guy. Thank you. Smokey01, thank you for first time pruning. The first time's always the fastest, man. The wolf of Fenris, thank you for the three months of prune. I'm oh, sorry, no. Scratches. Not prune. Like you're not, really you're not pruning. Thank you for the, the sub. I was one month premature, so it would be appropriate. <laughs> no, there's no premature babies on Twitch! Birthdays are always sloppy, especially when the doctor spikes the baby. True and real! Holy Hammer Strike, thank you for the 17 month resub. Spent the last week trying to convince Twitch to let you give me money. Why is Twitch preventing you from giving me money? What what assholes, honestly? X Beast, thank you for the prune. Bives too, thank you for the eight month dear two resub. Almost there. The Donathon feels like so long ago. It's been so long. I still have things to do from the Donathon. Oh God, please, please ampersand. Azehara, thank you for the five hundred biddies. Remember that you said you didn't want AI food art. You think you did something far worse? I'm so sorry. Well, as long as I don't have a dick, you're still safe. As long as I don't have a dick, you're still safe. Also. 
I think, I think I caught up. I think I caught up, which means I can open a tangent tab. I can open the tangent tab. Where's my, where's my tabs? Where's my tabs? Oh boy, tangents! Oh boy! True and real! Time for tangent. My, my beginning of my tangent tabs. Where are you? Where are you? Before I get to the, the swear baby, there was a couple of things I wanted to, I wanted to touch on. The swear baby! Master Goa, they give you the $2 doodles. After today, you get a save for one month. Jeep expenses! You gotta go off-roading, dude. Off-roading Jeep time. All the birth references make it seem like you're the kind of woman that would poke holes in a condom. Why would I poke holes in a condom? That would create so many, like, deadbeat dads. I want to make sure the fathers will take care of the babies. Hero 101, they give the $5. Free! Don't mind if I do. Nocturnal 007, they give the $20 doodles. These super chats are free! You can just pick them up at the park? Is that what you're telling me? And go to the park and pick them up? You would say the chicken nugget wrong, but it's pretty risky. Yeah, it is. So you just get a man that would be happy not using one. My browser. My, my browser. There's so many, so many browsers open right now. There's so many fucking browsers. So, that was a weird thing. Uh, video sent to Fox 25 show students at Deer Creek High kissing and sucking on feet yesterday. DC Antlers confirms the video saying that students volunteered in challenges to help raise money for their annual philanthropy week. But why would they lick and suck on toes? That's kind of weird. He is devouring them! That's just weird to me! Lick those toes, Scotty! Deer Creek, Deer Creek Schools noted that every student who participated signed up for the games they played ahead of time and that no Deer Creek faculty or staff participated during the assembly. Tune in at 9pm for more. Yeah! Yeah, but that's just like, the, those were not the toes of adults and teachers carry on. I don't think that matters! It's, it's still fucking weird that they were licking other students. Yeah, that does not make it better. That doesn't make it better. That's to, as a foot friend, I apologize. Being a foot friend is okay. Involving publicly foot friending in high school, not okay. You see, officer, the kids volunteered to do it. Act, the kids consented to licking the feet. <laughs> Any normal adult would say this is a crime. Zachary48, thank you for the six month resub. Thank you, thank you. Zach, I think this is kind of weird. What do you think? <laughs> I'll do your homework if you lick my toes. I'm for creatine, they give me the two dollars. Quentin Tarantino's high school. Unironically, though, you physically can't watch that. As someone who enjoys getting foot rubs and, like, having lotion rubbed on my feet and shit, I don't think I could handle someone, like, licking my feet, alright? Like, that's just... They volunteered. How was it an option in the first place? Who thought this was a good idea? Who fucking signed off on this shit, dude? <laughs> 20 years ago, this would have definitely been investigated, right? Any update on the stream with Spoon, or are both of us horrible at answering DMs? No, he's not horrible at answering DMs. I am usually horrible. I know I have a DM to answer. I have been very, very busy. The two the two collabs I had recently have been set up, like, in advance, basically. I haven't- I haven't responded to basically anyone for any collabs yet, because I just- I got so much to do. This is a public service announcement. Eish and chat are super mega duper cute and wonderful less than three. Bailey, you're super duper mega cute and wonderful! Mm, Thank you for the five dollars! No, no, officer. Don't worry, we just let the students suck each other's toes. 
we just watched. What do you mean place my hands behind my back? <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Foss, thank you for the five dollars. Speaking of, yes, hello, officer, this one right here. <clears throat> my next tab. My birthday gangbang. I learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. The brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers that fear. How apt that they would have a Nelson Mandela quote for their birthday gangbang. Let's be real here. <laughs> you love that volunteering for their own fetishes. Thank you for the $2, Master Goa. That sentence woke you up. Good morning. Please don't tell me that was an 18 year old present. I don't, I don't know if they go through the ages. I haven't read all of this. From the outside, it might seem like I am fearless in my sexual adventures. Like I'm a confident slut running wildly from penis to penis. What a fucking mental image. I just imagined a like naked whore running through a field of daisies, but instead of daisies, the penises on stems with leaves. Keck Mickey Kackerson, they give the member. This isn't true at all. All the risks in my life, all the sexual choices I've made that have revoked society's blessing on me, I've done despite experiencing sheer terror. I'm not immune to the heavy-handed social narratives that I must be damaging myself somehow, that no man will ever want me, that sluts are deeply bad. Those narratives make me seize with fear. It's just I figure the fear must be unfounded. When I examine myself, I can't find any actually bad thing. There's no inherent badness to a penis entering my vagina. So I force my feet to move forward into the den of 42 men, all jacking off in identical bathrobes while I'm screaming internally. Yeah, we got them bathrobes. I went to the Ayla B Day gangbang and all I got was this bathrobe and also to fuck a porn star. Imagine fucking wearing that, dude. Her love of cock blinds her. I think it's funny that her internal voice is trying to tell her by making her seize with fear that she's doing something wrong. But her hedonistic pleasure comes before thinking anything like that, so she just kind of brushes it off. It's not even a nice bathroom. In Los Angeles, at your house. Or in the ring. No, in real life. I'm going to stalk him and become obsessed with him. And wear his makeup and his dresses. And use his skin as a coat. Like the ancient Irish did. Well, I'm the winner. Imagine publicly announcing you invited a bunch of strangers to run a train on you. Real Sodom hours. <laughs> no. Yeeker on hate, thank you for the 1985. But also, this reminds me of the like porn star fuck a fan contests. Except this lady said, I don't want to fuck just one fan. I want to mass invite my audience and fuck as many of them as possible. <laughs> this is how Freddy Krueger was born. And by we, I mean the organizer team. I did basically nothing to set up and run this event, which was a lot of work, a full-time job amount of work. I'd like to thank my partner, Nate. This, this woman has a significant other and I don't, the world is cruel and unfair. He sits in the cock chair, dude. Also, how does this actual, how does this actual whore have an entire organizational team to set up a gangbang for her and I can't find a fucking manager? Ah! Maybe I should just start taking copious amounts of carousel cock. I don't even know anymore. You get to pick one after the apple crushing tourney. Kiri, you could have someone if you weren't exclusively attracted to gays and sociopaths. I'm sorry! <laughs> she isn't as concerned about her manager fucking her. Makes it easier to find. Wanna... Orb Ponder. Thank you for the four months of prune. Thank you, thank you. Different kind of prune, dude. <laughs> Matt D. Thank you for the 250 biddies. Nate is literally the king cuck. Unironically. <laughs> 
Great face. Thank you for the 200 biddies. Whoever set this up needs to have their eyes gouged out in Minecraft. Anoma, noma, 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 Miss Gifter. Thank you for the gift sub to Hobby Hollow. Thank you. Master Goa, thank you for the $2. All the cum might damage the... Help. Wood chipper. I don't think so. I just clean it. Easy. No, Fox. <laughs> I'd like to thank my partner, Nate, Sasha, and also Lucy Belmont. Why does she get a last name? Is it because she's a vampire? I don't understand. None of the other ones got a last name. Are they, are they link? I don't want to open this Twitter in case I get like flashbanged with titties. Hold on a second. <laughs> I was, I was going to open this, but like probably not a good idea to open Twitter links from a gangbang blog. Yeah, there's a naked woman as a profile picture. So, you know. Oh, I guess she's not naked. She's got nude lingerie on, but still. Her bio says, Manic Pixie Dream Slut. Scott Pilgrim continues to prove that they ruined a generation of women. Yeah, oh, big guy. Yeah, only, only one scroll took uh, to get full titty. Your main manager. Honorable <laughs> chatters may apply as well. Massive taco! Thank you! Thank you! But uh, I just I need I need someone with like some kind of experience. If I have to micromanage you as a manager, you are worthless to me. Christian cult, and when she got out, she overcorrected hard. She's literally a greasy Reddit mod in a woman's body, self-described nice lady. Besides all that, though. Oh God, that sounds terrible. Toast engineer, thank you for the five dollars. I'm sorry to hear about that lady. <laughs> Kaiser Vermillion, thank you for the five dollar doodles. Life was never fair, but don't let this bring you down. Chat, remember, do not the Corsha. True, do not. Manic Pixie Dream Girl is supposed to be stuff like Breakfast at Tiffany's, not some BPD cock addict. I like the song Breakfast at Tiffany's. I don't remember the movie though. They're all porn stars and pornographers, so that explains the train conducting team. Did they have to learn hand signals? <laughs> With additional amounts of labor put in by Slim Switch, Ruby Dice, and Pandora. So why does it why does it sound like she has two humans, a vampire, and then three VTubers? This is a this is a strange assortment team. I am deeply touched by their efforts. Unironically and literally. It was a lot of work because how the hell do you let internet randos into an orgy safely? We started out with a survey, and then they filtered down automatically, manually, and then did brief interviews. 83 of them! Man, these guys, these guys planned a literal orgy meetup easier than most VTubers, including myself, can plan regular events. <laughs> with my approval, organizers rejected anyone associated with E slash ACC. Because we don't need to give nice things to people hastening our doom. What is, what is E slash ACC? I don't know what that is. I don't, what does that mean? I know E is like ecstasy and like ACC is shorthand for account, but that doesn't make any sense. What does, accelerationism? I don't think so. Ethical accelerationism? Effective acceleration? It's effective, what is, what is effective accelerationism? Your re regular events don't usually involve meeting randos that could but easily be psychopaths. True! Like I'm a real pet. True and real! How disgusting. Can I have her info to avoid her? What the fuck is wrong with you, miss? That's disgusting. Don't throw your dick away. But thank you for the five dollars. Very niche Twitter political sphere. TLDR, like, effective altruism, but with burning down society instead of altruism? E slash shack equals effective accelerationism. TL, doctor, they want AI to take over the world and kill everyone. They're very oh. silly. That does sound very silly. Toast Engineer, thank you for the five dollar doodles. I don't... I don't understand, though, right? Because, like, why care specifically about... The effective accelerationist, right? Are you gonna exclude like flat earthers? Or like what where does where does it start and end here? Like I just I don't see why them specifically are the ones you exclude. <laughs> Your sick will rot as soon as it enters her. So they can appeal to the reading audience? I mean, 
It didn't appeal to the reading audience because I didn't know what the fuck it was. EA, effective acceleration, pro-tech accelerationist. It was a counter to effective altruism, mostly in the San Fran tech scene. Yeah, but effective altruism was basically just fucking commie bullshit, right? We learned about effective altruism during the, the Sam Bankman Freed trial, but I can't, I can't remember almost anything about that. Either way, organizers herded all the attendees through a special form of STI testing, the service pass, which can verify your STI clear status to a third party. Special shout out to M Power, a lab in Atlanta who heroically handled processing the confusing custom lab orders of dozens of men. Why is Atlanta a city of degeneracy? It was it was also known as like peak catfish central. Where like where like Atlanta just had the highest concentration of people trying to catfish on on dating apps and shit. I know. The lab orders were confusing and custom because we required some unusual tests, namely HSV and mycoplasma genitalium. I've never even heard of that second one. What? I somehow, weirdly, do not test positive for either HSV 1 or 2, so we wanted to know who had it so we could check outbreak history. Outbreaks in the last few years increase risk of transmission. No outbreak history probably has extremely low transmission rates and require they take antivirals. Nobody who tested, tested positive for any STI except HSV, which means MGen rates were zero. Of HSV, 32% tested positive for HSV-1, and 8% tested positive for HSV-2. I have some questions. You, you weren't willing to have sex with the effective accelerationists, but you were okay with fucking people who had harpies. I Isla is from the rationalist community, which founded around not letting AI kill everyone, and e slash x are the heretics of that community specifically. Effective altruism is not commie bullshit, it's at least 60% based. What? Toast Engineer, thank you for the $5. I do not remember anything about effective altruism being based. I don't, I don't remember that at all. She probably already had herpes. Repult, I know I am a woman, so when I talk, it just kind of makes sounds like wah, 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 wah. But I actually did read out loud that she somehow weirdly did not test positive for HSV 1 or 2. <laughs> Progressives are against accelerationism because they think we're heading in the right direction. True. Hey, Chris Arian, thank you for the eight month reset, my guy. You're excited and glad that after eight months, you still learn something new every day. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Accelerationism is truly the worst STD. Also true. How does HSV transmission work and how bad is it is a whole other post. But basically, we read a gajillion studies and then set our risk tolerance at one one thousandth chance of catching HSV this party and set corresponding requirements, condoms, antivirals, no outbreaks, based on the studies. I also took antivirals as a preventative measure, but realistically, given my body count and my age, this might possibly be some evidence that I might have a natural resistance to HSV anyway. What a dumb bitch. What a dumb fucking cunt. How... <laughs> This is the same kind of thought process as that woman that I loop on every so often because she lives in my head rent free talking about how, oh, my boyfriend and I fuck without uh, fucking protection all the time because I just stand up after we have sex and gravity pulls all the semen out of me. I was like, I haven't gotten pregnant a single time. It's foolproof. Oh, baby, that's not how that works. <laughs> We are also immune to diseases source. Just trust me, bro. Oh, God. To be fair, it's been a complete whore and still test clean on everything. Wild. I'm functionally immune. That makes me that makes me suspicious, like you guys said, about her claiming that she doesn't have anything. But, like, we can't assume. We can only go based on what her words are saying. 
We also had a no kissing rule, which was probably overkill, but with an orgy of internet people, we decided to err on the safe side. Yeah, that's true. Why would I want kissing in my orgy? Ew, we might catch feelings. <laughs> if I recall correctly, people who have HSV and conceive children, the children are at a higher risk for cancer and leukemia? I don't know. I have no idea. I've never looked up the statistics, nor do I think I will ever have to. Reminds you of the African thing where they think graping virgins cures AIDS. What? A no kissing rule sounds perfectly valid. <laughs> Mycoplasma genitalium is the hot new STI that your doctor probably isn't testing for. I don't like how she calls it that. It's usually lumped in with the usually symptomless random bacteria set of tests like trick or uroplasma, but recently has been popping up as less symptomless than you would hope, and also horribly difficult to cure with US approved antibiotics. Nobody who got STI tests in our cohort tested positive for MGen, which is a good sign. I don't know what MGen is. I... I don't... I don't... I haven't had sex in years, so I don't even know what these new STDs are, dude. Mycoplasma genitalium is a sexually transmitted small and pathogenic bacterium that lives on the mucous epi epithelial cells of the urinary and genital tracts in humans. Medical reports published in 2007 and 2015 state that MGen is becoming increasingly common. Okay, but like... What is it? MGen's treated with antibiotics. Some strains have developed resistance to commonly used antibiotics. It may take several rounds of different drugs to clear the infection. You may still be able to pass it on for up to 14 days after completion of treatment, so avoid unprotected sex. Although chlamydial and mycoplasma's genital infections are caused by entirely different microorganisms, there are some similarities in pathogens, clinical manifestations, and treatment of these infections. Okay, so MGen is like chlamydia on steroids, I guess? I- I guess? <laughs> You can be diagnosed with MGen even if you're in a faithful long-term relationship. It doesn't mean your partner has been cheating, but rather that one of you had it all along and you just didn't know. If I'm in a faithful, like, years-long relationship and you're claiming to me that MGen is something that you can actually cure and get rid of, and it would probably go away like a cold, right? If I'm in a years-long relationship and suddenly I have an STD that I never had before, uh, yeah, they're probably cheating. They're- they're probably cheating. <laughs> gotcha diseases sound terrible! I don't want to play the STD gotcha, dude. Don't do hookups, chat. They're not fucking worth it. Uh, let's see here. Everybody used condoms and everybody was required to switch out condoms between women and to discard any condoms that they accidentally tried to put on backwards first. We went through a lot of condoms. What what kind of fucking low IQ idiots were they fucking that there were unironically men who tried to put the condom on backwards? I just what what Wait, there were other women? Yeah, I'm confused about that as well. First of all, where did the other women come into this? I thought this was your gangbang. Second of all, how did you find men with low enough IQ to put on condoms backwards? <laughs> oh, the fluffers! I forgot about the fluffers. Thank you, chat. I, I forgot about the fluffers. If you've seen the chart, you'd know. I forgot about the fluffers! The event itself was pretty simple. We had doors open in the evening for a half hour. You couldn't get in before or after. We checked IDs and sent them to the coat check, where they stripped all their clothes and possessions, put them in a bag marked with a numbered label. It's just like my concentration camps! We gave them name tags on which they wrote their name and bag number, and also to differentiate the identical Ayla's B-Day branded bathrobes from each other. We then held an opening circle, where we went over rules, behavioral norms, expectations, one of the organizers made everyone solemnly swear to do their best to come only in the birthday girl, as opposed to in any of the fluffers. How sweet of them! They save all their comes for the birthday girl! That makes sense! That's her birthday present! Being filled with cum! Me, 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 me
on it yet either. It's my birthday and it's my cum. put the condom on backwards thing all the time. It's hard to know which direction it unrolls. People will then flip the thing around, but it's no longer sterile at that point. Flick the thing around. Toast engineer, thank you for the five dollar doodles. Radstorm, thank you for the five. Sometimes in the heat of the moment, in the dark, it's easy to put them on the wrong way a little bit before you realize it's not unrolling. If it's in the dark, I would understand, right? Like, if, if you're in the dark, that makes sense. I somehow doubt they had all the lights out in an orgy. Hidden, thank you for the three-month member. Bug chasers are winning with this one. They got new content. You hope their gotcha rules go well. I like how during the monkeypox outbreak a few years ago, it was considered bigoted to tell the gay men to just stop having sex. This reminds me of a chaotic version of the Children of the Tro copy pasta. I don't remember that one. In total, we had 15 people in some staff, organizer, or fluffer capacity. Though the only people who got paid to be there were the security guards. I will never again feel like I'm asking my moderation staff for too much. Imagine imagine being a fluffer for someone's birthday party and you're like, yeah, I'll do it for free. Yeah, I'll, I'll let your men fuck me so that they can come in you for free. Spicy I guess if they paid rate. them, it would be that prostitution though, right? Hivalari, <laughs> thank you for the orgy raid. Welcome raiders. Okay, I see. <laughs> Welcome raiders. <laughs> As uh, instead of instead of sweep it up, Jenny is uh fucking stroke it out, Jenny. You do it for free. <laughs> How much of a whore do you need to be to suck dick for free? I I don't know. It's like you're my best friend, aren't you? You want me to be happy, don't you? You'll be a fluffer for my birthday orgy, won't you? <laughs> Hello to the Raiders. Hello, Raiders. <laughs> Help. Jenny's got a new name. They're already my Discord kittens. I don't think I can call them my Discord fluffers. I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> it was a substance-free party, and we didn't provide alcohol. Though, someone there did pass out Viagra. I think a lot of people arrived there already on Viagra. What? What? One of the attendees also brought stickers to hand out. I went to Ayla's birthday gangbang and all I got was this crappy sticker. Pre-gaming Viagra. Do you think when they were pre-gaming Viagra, they were snorting it off each other's cocks to prepare? Poor Sally. The entire orgy cost $3,335, which most of the cost going to the venue, robes, food, and security guards. You know, that's actually pretty cheap, all things considered. I assumed an orgy would cost more than that. All they needed was to hand out plur bands, and that would have been real funny. <laughs> Sally is positively wholesome in comparison. Excuse me, Sally was always wholesome. She's only getting cummed in by her boyfriend, which she is wholly committed to. That is wholesome. <laughs> Tickets to attend were free, but had optional donations. 81% of people paid something, and 19% attended for free. The average donation was 63%, bumped up by three people who graciously paid a few hundred each. We had a surprise expense when needing to hire security guards because our previous security volunteers couldn't make it at the last minute. We ended up in the red, but some attendees donated afterwards. And in the end, we managed to not lose money on this orgy. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. Like, I don't know what's worse not getting paid to get fucked by like 40 men or the 40 men all paying to fuck you like i just this whole situation just sounds like a fucking nightmare to me <laughs> i apologize sincerely for interrupting and if you already know this but this is so amazing i feel obligated to ask you to look at the dm i just sent you regarding this individual oh Oh? 
Oh, fuck! Okay. Hold on a second. Hold on a fucking minute. More lore? Yeah, I guess fucking so. I guess fucking so. Oh, Proctor, why do you have more lore on this orgy, women? She's got a 93-page thread. Why does she look like a man? What is happening? How many people will show up to Ayla's birthday gangbang? She'll cancel it at the last minute because someone on the internet hurt her feelings. Man, 111 people had way too much fucking faith that she would cancel this! Oh my god! Ayla Martin is a nerd, self-proclaimed libertarian and rationalist whose biggest claim to notoriety is being a sex worker and top-grossing former OnlyFans star. I have literally never heard of this woman before. Lit it's Ayla? I've literally never heard of this woman. I we sound like I guy. wear Hello Kitty Crocs and eat spicy you pickles. I do neither of those things, I'll have pieces. you know! I am a classy woman, I would buy Spongebob Crocs. Her other source of notoriety is posting the most horrifying sex-related ideas on the internet without irony. Oh, so she's like evil me. Instead of looking up different weird sounding techniques because it's horrifying, she looks them up because she wants to do them. Chat, this is the difference between mommy issues and daddy issues. Please, I beg. The difference will save your life and your dick. <laughs> I'm going to make my daughters read Isla's writing when they come of age. Pointing out all the parts where she says things like I have to be drunk to have sex and have a panic attack after every time but I sure do love it. Definitely not coping. What the fuck? Let's be fair, Kirsha is evil Kirsha. Uh... So one of the things Proctor sent me... Proctor, were you one of the guys who went to her gangbang not to fuck her, but just to document things? Ayla apparently said in 2022, Child porn is created when people get paid to make child porn. The rarer you make it, the more they get paid. The best way to protect children is to kill the economic demand. Flood the market with AI-generated, freely accessible stuff that's created with zero harm to kids. Why would someone pay a child abuser tons of cash if they can get the same thing depicting a child that doesn't exist and doesn't suffer for free? It's like, would you outlaw 100% realistic lab-grown free beef? You would Shut if up. your goal is to protect Silly the real woman. beef industry. How does this woman have thoughts? <laughs> I would outlaw the fake beef because it has no nutritional value and is spiked with toxins. Yeah, right? I think an unspoken objection people have is that freely accessible CP might make CP watchers out of marginal sickos and have a delete del deleterious effect on the whole society. I view fetishes much like sexual orientation. You have no control over it, and you didn't choose it. Like for calibration, would you say that freely available gay porn makes more people gay? I don't know about freely available gay porn, but I tell you what, food porn fucking up tons of men. <laughs> Sergeant Buck, thank you for the five dollars. What? What did she mean by this? Determinism is dumb. Oh, we got, we got, we got, we got sissy hypno porn for re we got all these men who were like, I'm my egg cracked. I realized I was trans after seven years of sissy hypno. <laughs> I don't know, it might be a correlation, man! <laughs> if you like food, I got news for you! You're gay. The main problem here is that it'll make it harder to differentiate real from fake, so it would shield real propagators through ob ob obfuscation. Yes. Yes, it would. This is not the same as the lolly hentai argument. That amount of mind control will do it. I'm just like, what the fuck? 
I think the lesson of 4chan over the last 20 years has been induced demand from supply of degenerate porn foisted on teenage boys is a real serious concern. I feel like Reddit has been more detrimental in that regard. Like, I, I make jokes about how I wish traps had stayed a niche 4chan fetish. I don't think they broke into the mainstream from 4chan. Master Go, they give the two dollars. I have to go to Home Depot and then return video tapes. No, Kirsha, I'm not gay. When I suck my girlfriend's penis, I just pretend it's her seven inch long outer belly button. That makes it not gay. What the fuck? <laughs> well, pingus! I like the word pingus. <laughs> Reddit and Twitter aren't any farther behind these days, right, dude? Belly button! Yeah, she's just a, a hella Audi. Uh, I've been saying it for years! Someone, someone check this person's computer. If they've been advocating for ethical AI child pornography for years, please someone check this person's computer. This, this is a red fucking flag. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> is it really gay to like the bonus leg? What's wrong with you? Eric Jimenez, they give him 199. Out of nowhere. For no reason at all. Somehow, Adolf Hitler was elected to power. <laughs> I'm slow pay! Thank you for the $5. Do you have a brother-in-law that's an active tax accountant and can get you his contact? Just need a better way to talk offline, DM, Discord, etc. Please give me the brother-in-law information. If you're in my Discord, you should be able to, like, send me a DM request, I think. Mmm, cheeseburger. <laughs> They said the same thing about drug legalization. That it would kill the black market since the business is legitimate now. All it did was normalize junkies in the streets and give cartels carte blanche in certain cities. What the heck? Yeah, yeah, I don't I don't think that really helped. I agree with you, Lolly. I'm thank you for the five dollar doodles. The Ayla girl has a pic of some dude sounding with glow sticks and always loops. Why would you put glow sticks in your penis? I guess, I guess it's like, it's like that image. Look at what the four skinless have to do to mimic a fraction of our power. We can turn our penises into flashlights without sounding with glow sticks. Rad, Storm, thank you for $5. Kier brings up food porn so much, it's like it happened to one of her exes. No, no, I just know a bunch of guys who have porn addictions and it started from Fuda, unfortunately for them. Why would you put magnets in your urethra? Are there magnets in glow sticks? I don't think so. If I call you gay for wanting to choke on food a dick, th or you'd rather call me gay than another sounding tangent? Well, luckily for you, I don't have the sounding image. Uh, apparently, she got so much backlash, she made another tweet that said, deleted that tweet that was getting ratioed, not because I take it back, but because it was generating a disproportionate amount of yelling at me. I'm planning on writing a much more in-depth and less ratioable blog post about my reasoning on the topic. Why would you do that? Just, just stop. It's time to stop. <gasps> OnlyFans star says she wants to sell her eggs because her jeans are wonderful. I just don't believe you. Adult star turned data scientist. I had more sex than showers in 2022. I don't know if that's something to be proud of or not, right? Because like, if you're a VTuber and you shower like once a week, if you're also a whore, it's probably not hard to rack up more dick than showers. But also, if you're racking up more dick than showers, your coochie's gonna get real sticky real quick and that's gonna be kinda gross. And eventually, guys are just gonna be pushing into some like yeast infested sponge. And I don't think that's a fun time for anyone. Yeah, it's gonna be very fishy. <laughs> STD land. I just... Popular OnlyFans star reveals she only showered 37 times in 2022. Chat, how many weeks are in a year? Chat, chat, how many... How many weeks are in a year? <laughs> 52. How does a porn star shower less than a VTuber? I don't understand! I don't understand! This is a sickness, Ugandan politician. 
You're gonna, you're gonna open her legs and it's gonna be like opening a wheel of that fucking maggot cheese from Italy. What the fuck? Got that stank on her. You're gonna, you're gonna need only the most potent and highly laced with fentanyl Shut weed. Up, silly woman. She's getting golden shower on the regular. <laughs> But, like, you don't understand, okay? I only needed to shower 37 times in a year with water because the other showers I took were with pee. And pee actually has properties of being antibacterial. So as long as I was getting peed on sometimes, I didn't need to shower. They just pressure wash her cooter between shoots. <laughs> Good God. I will give you a taste of my shoe. Bring it, Brit. I bet you can't throw that thing even half a mile. <laughs> I guess that's why the men are turning to Fuda. I was like, God damn, dude. Top earning OnlyFans star who earns $100,000 a month admits to only showering 37 times last year. Can I make $100,000 in a year if I only shower 37 times? Is that the, is that the secret lucky, secret lucky shower number? I don't know if I could only take that many showers, though. That's a little, that's, that's kind of not enough. Jesus Christ. The rationalist's hooker. Ayla willingly identifies as part of a nerd-oriented rational thought community called the Rationalists, originally centered around a site named Less Wrong. The Rationalists. <laughs> what, is, what is that, what is that fucking... What is that fucking thing? <laughs> Rationalists, please respond. <laughs> you remember this guy who worked with models? He mentioned that they had a tendency to be really smelly and unwashed, but why? It's not like taking a shower is gonna add calories to you. The name is false advertising. One of my rationalist friends made a micro STI estimator where you can see your risk per encounter for contracting various STIs Jeez, given Sally, certain conditions. Your boyfriend lets you have two comms? So like, so like, these, these are the women trying to mathematically prove that they're not whores in the same way that, that hey, men addicted to traps and fuda try to mathematically prove yeah, that they're not gay. The they're both the same amount of idiotic, just in two different directions. <sighs> if you could be satisfied by mortal men, you would be satisfied with mortal reasoning and mortal society and would not have gravitated toward the distant orbits of my own presence. Pro Proctor. Proctor, you need, you need to come clean, all right? You gave me this information to look at. Is this you? I feel like this is how you would flirt with someone if you're trying really hard to not mention your mother. <laughs> <laughs> this is mortal cringe you can't fucking stand elizer i've never seen this person i've never seen this person in my life it was one of my community members it's not me i swear <laughs> they totally tapped the marinated rational cooch <laughs> If you could be satisfied by mortal men, you wouldn't be here. Yeah, big guy. In my DMs. But you like are. Blind man at an here. I was going in to my have DMs. To feel my way through. Leslie Nielsen. Thusly, you cannot be satisfied by mortal men, and so you must seek something otherworldly to satisfy your desires. Like myself. Some may call me a wizard, but I will play you like a fiddle. Whore. <laughs> Good God, this tangent is gonna turn me against Cooch. It's okay. It's okay. We've seen plenty of male degeneracy. We we are bound to come to this sometime, right? It's because of this she routinely comes up with facts and logic and rationalizations about why being an escort was good for her and posts them on her Substack. If you, I'll save you the reading. It's because it cured some issues she had. 
which makes as much sense as having a naked homeless man inside your house being good because he scares away burglars. She also took part in psychedelics, another rationalist pastime, except she took it to the max by doing LSD for 10 months. <laughs> Help. Earning her the nickname Acid Queen. What? <laughs> Cock wizard of sex love magic. You need to have like your own intro song for that, right? Like you you wear the felt bathrobe. It's like a dark burgundy. You got your fedora on. You got a you got a cigar, chocolate because you don't actually smoke. That's bad for you. All right, okay. And then you you open the door of the woman waiting on the bed for you. And you got that You know the porn music playing? And then you just like sex wizard the cock wizard of sex, love, magic. <laughs> and you throw open your bathrobe and your cock like glows. You got that shing. <laughs> I can fire holes of cum. The wizard hat stays on during coitus. <laughs> It is the source of my cock magic. <laughs> Behold! My magic wand! God, I love this. <laughs> After 40 trips in the span of 10 months, I stopped doing acid. It was easy to stop, like casually turning off a light. But it was also painful and disorienting. The knowing felt like a lover I'd said goodbye to. And I would go to sleep feeling the ghost of it around me and the bitter sweetness of not touching it. I ached. Mm. Ached for the acid. <laughs> Once this whole thing became a story, it started getting even weirder. I wrote about it on Reddit and got a huge amount of attention. People started referring to me as the acid queen. Opinions were divided and some looked at me with awe and asked for advice while still others explained how I was infantile or unbalanced, and that you can't get very far with LSD, and that only meditation would get me to the real stuff. What the fuck? What the- what the fuck? <laughs> with a flick of my wrist and a word of charm, I cast explosion and do you great harm! And for creative, thank you for the five dollars. Who would win? The cock sorceress and her sounding rod of doom or the cock destroyers? Well, one of the cock destroyers is already dead, so clearly the cock sorceress would win. Jesus fucking Christ. She wants to start her own sex research institute, but without pesky things like ethics review boards that would restrict her work. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Does she have any credentials? No, but you better not critique her research over that. What do you mean? Does she have any credentials? Are you telling me taking hundreds of miles of cock isn't credentials enough? If raising a child wasn't expensive enough, you can pay to get her eggs. I wish she put a price there, dude. Might, might I convince you? Oh. She has a my 2022 in stats. Image is my mood each day. She went outside 222 times. She pooped 194. Socialized 165. Worked 135. Took Adderall 126. This is some like crazy OCD behavior. I I could not imagine notating every time I like went outside or pissed. My browser isn't visible. Visible? Yeah, I'm reading a Kiwi Farms thread, and I don't want a surprise N word to jump scare the Twitch mods, so that's why it's not on screen. <laughs> This is, this is why the Kiwi Farms is important. They document public things about people who are fucking crazy. Understandable, have a nice stream. Jen Rollins, thank you for the $5. I'm the gypsy, the acid Jeez, queen. Sally, Pay me before I start. Two comms? Artificial Sky, thank you for the six months of prune, dude. Jesus. Most likely there's an app that does it for her. I don't think there's an app that'll rack up each time you poop. You're gonna have to manually enter that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. 
It, she says if she showered more often, she would stink because it disturbs her microbiome. I have intense executive dysfunction. I can't force myself to do anything boring, which means I fail at basic maintenance tasks. That explains why she doesn't shower. And this is even with intense incentives. I was making 100K a month on OnlyFans, but it got boring. So I stopped working that hard after just a few months. Why do we allow women? <laughs> There's indeed an app to track your poops. The one you know of tells you how much money you've made pooping at work. Yeah, but you still have to, like, enter it manually. It's not like your phone and the app itself are gonna know every time you void your bowels automatically. It's not, it's not like, hooked up to an automatic pooper racker-upper. When archaeology will be expanded to include it's the internet, some people time? in the future will be so fucking confused. Never anybody, thank you for the thousand biddies. Lots of people believe the truth can be found in the data. It can't, but they don't realize it. So in the absence of truth and faith, they just dig further and further into the minutiae. I, I fucking guess so. <sighs> I fucking guess so. Let's see. There's a lot of, there's a lot of ya buy pictures here. <laughs> 12,000 words on being a prostitute and the title is Becoming a Whore Lord. The overly analytical guide to escorting. I would, I would kind of be curious in a D&D &D campaign if you could be a whore lord as your class. <laughs> Hello, goth sheep. <laughs> whore lord. That's someone's new Discord name, dude. Let's see. She has her own website. At one point, she charged, charged 3,000 an hour for desperate men to fuck her. Hold on, wait a minute. If she was charging $3,000 an hour for people to fuck her but she was letting men do it for free at her birthday gangbang. How did you get to that point from charging 3000 to doing it for free? I just, I, uh, uh, that seems low. I'm so confused. I'm so confused. Oh God. In 2022, she made a tweet that says, my poly life has been amazing in recent years, but it hasn't always been so good. There's been periods where I was less confident, dating people where I was less secure about the connection, and this combination made jealousy really hard to handle. Did you hear my poly life? You did, she's polyamorous. Who could have seen that coming? I hope, I hope one of my unban requests in the future will just be a rendition of this. I was wrong! Please unblock me! My cousin has diabetes and cancer and I have my own demons to face! This makes me emotional! Thank you! Kitten, please unblock me. <laughs> Blame it on the diabetes. Like it's called ethical non-monogamous. It's called it doesn't work. It's not real. Stop it. Get some help. Sideshowman, they give the two dollars. Nobody else is saying it, so she does it for free. <clears throat> There is a Pathfinder prestige class called Enchanting Courtesan who uses seduction and mind magic to become information brokers. You could call them whore lords and you wouldn't be far off. Man, this thing just keeps going? <laughs> this thing just keeps fucking going? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to the gangbang. Thank you for the side tangent, Proctor. I'm sorry to, to learn about you getting M-Gen from the birthday gangbang, but like, I'm sure you'll recover. You know, your, your birds, your birds will keep you company. <laughs> oh lord, it's 3.5 character. <laughs> Monogamy's the only way. Never share your significant other with anyone else. Never. Never. That's, that's, that's a good way to get me to do a murder-suicide. Don't cheat on me, dude. <laughs> 
I didn't get to the part about her pastor father. Jesus Christ, of course she has a pastor father. This is the black-pilled prelude to the sweet baby stuff. Where the, where the fuck did I leave off? Right here. Ten other women attended. Two to help out while looking hot. Doing things like running the coat check and being a point of contact for other women in case they needed anything. And eight fluffers who helped get the men hard for me. Oh, honey, you're just not attractive enough for the men to actually fuck you, but could you please be a fluffer for me so that I could get coomed in for my birthday? Attending women, both sexy participating and strictly logistical, who agreed to let me share links to their stuff, included Adolin, Cheese, Candle Moth, Losi, and Roby. <laughs> and I bet they were fucking cheese, eh? You Winnies! Thank you for the five gift members! Thank you! Thank you for gift member! YouTube, YouTube love in the chat, dude. They got paid in exposure! <laughs> we had way more fluffer interest than anticipated. By the end, we were turning away women trying to get in, which was an absurd position to be in. I think more women than you might think actually do want to participate in gangbang sluttery. They might just not admit it publicly, or feel safe enough at most events to inhibit their full sexual expression. Much like a lot of men who engage in coomerism find out, some things should stay strictly in the mental realm of fantasization, right? There are some things you cannot take back! If you bring them out of your mind and participate in them in reality, okay? They shouldn't feel safe. It's not safe. I am... I don't know what to say about the fact that they were having to turn away people who wanted to be fluffers to prep, not even to like finish men, just to prep them to come in another woman. Uh, it's just that is it like how do you, how how do i get into that mindset of like yeah i don't even want to reap the rewards of my labor i want to fluff him for a woman who is my better like what what the fuck is wrong with you the fluffers did it for free some of them were a little too enthusiastic <laughs> this is some sodom type of shit which in itself is fascinating. Before this, I had never before seriously considered the option of getting gangbanged. I doubt it. Paid in exposure to Hosfal One. <laughs> Female empowerment. Do you know how empowered I feel when I get a man hard type of deal? No! If I got a random man hard, I wouldn't feel empowered. You know what feels empowered? Making one man come, like, five times in a row, all right? That is empowerment. Because you know exactly how to push that man's goddamn fucking buttons the right way to get him squirming. You mean the way this reads is, like, she dreamt of gangbang and then all of a sudden she was gung-ho to do it, right? Right? Like a fire hose. The idea was just exorbitant or wildly casual in a way that felt outside my sphere of possible realities, despite being easily accessible to me. Of course men from the internet would show up en masse to stick dicks in me. They would for basically any woman. But when my partner first suggested it, I tried to look directly at it through my socially induced fears of going too far or whatever. Did I actually want to get a bunch of men off the internet to fuck me? Specifically me? I've, I've, I Who's feel like I'm having heat stroke right now. I feel like I'm having heat stroke. So she's dating a cuck and she had dreams of gang banging and then her cuck of a partner was like, how about you invite men from the internet to come in you, and I watch. I was just like, what the fuck? What, what the fuck? A 
unfortunately, I can believe that this is true. They're made for each other. I, I unironically, I've looped about the dude that I dated that had like heavy self-loathing issues and who like looped on contacting me to fix things every so often. And then he would tell his friends that he was like, oh, I'm trying to fix things. And his friends would be like, why? She's a controlling piece of shit. You don't want to fix things. And then he would be like, you're right. I don't want to fix things. Fuck off. Don't talk to me. And I'd be like, what? What? One of the top, one of the, one of the last times before I counter blocked him on everything. <laughs> Cause I was like, ain't no way, dude. He was just like, what if, what if we get back together? But like, you fuck other people. And I was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what, come again? He was like, what if we got back together? But like, I can't fuck you all the time. What if, what if you got to pick men that you wanted to fuck and then you could like, send me videos of it? I was like, what the fuck happened to you? What, what the, what, 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 the, what? I would, n no, I would not feel comfortable with that. What is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like his friends planted that one. I don't even know. Like, I guess the depths of mental illness that you can fall to just make you say crazy shit, right? <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't suggest his friends. Well, no, his friends hated me, so, you know. <laughs> Please, miss, just a crumb. <laughs> hey, you may have low confidence, but you would never stoop that low. She's a controlling piece of shit. She won't even let you watch her fuck other dudes. <laughs> Hell, so down bad that he'd become a cuck. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, he's in a bad group. If I if I ever loop on like that story in depth again, he's in a very bad group. He's a, he's in a misery loves company kind of group of people. And unfortunately, he does not have the mental fortitude to handle those kind of people, considering the amount of depression and self-loathing he deals with. It's, uh, it's really sad. His, his friends have self-sabotaged him, or helped him self-sabotage on more than one occasion. Is this where you ramp off into the Asmongold tangent? I've never dated Asmongold. <laughs> Ayla's birthday gangbang, a flowchart. So 1,604 responded to the survey. How did more than half fail an auto filter? This is nuts. How dumb do you have to be to fail an auto filter for a fucking gangbang? This is depressing. This is on it like ignoring the fact that a gangbang flowchart is already depressing. The fact that more than half failed an auto filter. This is like every time somebody doesn't read the rules in my Discord and sends in a ticket to the moderators and they're just like, how do I see the rest of the Discord? Everything's blocked off. Every time we get a ticket like that, long? all of the mods t talk in the mod chat about hanging themselves because they just feel so depressed that it keeps happening. <laughs> Evil Enforcer, thank you for the dollar. The people who made it were putting on condoms backwards. Literal room temp IQ. <sighs> oh my god. I remember getting into an argument with a friend after he got a happy ending and wanted to move her and her daughter into his house. And you told him she just sees him as a bank and then he made fun of you who didn't want to pay for sex and love. Imagine falling in love with someone you pay to fuck. God damn. Submit a photo. They didn't submit one. I don't know. I don't know if that's an auto filter, right? I would think that's the manual filter, yeah? Because after the auto filter, the 776 people that passed that, there was a manual filter. And then less than half of the people failed the manual filter. You want to go wrap presents for your niece and came back? What the hell is this graph? Gangbang flowchart. <laughs> after passing the manual filter, there was 197 that didn't get in contact for some reason. 251 that did contact. Out of that... About half didn't respond. That's crazy. And then 83 got into an interview. 25 were already friends with her, so they just get automatically passed, I guess. They rejected 21 that they interviewed, so they invited 87 people total. And then of the 87 people invited to the gangbang, 31 didn't get a ticket. These were free tickets, by the way. They were free. 
So of the 87, 31 didn't get a ticket. 56 did get a ticket. Of those 56, only 43 did STI tests. 13 canceled, probably because they wouldn't pass the STI test. One person just didn't show up. <clears throat> no call, no show. 42 showed up, but of those 42, five decided not to bang the porn star. So five, five of them showed up and they were just like, hey, there's a whole bunch of dudes jerking off in bathrobes. This is a, this is a lot weirder than I thought it would be. Uh, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't actually want to do this. I'm just going to eat the food. <laughs> of the 42 that showed up, 37 penetrated the porn star. She only got 17 birthday cooms. And even though she asked everyone to come inside of her instead of the fluffers, five still came inside of a fluffer instead of the birthday girl. I'd be insulted. I'd be like, you came for the fluffer, but not for me? I'm sorry, we're gonna have to send you to the penis explosion chamber. They made a flow chart and then 15 didn't come. So you see, <clears throat> the five that got cold feet back here understood that the whole situation was fucking weird and it's not like they're coomer fantasies. These 15 still really wanted to try it. Maybe to brag to their friends that they had a gangbang experience. Don't be like these 15 guys, chat. Don't be like these 15 guys. <laughs> I mean, don't be like anyone in this flowchart. But more than that, don't be like those 15. Proctor was among the five that came, but didn't bang Ella. They pre-gamed the Viagra way too early and ran out of gas. The one no-call no-show was probably the highest room temp IQ there. Fucking probably, dude. We need an Ayla number. Ayla is zero. Slept with her is one. Slept with them is two, etc. How does it have 167 KVS? CT Frango! Thank you for the $10 doodles. The 15 didn't finish because of the smell. I would say less because of the smell and more because they were surrounded by other men uh, snorting Viagra and jerking off and making male moaning noises while they all compete to come in the same woman. Now this might strike some viewers as harsh, but I believe everyone involved in this story should die. That's a very apt quote for this story. Some of the guys were experienced orgy kinksters where they made comments comparing this gangbang to others they'd attended. Others were totally new to any kind of sex party and some hadn't had sex in years. One was a virgin. This event was not kind towards men's penises. A lot of men had trouble getting hard, which is deeply understandable, because practically for them, the experience was a bit like being a breeder in a cow pen. The way it worked was a few men volunteers held me down on a bed, and a line of guys approached. Once a guy was sufficiently hard, he'd come bang me, summoned by organizers yelling, Hey! Anybody got a hard cock? Line yourselves up by hardness! And they had to jack themselves off furiously. And then they got three minutes to attempt to come while banging me. While I was closely surrounded by other men who were preventing me from biting or kicking anyone. I thought her being held down was a little strange, but I guess she's held down for the safety of the guests? Why? Why would she bite or kick anyone? I don't understand what's happening. I don't, I don't understand. Why is, why does she have rabies? Nim, nim, <laughs> nim. They also had to switch condoms between the other fluffers and me. This was extreme hard mode or soft mode, and I'm honestly surprised as many men got as hard as they did. My own partner, for example, despite being excellent at sex. Lads, if you're in a relationship and your woman says, babe, you're excellent at sex, you're not. She's lying to you. <laughs> And the primary organizer of this and other <laughs> sex events usually needs to be alone with a lady in order to get hard. Look out, she's a biter. 
Dave, you get a golden star sticker for the sex today. Shut up, silly woman. Why would she say that? Exactly. If you're actually excellent at sex, not only will you know because she's going to come, but she's going to tell you in ways that don't sound like she's your third grade school teacher. All right? Like... <laughs> We did have fluffers to help. In the same room where I was getting boned, other fluffers were strewn about, lying on fuck benches, sucking cock, etc. Fluffers got to participate however much they wanted and with whoever they wanted, and normal orgy consent rules applied. The fuck is a normal orgy consent rule? <laughs> Ask before touching a fluffer. Fluffers can leave or refuse at any time for any reason. Cheese ward lose game. Way. <laughs> this picture this won't load. Gold. Bless the tortism, harlot. There we go. Which of the fluffers did you engage with? We got hand job, blow job, vaginal. I came with her. Uh, I guess B was the most popular. Imagine. <laughs> Imagine being one of these other women and just seeing how much more popular B was than you. Imagine imagine being like fucking H or C. I was like nobody nobody even wanted to fucking engage with you. Nobody nobody wanted to look at your busted ass. <laughs> was it a Tuesday night then? It was not a Tuesday night. Damn, H got ghosted. B must have been banging. Yeah, that's why she got comes instead of going to the birthday girl. They were just like, yeah, fuck, uh, fuck that ookie cookie. I'm coming with you, baby. <laughs> All right, you're out. Great stream. Have a good evening. In the exit survey, we asked for info about which fluffers people engaged with. As you can see, fluffer B fluffed hard. Closely followed by Fluffer A's mouth skills. Fluffer C reports she definitely gave more blowjobs than E.G. Fluffer D. And thinks people didn't remember them as much because Fluffer D was having vaginal sex, but Fluffer C wasn't. All these women coping about why they got lower numbers. If a man is coming to a gangbang, he don't give a shit about anything besides what you look like. You are an attractive piece of meat in this, in this scenario. H just wandered in off the street confusedly. Assuming this is true, the rest of the chart may also be less reliable or biased in memory towards people having vaginal sex. Fluffers reported afterwards that they had a good time, didn't feel uncomfortable or coerced at any point. The men in general were quite awesome, respectful, happy to be there, and really sweet. One of them, the guy who brought the stickers, was a virgin. I assumed that she was the one who made these and handed them out herself. But you're telling me one of the men who came to fuck her brought them oh, himself? He yeah. brought his own fucking gold <laughs> stars, dude? Oh my god. Imagine losing your virginity to this. This is, this is what, like, unironically, like, toxic masculinity would be, right? All the dudes thinking that they need to brag about their sexual prowess to their bros. And this guy being like, yeah, think of how cool all of my friends will think I am when I tell them I lost my virginity in an orgy. No, dude. No, dude. <laughs> that guy is your hero, see? Exactly what I said. <laughs> Exactly what I said. You shouldn't celebrate something like this. This is degeneracy. You thought a gangbang was a group of dudes actually having sex with a single girl? The fuck is this fluffer stuff? To get dudes to just pump and walk? This sounds like a coom train or a breeding pact. Well, I mean, I don't know. Fluffers are normal in pornography, so I just assumed they would exist in like an orgy scenario. Showing up to the gangbang but needing to review each fluffer's resume before deciding to come inside them! <laughs> Toxic masculinity is bringing stickers. No, that's not what I said, Proctor. Toxic masculinity is this guy wanting to lose his virginity at a gangbang. Because you know the only reason that he's going to do this is because he wants to brag about having had a gangbang experience and that he got to lose his virginity in one. Because there will be destitute, disgusting men who will think that that's cool. Never heard this term in your life. <laughs> 
We asked if we could celebrate his first time, and he said yes, the wackier the better, I believe. So we had him go first and popped confetti over him when he finished, and I signed a personalized gift for him. He was also wearing a heart rate monitor and said I could include the data from it here. Once a man has had sex with me, he drew, or once a man had sex with me, he drew a tally mark on my leg with a sharpie and then signed the guest book, which was a pretty white wedding guest book I got because it was hilarious. Turns out Lou Brew and Sharpie, so despite us starting out with a surplus, by the end we were scrounging. This is so silly. The confetti thing is kind of funny. I will, I will give them that. I will, I will give them that. That's like, that's like something I would do in a committed relationship, right? Like once, once, once you finally break your previous record for most cooms in one night, I just like pull the the party popper from behind my back and like explode it in front in front of your face. <laughs> you mean at least he got to go first? I fucking guess. Pretty sure Ayla only showers like once a month. Do you think she did it before or after the orgy? That's a, that's a good question. You don't like how silly Kier is with sex? Excuse me, the silliness happens after the sex? During the sex, that's, that's serious time, okay? <laughs> Monster Go, they give you the $2! You just bring your cum in a jar like a normal person? Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. I just made myself queasy. You can't say shit like that in my chat because I have a very vivid imagination. And so I imagined a man going to a gangbang like this, but like saving up his kumis in a jar for like months beforehand. So he comes to the orgy with like a pickle jar filled with his cum. Uh, like the woman is like gaped on the bed and he just opens the jar and pours his like eight months worth of kumis inside of her. And then everyone starts vomiting from the smell. Imagine the smell, but don't. <laughs> Upon banging the birthday girl... <laughs> that- that was a good layering of the alerts. <laughs> of all the things you've talked and inflicted mental damage on stream, Silly the woman. classic meme of Coom Jar is what makes you pause. No, the classic meme of comb jar is just combing on figurines and melting it on a radiator, not opening the jar and pouring your saved up comey bank into a woman. Shut up! Now Silly you're hungry, woman. so you're gonna go find food, I guess? I hate you. You disgust me. <laughs> I legit gagged! Yeah, I got dizzy for a second when I, when I imagined that. That's why I was like... You gotta be careful what you type in my chat. My visualization is like a hundred out of ten, okay? <laughs> Dude has a fucking adamantium stomach. God damn! Upon banging the birthday girl, men got a sticker. Blue for banging, gold if they came. Which allowed them access into a third room. Where they could continue banging and coming in fluffers if they wanted. And if the fluffers were down. So they had fluffers in the room where she was getting banged, but they had extra fluffers in a secret third room that you could only access if you came once? What is what is this like tiered battle pass hierarchy gangbang? What is happening? Didn't Pippa show me the jar? Are you fucking dumb? Why why would you assume I didn't know about the jar until <laughs> until like six, five years ago? What the hell? Rex, Rex, and Rex and Tors. Thank you for the twenty. Arr. You gotta thank the pink rabbit for introducing you to my life. Before I was a white pilled dad of three, had a lovely wife and a prosperous future ahead. Now I'm a schizo, secretly typing this from a mental ward. Thank you. I hope your wife and kids are doing well. Uh, I hope you write them birthday cards from the ward. <laughs> Kaiser Vermilion, thank you for the two dollars. And the voice of Gilbert Godfrey. I can't do his voice, but I can, like, do a, a brain damage Boston one, giving you the THIS IS SO WRONG! <laughs> Jesus Christ. Branked competitive sex! Give me butt scratches! Like I'm a real pet! Probably not the best time to mention <laughs> what tonsil is. Fermented child feces. What? What is fermented child feces? 
I didn't, I didn't, I didn't understand the first word in the TTS. And my other browser isn't open, so I can't read it right now. But hopefully that has nothing to do with the Chinese boy piss eggs. Thank you for the five dollars, not sorry. <clears throat> Men who weren't participating got to hang out in the main space or in a hot tub, where at least that some networking occurred. <laughs> The Netherine! Thank you for the thousand biddies. I entered the stream and now I'm tempted to leave again. Very tempted. <laughs> Welcome! Virgin Dude was 100% lying. Guy went to an orgy with a damn sticker system. He probably said he was a virgin for special attention or so he could go first. Some dudes pull the same trick with prostitutes for discounts. Oh, you know, that makes sense. He could, he could definitely have been lying because he wanted to go first. I was like, I, I wouldn't trust any of these people that showed up to this thing to, like, hand me a napkin if I had food on my mouth, right? Like, this, this is just not a trustworthy person in this entire scenario. I wonder if any of these people have been to, like, the hedonism island. <laughs> I, want, I heard one man say, I didn't expect to meet another YC founder here. I don't know what that means. Mmm, cheeseburger. It's a Korean wine tea. T O N G S U L. Tong Tongsil. Oh. Oh. Not sorry. Thank you for the five dollars. I have not heard of that. I have not heard of the fermented poop wine. Rotting word. Thank you for the five pounds. People who purchase. Oh. People who purchase the Premium Bang Battle Pass will unlock three new skins for their cock chair and some complimentary hair dye. She's learning. We're all learning. This is a YC Y Combinator, basically tech venture capital. What the fuck? Startup Accelerator? YC, your come. Thank you, Brave SJ. <laughs> We also had an array of food and a small array of board games. Though I don't think any of the board games actually got used. Imagine going to a gangbang orgy and sitting in a hot tub playing rationality cardinality instead of banging <laughs> the women. <sighs> the men overwhelmingly related, rated the experience as positive. Some notes from the exit survey. Your party experience. Man, they have to answer so many fucking questions after coming to this game thing, dude. One of the best evenings I've ever had. Everyone at the event was amazing. You guys did great work vetting and putting on a top-notch event. Oh my fucking god, the whole event was one standout experience. I've been to a number of orgies and gangbangs back in New York City. But this was the best and it's not even close. So like one was a zero percent, a seven people rated it, or 25 people rated it a seven. That's weird that it's a scale of one to seven. We shouldn't it have been a one to 10. That's weird. Four was neutral. Two, two people were like, eh, eh, I guess, I guess it was pretty all right. <laughs> the five guys who didn't fuck her, they just showed up and played Settlers of Catan all night. A baby dash, thank you for the 199 after coming to this gang, right? This is this is like my tangent when talking about drone striking children. The only way you could make it not fun to drone strike other foreign children is to hide it behind bureaucratic paperwork. Like this this is how you make an orgy not fun. <laughs> You would say, no way you could get hard in that situation. Yeah, she was she was complimenting the guys who managed to earlier. Hypnotic and rapture, thank you for the five dollars. Oh god. Kirsha shocks me breathless and speechless. She probably tells these freaky deviant stories during naughty fun times. She's no. Why the fuck would I tell Where? stories about gangbangs when I actually wanna fuck? That doesn't make any sense. Zooms in the thought and is greeted with an explosion of confetti as the amassed onlookers clap and offer congratulations. <laughs> Satisfied with his effort, he turns to leave. Only for Gregorian chanting to begin as another door opens. <laughs> Phase two. <laughs> this boss had two phases! Thank you for the $10, Genie. How many orgasms 
did you have? 12 people didn't have an orgasm at all. Doesn't, isn't that, isn't that, huh? they're up here. Oh, uh, hold on, where's the, where's the, the gangbang flow chart? That's a 15 didn't come. All right, 15 didn't come, but down, down here, it says that 12 didn't have an orgasm. How, how did 15 not come, but 12 not have an orgasm? This math ain't mathing. We're cool mathing right now. We got four, 14 people had one coom. Seven people had two cooms. One had three, two had four, one had five, two. Two men had six cums at the gangbang birthday party. They faked it. Oh, God, BB Death, thank you for the 199. Pegging. Oh, God, no. Roadkill Phil, thank you for the VIVDY dollar doodles. Here's your thanks for introducing you to Class of 09. My streams are worth it, worth their weight in gold. Did I ever see the GSA route in the second game? I did, but it was during the Donathon, and the Donathon VODs aren't available on my archive channel yet. Uh, poor Ziz is the only one working on getting those archive things up on the channel, and Ziz is quite literally covered in a mountain of fucking work. He... He has not only all of the, like, 1,400 hours of the Donathon to parse through, but also two years' worth of VODs to get up on that channel. So... <laughs> Lord, yeah. That's why, that's why some of the, uh, some of the playlists on there aren't complete. Like, the Digimon playlist doesn't have all of the VODs on there yet. I was very bad at remembering the archive things myself. <laughs> How did it not hurt by six? Um, well, because 14 times in one day is possible, so it's very possible, if you can do 14 in one day, for it to not hurt by 6. But by the time you get to 14, your dick gonna be hurting. Your dick gonna be hurting, you can't use it for multiple days. It's gonna hurt when you pee, and the only time you're ever gonna feel any reprieve from that pain is when you start jerking off again. Hey, need some milk. 14 times, that's a meme here for a reason. <sighs> Radstorm, they give the $2. Weird tabs or Kirsch's foreplay. No, thank you! Two guys reported having six orgasms, but most only had one. Over the last three months, on average, how frequently did you have penetrative sex? More than once daily is like a dark blue? I don't see a dark blue on here, so I guess that didn't- that none of them said that. Daily is this orange? 37 multiple times a week. Gren, dark Gren, once a week. Multiple times a month is 27. Once a month, once every few weeks, never. I was thinking about this as masturbation for some reason, and I was like, this seems weird. And then I reread the title, A Penetrative Sex. Um. Um. I hope the ones that say daily and multiple times a week. Are, are in committed relationships and are not whores. What am I saying? They're going to a gangbang. They're all whores. Oh god, I hate this. I'm like cold Mayor, sweating. We need to let me solo her <coughs> image as a thumbnail for the eventual VOD. GD, thank you for the eight dollar doodles. If you have a thumbnail suggestion, send it to dear dear old Nimothy or I am Binary Mind. Binary Mind has been making uh, thumb nails for me recently. People learn to control their pelvic floor muscles. They can go as long as they want with no negative repercussions as they cancel out the ejaculation and canceling out refractory. I mean, your cock is still gonna get sore. Uh, you, you can't avoid the cock soreness once you get up to like 14 times, you know? Too much effort. That's how them women's get that gorilla grip, baby. <laughs> Most guys were already getting laid on the reg before attending. My guess is probably they're in non-monogamous relationships, but only five reported having infrequent sex. How many people did you have vaginal sex with at this event? Two said zero. Does that mean anal or just none? <laughs> How many people did you have oral sex with? Wait, anal isn't even a chart! What did they mean by this? They made a pie chart of the amount of times dudes came. Like, this is a marketing report. Overall, I'm glad I did it. 
It was a novel, intense experience, and I'm deeply grateful to the entire organizing team who worked so hard to make this happen. This is the most elaborate birthday gift I've ever received in my life, and there's no way I can repay them. But I don't think I would do it again. Smaller trains run on me at smaller orgies have left me with an afterglow, a near psychedelic state. But this one left me with no afterglow at all. I think this is probably because the other orgies I run are designed to optimize for letting go. I don't have to manage other people's experiences at all, and thus can sink into the intensity of it all even more. Got railed by six different people. Uh, I should probably do a different voice for that, eh? I got railed by like six different people at an orgy last night and I have a glow today. My soul is joyous and I am nourished. What a fucking weirdo. You know how I have a glow and I feel like I am nourished and my soul is joyful? When I, when I have a man who loves me and we have the sexual relations and then cuddle afterwards. And after we're, we're sweaty and cuddling in bed after sex, I'm just like, hey, yo, you want a cheeseburger? <laughs> you can hear the SSRIs through the screen. At my birthday gangbang, however, I ended up subtly attempting to manage people's experiences. I felt really, or I really felt for the men putting themselves in such a vulnerable position. And I was afraid of behaving in a way that would make them feel bad. If they were having trouble getting hard, I felt a bit of a pressure to act sexier. Yeah, if I wanted guy. to freak out or do something weird, There's I suppressed it. Joke there, but none of them are gay. <laughs> I suppressed it because I knew they didn't know me or how to interpret my actions. They hadn't been fully briefed, really, and I didn't want to worry them. So I didn't really get my mind yeeted as much during the event. The event was designed to get as many dicks in me as safely as possible, not reduce Ayla into a quivering mass. There's something, like, just really dystopian about reading how analytical she's being about something that should be incredibly emotional. I don't like maybe that's just me, dude. Maybe maybe that's just me. This is fine. It did what it intended, and I'm glad I did it. I didn't feel bad or regret afterwards, only something like satisfaction and relief. But I'll probably have a more normal orgy next year. I think it's likely some of the fluffers will get their own birthday gangbangs in the future, though. On a personal level, I had two primary things of note. Penises! I've never before had such a controlled experiment of penis experiences. Usually I'm experiencing penises in different positions while in different moods. But this was just one penis after the other. And the differences were really apparent. I found I completely changed my mind about a specific penis trait, and this will update the way I talk about penises moving forward. Two, I moved through three distinctive stages while lying on the bed for hours. Nervousness, a god complex, and then cope. I feel like the whole thing must have been coping. I, I just like... This is a level of disgusting degeneracy that I could not have imagined someone breaking down in such a manner. I'm just like, I hate this. Uh, this I'm not religious, but this woman needs God, man. <laughs> Dude, Guy McPants, thank you for the five dollars. Ayla is what happens when an artist picks sex as their special interest. No, I feel like that's me. <laughs> Crazy theory. She has dissociative identity disorder and one of her personalities comes out well naked or something. And the clothed personality hates the naked one and is a sociopath. What the fuck? These motherfuckers need Jesus. I just, I just like... There are... 1,604 men who liked the idea of a birthday gangbang. There, there are this many men 
who would encourage this level of degeneracy. And probably even more if she had farther reach. And the only reason a good swath of them got culled was because they were too dumb to pass an auto filter. <clears throat> I hate this. Can you go consume protein so we can catch a break? <laughs> I think I might skip protein today so I can cover everything I want to. I'm gonna I'm gonna make the executive decision. This woman needs God in the same way a frost giant needs God, more specifically, the hammer of God applied directly to the forehead. Head on. I wonder how many just wanted to go see if they would get any birthday hats for their peepees. It's just like, women should stop being whores, but prostitution is the world's oldest profession. So whores will always exist. Weak men like this need to stop encouraging and rewarding whore-like behavior. We, we need to bring shame back, dude. Imagine going through that place with a black light. I hope you don't stay at hotels, because those are scary too. Star Phoenix, thank you for the two dollars. God, an exorcist, a rehab clinic, maybe? Have a good night, e Koron. Hey! When is the Philian collab? You thought it was today? We did not have a collab planned. I don't know why people I don't know why people thought that there was one. We we are still talking about what to do. We haven't we haven't figured out what to do for a collab yet. I feel like the room would just show up white under black light. What did she mean by bringing this up a day before Pippa's birthday? I hope Pippa shows up at your house and decapitates you with a chainsaw. <laughs> oh god. Do protein. I'm skipping protein today. I'm skipping the protein because we're looping, chat. We're looping. We're looping on multiple things today to enter into our sweet baby tangent. The, fir the first loop. The first loop that we're making. This is the same fucking place from that one clip six years ago. Did they actually paint over the steeper steps because of that guy? Six years ago, a man did not want to step foot on the gay pride rainbow flag staircase. So he climbed up the giant barrier on the side of it instead. And recently, March 1st, man climbs up railing to avoid using woke stairs. They have repainted the gay pride stairs with the new party approved flag. And then they painted the stair barricade that that man used to climb up before because he didn't want to step on the flag with more gay pride flags. And so this man followed in the footsteps of his predecessor. But since there was no staircase to climb up, he used the railing. What a hero. Truly. He inspires us all. <laughs> the fucking pose at the end. Look at him go. This is a nice guy. <laughs> this is a true Chad right there. Use the railing, not get railed. The fucking flex, dude. In like five years, they'll have painted the railings. It'll keep escalating like a Bugs Bunny versus Daffy Duck cartoon. <laughs> and I agree. The dudes doing this are probably doing it just to be funny. But everyone's like, oh my god, look at this hatred. Look at, look at these bigots. <laughs> You might get arrested if you step on it. Only if you leave shoe marks. Like if you leave tire tracks on the gay pride crosswalks, you're gonna you're gonna get you're gonna get fined. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is a shocking dumpster fire. You can't look away from Welcome! Yeah, this man literally said not today, Satan. Not today. And uh every everyone's favorite kind of loop. <laughs> Help. Eye-watering injury of Indonesian man, 43, who shoved a toothbrush into his penis, which snapped during sex. First of all, why would you shove a toothbrush into your penis? Second of all, was it bristle end first or handle end first? Third of all, why would you put a penis... Why would you put a, why would you put a toothbrush into your penis and then put your penis into another person? That's not how you clean inside of them. Yes! 
And Chad, I just want to let you know that this was published on March fucking 1st. This is a brand new article. Shut up! Silly woman. And Bobby, Bobberson, thank you for the five dollars. And Kirsha being internally misogynistic by saying women should be more than walking holes and that it should be harder for men to pump and dump. Yeah, imagine. I'm so misogynistic, I want women to have actual self-worth instead of lowering themselves to just soulless meat holes. A man was left in excruciating pain after a toothbrush he bizarrely shoved into his penis snapped during sex. Doctors revealed the 43-year-old waited 12 hours before seeking medical attention for his eye-watering injury. Grilled about why he had a toothbrush in his penis, the unnamed Indonesian man confessed to performing do-it-yourself surgery for his sexual satisfaction. The toothbrush snapped during sex. What does he mean by surgery? What did what did he what did he mean by this? Medics were told he first made a small incision to insert toothbrushes in 2017. Chat, hold me. This isn't sounding. <laughs> Chat, chat, please, this isn't sounding. He cut open his penis to make a slot for toothbrushes. This is, this is like a submissive man and his dominatrix was like, now, Brian, your penis is just too small and flimsy to please a goddess like me. I need you to insert a toothbrush into your penis. Not, not to sound with it. Shut up. You don't deserve that Silly kind of woman. pleasure. Shut up. Please cut open your Silly penis woman. and insert a toothbrush for me. What the what the fuck? Close the fucking tab. What Shut the up, fuck? psychopath. <laughs> Silly woman. It is unclear whether the toothbrush oh, in question had been it. in place since that time oh, or whether he had taken Shut others up. out. Silly woman. Shut up. I mean, I guess in this in this Silly manner woman. your dominatrix would save on a toothbrush holder, right? She could, she could just have you, like, become furniture in the bathroom and use your, your penis as a toothbrush holder. That's, that's so simple after she brushes her teeth. <sighs> Nocturnal 007, they give the $5. It's butt time? The guy that did a burnout on the gay crosswalk got charged for a hate crime. The, the one that happened, like, this year or the one that happened a few years ago? Or both. <sighs> She won't Shut stop, up. chat. Just let her get through Silly it. Silly woman. You'd like to point out that I lost 100 viewers during this article? Their bloodline is weak and they will get culled in the winter. Nim. 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 Thank you for the five dollars. How did I find something worse than sa- I thought this was Silly a sounding woman. article at first! I thought this was sounding, but apparently I was wrong. <laughs> Indiana Bowling! Thank you for the 699 Canadians. I will pay you another twenty dollars to not say that shit again! Sergeant Buck, thank you for the five dollars. Dentists hate this man! Sharing grisly details of the incident, doctors from the Soitomo General Academic Hospital in East Java told the man or told how the man required a two-hour operation to repair his fractured penis. They wrote in the International Journal of Surgery Case Reports, the patient sustained a penile injury during sexual intercourse in the woman-on-top position the night before. He had an eggplant deformity, a telltale sign of penile fracture. Woman on top is already a dangerous fucking position for your dick. Why would you increase that danger by inserting a toothbrush into a man-made cavity that you cut into your dick? I don't understand. I don't understand men. Why would you do this? <laughs> Never on top mating presser. Oh God. <laughs> Although the penis is not a bone, it can fracture when the appendage is subject to sharp, blunt force. In many cases, a grim cracking or popping sound is heard. Afterwards, it usually resembles an aubergine turning purple and swollen. Medics said the man was discharged three days after surgery, reporting no issues. He returned for a follow-up appointment one month later, where he was able to pass urine and claimed not to have any complications. The deformity had also vanished. A penis fracture happens yes! instantaneously and requires urgent medical treatment. In many cases, a grim snapping sound can be heard. Why did they why did they feel the need to repeat that like five sentences later? <laughs> For a man to get an erection, two spongy tubes called the corpora cavernosa fill up with blood and harden. Yeah. These are surrounded yeah. by a fibrous yeah. lining known as tunica albugina. I didn't know man's had tuna inside the penis! Oh god, 
but a fracture occurs when these areas rupture. Penis fractures often affect men between the ages of 30 and 50, it's but their true time? frequency is still unknown. Such injuries typically happen during vigorous sex with positions like doggy and cowgirl, known to present the biggest risk. Why doggy style? I don't, I don't know. How, how would you break your dick doing doggy style? That doesn't make any sense to me. Egg-shaped penis. Holy shit. Is that an Epstein reference? What? Not my man tuna. <laughs> you got to put the mayonnaise on the man tuna. Thrusting at the wrong angle? I mean, I guess, but like... Couldn't thrusting at the wrong angle in missionary also cause penile fracture if doggy would? I don't know, man. Women can push back a lot doggy style, and if the angle... Ah! Okay, I get it. I get it. That's kind of nuts. Why would he do this? I like... Why is the top comment fucking Donald Trump's penis? I don't... How is Donald Trump living so fucking rent-free in your head that you read an article about an Indonesian man cutting open his penis to make a toothbrush slot and your first thought is Daniel Trump penis was only 3.5 inches long. Like, what? What is wrong with you? <laughs> Does she not understand the middle out equation theory? No, I've never even heard of that. I've never even heard of that. I'm a doctor of cars, not of medicine. You see, I thought I thought this was a sounding article, and I was gonna bring up this and be like, "What? Why are the lotus eaters impeding on my sounding territory?" All right, all right, okay. <laughs> why? Why are they taking my sounding articles? That that doesn't seem like their purview. <laughs> And Donald Trump is the uh, bet noir of a lot of these people's brains? I fucking guess so. <laughs> Invite the fox, oh, Carl! <laughs> he would have been amazing to have during my sweet baby tangent. I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna be real fucking honest with you. And then, uh, before just sweet babies, we have to talk about the sweetest of sweet baby dealings. The game that, for some reason, people still think isn't woke. Somehow. It's okay to be wrong and dumb. Speedrunner sacrifices precious time to perform Alan Wake 2's musical number during their run. The next TikTok trend? Speedrunners usually skip anything in games that can shave valuable seconds off of their runs from cutscenes to entire levels. But one record chaser sacrificed precious time to perform Alan Wake 2's now iconic musical number to fucking who? Who is this iconic to? Journalists aren't human, so their opinions don't fucking matter. What do you mean? That man is a sweet baby plant. I'm so fucking, I'm so fucking mad that anyone would call anything from this piece of shit game iconic. Oh, <laughs> Watch dogs, iconic hat. Yeah, the iconic hatchet tattoo or whatever the fuck. Hammer tattoo from, from The Last of Us. <laughs> Was I ever finished? Alan Wake 2. I rage quit, dude. I unironically literally rage quit that game. And during my rage quit moment, I went to Twitch to see the other streamers playing it and and like looked at the clips of people getting to the musical number. The amount of Twitch streamers that got up and danced to this fucking thing. I, I just I just like wait, wake up, sheeple! Why are you like this? This is this is oh my god, it's a fuck dude, fuck dude, the soy, it's in the veins. <sighs> Baby Desk, thank you for the 499. The credits were iconic because it means no more suffering. Anyone who's played Alan Wake 2 knows that moment where the otherwise oppressive game gets a little jiggy in a classic song and dance section. The scene has become so memorable. The game's creative director jumped on stage at the Game Awards to perform the number, and Final Fantasy XIV's famed composer recently gushed over it. You guys got to saw me have a breakdown during the Game Awards. 
I was I was paid to watch the game awards, so that's why I watched it, and I still had a mental break at Alan Wake winning so much shit that it doesn't deserve. <sighs> Just advertising, yeah. During her speedrun of the metafictional horror game, streamer Tainted Tally chose to let the section play rather than skip it to reach a faster time. In an even more iconic turn of events, she stood up on stream to perform the entire number, along with a crew of backup dancers. Yes, this absolutely lost us time, but it was worth it to showcase the game, the streamer said on the website, forever known as Twitter. Chat. Chat, why, why do they call this iconic? How is it iconic if she did what literally every other streamer who played this game and drinks the goy slop did? Why? How is that iconic? Has, how is it iconic to do what everyone else did? How? Oh my God. I hate the people who like Alan Wake more than I hate Alan Wake too. The first game was so good. The first game was so good. The second game was sweet babied out of its goddamn fucking mind. Why do you sound like you're in a tunnel? Because I put my head in my hands because I am exasperated at both everyone in this article, the person who wrote the article and the incorrect use of the word fucking iconic. Oh my God. What actual speedrunner has enough friends to act as backup dancers? <laughs> Oh my god. Doesn't that doesn't that mean it's even less iconic? Because it wasn't like she got up in the middle of the speedrun and decided last minute to chunk her time to do the dance. This was all pre-planned. This was this was a pre-planned stunt to try and get more people interested in their stream. And they somehow got a fucking article out of it. I wonder, I wonder if the tainted tally person knows the person Khan Seren that posted the article. I wonder, I wonder if there's uh, some connection here. <laughs> you actually hated the first Alan Wake, so you lucked out on not having to need to play the second. I liked the first Alan Wake. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Speedrunner, there's a joke for you. Look, we can't talk about the dilation stations here. <laughs> the woman is clearly not a real speedrunner. This was some stupid stunt for people to look at her channel. <laughs> yep. All right. I, need, I don't know about you, but I need to get up and yep. stretch my legs. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, fuck. Oh, God. Not not only did you pre-plan this. Not only did you pre-plan this for a publicity stunt, but you tried to pretend like you didn't fucking pre-plan this. Holy shit. Holy Christ. I I hate streamers. I, I, I am going to off myself at Home Depot. That's, that's a joke for legal purposes, Twitch. <laughs> Standing there, confused, like what, what, what are you doing? It's a good thing. It's a good thing that speedrunning is is a female sport. Maybe one day, maybe one day we can let men participate in speedrunning. Cause clearly, like, they, there's just no men in speedrunning at all. Shit like this is why you stopped watching GDQ events. Yeah, Tim said the same thing. <laughs> he stopped watching GDQ ages ago. Baby does thank you for the 499. She made top 10 because only seven submitted scores in the category that she did.
All you guys in the chat saying, but there are male speedrunners. They didn't understand my joke. There is not a single man there. <laughs> Mind you how anime cons all have devolved. Oh, the cool speedrunners got banned for not being woke enough years ago. Unfortunately, dude. Can we go back to the speedrunners being like the autist with the thick reasons, double rim glasses? I say the exact quote of Carl Benjamin, a.k.a. Sargon the Vakad. But I am reminded of what he said to a particularly rowdy feminist after she tried to talk back to that man. I wouldn't even rape you, Spider God. Thank you for the seven dollar doodles. <laughs> oh, 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 God. Oh, I found it. Oh, I found it. It's definitely on the longer side and there's a lot of waiting, she says in response to a viewer on social media. But I love the game so much, it doesn't really bother me. Tainted Tally isn't alone in that sentiment, as our Alan Wake 2 review gave it five stars! And we also wrote about how it's the perfect example of how to do dual protagonists right. Yeah, fuck you, white man. I'm not gonna listen to you writing. This bizarre sequel still has more surprises in store, though, with two expansions that will tease future games in the Remedy Connected universe. Speaking of, Alan Wake 2 recently became the studio's fastest selling game, which has helped Control 2 and the Max Payne remakes ramp up development. I was like, I hate current year chat. I hate current year. I hate it. <sighs> you don't trust a Max Payne remake? Same. They killed Remedy and they're pissing on the grave. Don't you dare remake Max Payne, you fuck. I'm sorry to tell you this. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you this. The meteor can't come soon enough. Let me, uh... Let me get on over to my sweet baby window. I had to make an entire window just for sweet baby because goddamn, there is a lot. I also notated some shit. I notated some shit here. So I wouldn't get so fucking lost in my own tangent sauce. Because this, uh, this is a... This is a long tangent. A smart, you don't want to get it on you. True. True and real. Um, let's see. So we have, we have the Asmongold vid that I wanted to watch a little bit of first. I'm going to turn off my background music. Check DM. I don't have any DMs from you. <laughs> Check DM, this man said, without sending me a DM. Did I see the video on the Willy Wonka experience in Scotland? Uh, I retweeted it, like, the day that it happened, and I made edits with the, uh, Dashcon ball pit. <laughs> yes. The- I- I am also quite fond of the HRT hit the nerd community, like, crack hit the black community. It's unfortunate, and both of them are CIA glow ops, so, you know? <laughs> Do we get to tell you to check DMs just on principle? No! No, you do not. Let me let me turn off my BGM here. Let's turn off my BGM. This is actually like a really kind of a big story. Uh, that's I mean at least I don't know. You say real big story. Like I mean this is my opinion of like what a big story is. But um, so Sweet Baby uh, Incorporated. This is the. In my opinion, I think that water. I know. Yeah. Well, I've said I've said before, <laughs> right? If I'm ever drinking water, you know I'm down bad. That's I true. I got maybe two hours of sleep, okay? So, yes. Anyway, let's get back over to this. Sweet Baby employee. So, Sweet Baby Incorporated, this is the, uh, let me see if I can, can I, can I find this to the Twitter page here? Yeah, uh, let me see if I can find it. So, working at Sweet Baby Incorporated, this is a, basically, Sweet, Sweet Baby is hot. oh uh, shit. Uh, uh, I went to pause it. So, My spacebar yes. hasn't been working. Anyway, oh, it's working now. Fuck this. you, spacebar. Sweet baby employee. Can I but uh, and sweet baby's had their tweet. It's not working now. Sweet baby's had their tweets protected for like ages now. So this, this has nothing to do with the recent like Steam page controversy. Sweet baby's had their tweets protected for months. Literally, literally been for months. Clean my keyboard? No, no, it's not a keyboard issue. It's a YouTube issue that like for some reason I wasn't able to pause. 
Can I also use K to pause? I hate technology. Opinion, but I feel like this company is being used as a boogeyman. And people view this company, it's kind of like the World Economic Forum on a smaller scale. Where, like, I don't think that the World Economic Forum is, you know, actually the Illuminati in plain sight. And they're not actually trying to, like, you know, kill everybody and do all these things. They're kind of like a representation that people can see. And because people see this example of it, then they latch on to it. And they're like, these are the core people that are causing all of our problems. They might not be the core people, but they are still a symptom of the core people. And so to call out Sweet Baby for what they've been doing, and Ziz found a VOD where I called them out, like, in November. I'm pretty sure I did something earlier than that, because I, I remember talking about them when Alan, Alan Wake dropped in October. But the, 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 the tags are, are hard to parse through sometimes. Both the World Economic Forum and Sweet Baby are demonstrably evil, but they are not the people pulling the strings, necessarily. Asmund should be the one in the chair. They're the limbs of the Leviathan? Yes. And if you do not fully cut off the Leviathan's heart, it will just regrow its limbs. Sweet, sweet baby is a symptom of everything that happened during Gamergate. And unfortunately for us, we were too busy laughing at everyone being brain damaged during that time. And we didn't do enough to stop them from infiltrating absolutely everywhere. We make fun of the journalists who routinely bring up Gamergate seemingly for no reason at all, thinking that it lives rent-free in their head, but in fact, they were fighting a war that we thought had already ended. They, they mention Gamergate not because it lives rent-free in their head, but because it never stopped. We, we just started laughing at them instead of continuing to fight. Unfortunately. It was a tortured metaphor. <laughs> Some of the sweet baby people are from Gamergate, like Lego butts. That's exactly what I'm about to get into. I understand. I totally understand the problem that people have with this, but I don't think that these people are the only uh, symptom of that. Now, obviously, I disagree with like what what their kind of like their their goals are. I, I disagree with these because I find them to be antithetical to the nature of what art is. Uh, but, of course, obviously art is decided by the artist. I think the issue is whenever people feel like they have to do this instead. So, anyway, yes, these are an easy target. They don't, they don't feel like they have to. It's a moral imperative to push this kind of stuff. They hate you. They hate Asmin. They hate me. They hate all of us who want to consume video games without Sweet ideology. Baby is full of old Gamergate figures, most of which are ex-something awful goons. Mm -hmm. Unironically, they have spent almost 20 years networking in the industry to set up their grifts. Yep. They are gaming's biggest scam artists. Yeah, and it, it's crazy to me how deep this goes. And like, I'm in the same boat of like, I was busy laughing at these people. I wasn't expecting... I wasn't expecting this level of, like, insidious infiltration, I suppose. And so it's like, I also slacked. And it's, it's fucking awful that we are now at this stage. And I don't know, I don't know how to, I don't know how to fucking correct shit now. That's why I keep saying people need to know about Bridge. Because if we don't stop Bridge in its tracks where it is now, and we do the same thing, where we celebrate, have clap about our little DEI beating tiny victories, same thing's gonna happen that happened with Gamergate and Sweet Baby. I think it's fair to say a majority of us slacked back then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Target, and uh, these are people that are working at the, uh, at the company. And basically, this happened, I think, two days ago. I didn't cover it then because I just didn't really think it was that big of a deal. But now, uh, what did he it, mean it's by definitely this? worth talking about. <laughs> what ended up happening is that there is a Steam, uh, there is a Steam group and there was a person who was looking for any game that used Sweet Baby Incorporated as a consultancy. And they wanted to put that in, the, in like some sort of review. To be fair, most of us never encountered this type of stuff before. No, but it's like people like me who were inundated with Gamergate stuff. People like Sargon who reported on it all the time. I was like, how, how, did, how did these people still manage to get a stranglehold? Right? Like some... S somewhere we were slacking. 
Asmongold gives decent takes, but lately he's cringe and brain dead. View. So anybody who who goes into playing this game knows that, you know, basically the people that made this game, uh, like consulted this, you know, like inclusion agency to try to tone down any sort of things that could be issues. It's basically like a, um, uh, like, you know, like on, on a cigarette where it says like, this will give you lung cancer. It's, it's like a, uh, a warning it's a label. warning label. It's really simple. And uh, obviously big surprise, the employees that work at that company are not happy about that. So what they're trying to do- They don't like it when they get cut. Is they're trying to look and get somebody who get all of their followers to come together and uh, basically, like, uh, come together and, like, uh, oh, oh, fuck, sorry, I got two hours of sleep, so, you know, it's a bit hard for me. <laughs> Relatable. Uh, come together and mass report. Come together and mass report and ban the people that are running this different page to silence the people that are trying to hold them, like, Accountable. and I, I don't even understand the logic in this either. It's like if people disagree with what you're doing. A lot of like, them got their start on something right? awful and met industry people from posting there. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. But I mean, again, we had a ton of people calling them out when, when Gamergate first started and noticing the connections that they had. Noticing these connections to like different people in the industry. And someone with more powerful autism than I could probably figure out even more connections from all the people working at Sweet Baby. But I, like I said, I have a ton of tabs. To disagree with it. I mean, if people think, yeah, I don't want to play this game because, uh, you know, I feel like it doesn't have an authentic sense of art because it's being, you know, decided by people that aren't even making the content. Yeah, I think so. I think that's pretty reasonable. And it's also like not that they're calling for harassment or anything else. But let's read the post. And this is a post written by an employee of Sweet Baby. Uh, the Steam Curator Harassment Group, Sweet Baby And I'll bring up Chris's detected, thread as well. So that's where it is is led by this person, uh, K Krampus Rambo. Uh, there, here's Kabrutus. them trying to be slick so they don't get reported. Even with the discriminatory language filed off, the group itself still fails uh, the, the code of conduct. So it fails the code of conduct. Well, let, let's go ahead and let's read what what is cited here and look see at his if tabs, actually, man. Oh, you okay, can't. You can't look at his tabs. His tabs are like mine. I feel. I feel. People disagreed. A with sense him. of kinship. Um, yeah, that's what happens. This is this is really what the problem is here. Is that um, you know, these people have no problem privating their own narrative. They have no problem privating their own Twitter, whenever uh, they're receiving negative feedback or they're getting criticized or whatever, and whenever people aren't okay with their narrative. But whenever other people aren't okay, sorry, with whenever people disagree with their narrative, they immediately put themselves on protected mode and they exercise discretion in what they- It's the same as like, when you call out these people for doing a double standard kind of thing, they'll try to use your sensibilities against you because they know that you want to stick to your principles and they don't give a shit. By any means necessary is what this side will do. So it's like when, when I make some sort of a post about how Uki is experiencing and saying literal racist things against white people, people want to be like, but I thought you said it was okay to say the N word. And it's like, yes, it is. The double standard is the problem. And I don't think singing the N word in a rap song is racism either. You have to know the difference between what racism actually is and what you've been brainwashed to think that it is. And in addition to that, the things that Uki said, if I gave him the benefit of the doubt, would be entirely jokes, except what gives away the fact that he was being unironically racist, whereas the old couple saying hello to him and him getting upset at that, how dare white people talk to him, and him complaining about white people kissing in movies and how disgusting it is. Those, those are things that take into question maybe those other things he said weren't jokes. I was like, it feels, it feels like these people are unable to understand that. And they're just like, oh, you just want everyone to be racist all the time. It's like, I don't want anyone to be racist. I want jokes to be okay. And I want no one to hate someone based on the color of their skin. That's fucking weird, dude. Curator should rename himself to Gentle Hugs for Sweet Baby or something annoyingly gay like that. They can't <laughs> get mad for extreme positive sarcasm. When I'm weaker than you, I ask for freedom because that's according to your principles. When I'm stronger than you, I take away your freedom because that's according to my principles. Yes. Yes. It's why it's why whenever like any conservative person kind of 
fights back against the cancel culture shit and like calls out the people running harassment campaigns, they smugly go, hmm, but I thought you were against cancel culture. <laughs> and it's like, well, yeah, but I'm gonna fight back if you're trying to fucking attack me, you weirdo. Sick and tired of the safe edgy shit that the woke left pushed on the Overton window. The fact that it's okay and fun to be racist to whites and only whites is disgusting. I mean, you, you saw it again with the, uh, the fucking, oh god, Ocean Gate implosion, right? Everybody, everybody was okay with making fun of the people who died in the Ocean Gate implosion because they were rich and so thus they deserved it. But you get, you get this fucking dumbass Air Force guy who immolates himself for Palestine and then you have all these black people on Twitter being like, excuse me, uh, don't say rest in power for him. That's exclusively for black people. And that's not okay to be using it for this guy. I was like, you're going to tell me he immolated himself for a cause that has nothing to do with his country, for people who don't give a shit about him. And even the people who would support his cause that he immolated himself for are talking down to him because, because he's white and because they're using a phrase for him that they don't like. I, this this man's life was essentially fucking worthless. Like I just and people people were getting mad like when uh when side scrollers posted uh, like the uh the videos and stuff on Twitter of like Melanie Mack and I being on their show together. Everyone was just like, "Excuse me, you're going to have someone on your show that made fun of a veteran?" It's like, "Well, yeah. Being a veteran doesn't make you immune from criticism for doing dumb shit." What do you mean by this? Scorpion fatality edit was hilarious. <laughs> Someone already fact-checked that. Rest in power. It was not used in their sphere to begin with. It doesn't even matter if it was used in their sphere or not. Getting angry about the way that someone you says to rest in peace for a guy who died is like peak first world problems. Posted about how game companies should be made aware of what Sweet Baby tried doing to the Steam group. Had guys say we shouldn't use their tactics. Guys, it's not <laughs> tactics. It's reporting a company because their employees are insanely unprofessional. Not only insanely unprofessional, but they are the ones wanting to corrupt what we enjoy as a hobby. They don't want you to have hobbies. They want you to have no escape from the shit that they are pushing. They want to see, but they don't offer that same ability for other people if they want to do that through a Steam page. You mm -hmm. understand how this is effectively the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like, is you're, you're allowing people to censor content. And I am a big advocate of self-censorship. I am a big advocate of it. I think that if you don't want to see something, you shouldn't have to see it. So... I think he misspoke there. Because, like, self-censorship means, like, you're censoring yourself, right? But I understand what he's trying to say. How he's just like, if you don't want to see something, just, like, block it. Don't interact with it. Then you don't have to see it. You don't have to ruin it for everyone else because you don't like thing. Just, just, just block the thing you don't like and move on. I think that it's very problematic that this person is going to put out an opinion and then protect their account whenever effectively these other people want to protect their account mm -hmm. by avoiding other opinions. Mm -hmm. They're literally doing the same thing but in a different order. I would say it's more than that as well. It's not protecting them from seeing opinions. That that's like a Twitter thing, right? These are these are people who are ruining IPs of long-standing video games and other sorts of media because they want to push an ideology. When it when it's a concerted effort to push ideology, it becomes more than simply an opinion. Asmongold doesn't like being wrong or looking idiotic. I mean, no one does. That's a human feeling, you know? Nobody nobody wants to look like an idiot, and nobody wants to be wrong. And that's why in a lot of people, ego gets in the way and they can't apologize for making a mistake. I don't see that issue with Asmongold, but maybe I just don't watch enough of his shit anymore. Third World Tech Talk, thank you for the 2390 mirror. Don't go into a boxing match where your foe can kick your nuts, but anything you do beyond pinching cheeks is a foul to hell with the moral high ground. Yeah, I, th I can't remember who I watched say it, but they were just like, a problem with people who want to take the moral high ground is the enemy you're fighting doesn't give a shit about that. They just, they just don't give a shit. And if you're going to continuously not meet them at the line that they draw, they are going to keep gaining ground. 
And for Crazy, thank you for the $10. Don't complain about not using their tactics. They set the rules of engagement, so you have to play by those rules or you lose. The only way they stop using said tactics is to suffer them in return. That's why that's why I love the people who are just like, oh, you wanna you wanna claim to be edgy? How about you say the N-word? And it's like, well, no. Because you're baiting me into doing something I think should be able to be done within context, because you know I will get punished for it under your rules. I was just like, oh why why would I do such a thing when I know what your rules of engagement are, you bad faith fucking actor? Do you not fall for the optics trolling? with a different sense of, uh, of, of goals. So that's basically what ends up happening. And so anyway, even with the discriminatory language filed off, let's see if we see any discriminatory language. I'm going to see if I can find this real quick and, uh, and go from there. Um, now, are people like this? Uh, it's very simple. Uh, people are like this because they are constantly told that they have the moral authority to act like belligerent bad people. And once you give people enough moral authority, they become tyrants. And that's just proven by all of human history. And, and he's right. He's right. But that makes it even more confusing why he said he didn't think Sweet Baby was a big deal until this kind of thing happened. Right? Like, if you understand that these people are given a moral high ground and they believe that they're doing the right thing by corrupting media, why would you not want to call it out sooner until it goes literally off the rails? I just like, I don't understand. Like, that's basically where I would start, is I would say, like, all of human history, and then specifically religion. So, yeah, yeah, that's basically it. And, uh, anyway, I'll go back and I'll see if I can find this page myself. Um, Sweet Baby Inc. Detected. And, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can look it up. Because, as I said before, guys, I do really like to They set the rules and you're only following them, so what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Me. Okay, so this is a tracker, and we've got it right here. So this is it here. I joined this group as well, but Sweet I don't know how many Baby followers they're at now. This is the Probably Steam like over 100,000 right if I had to guess. Already 21,000 followers. So there's clearly a lot of people that feel over this 50K, way. Over 50k, 60k for this morning, so Jesus. Niche. In my opinion, I think it's actually quite niche. But I think it's more representational of the fact that people are tired of... Did you say that caring about this was niche? Hold on, let me, let me rewind. In my opinion, I think it's actually quite niche. But I think it's more representative. I didn't go back far 21,000 followers. So there's clearly a lot of people that feel this way, especially for something that feels so niche. In my opinion, I think it's actually quite niche. I can understand why it would feel niche, because there's not enough people talking about Sweet Baby, just like there's not enough people talking about Bridge in general. But I don't think it's a niche issue to care about video games being corrupted. They're at 4K when you followed when this all started. Streisand effect going hard, hell yeah. But I think it's more representational of the fact that people are tired of having their narratives and stories and video games and also other types of media be um, uh, handicapped and circumcised by people who yes. um, are fucking weird, right? <laughs> I could have used another, I could have made another joke, but I'll try to be a nice guy today. Well, you don't uh, need to be a nice guy to these people. With. They don't anyway, deserve so it. we've got a few of these here. And these are the reviews. And if you look at, for example, uh, about, okay, this is about a tracker for games involved with, su with Sweet Baby Incorporated. So as we can see here, Gee, does Sally, anybody see any discriminatory, or sorry, let me make sure that I'm using the word correctly. Uh, yes, even with the discriminatory language filed off, uh, is there any discriminatory language or anything problematic here? Uh, I, I would say that there's definitely not. I think this is an extremely reasonable thing, and if people don't want to watch, like you know, for and I feel like I feel like I'm looping, but I said this about like it, it's it's basically what libs of TikTok does, right? Like they they're posting the credits of the of the game, the company credits. They're posting like the Sweet Baby Inc. website stuff. They're literally posting their own words and their own credits to show that Sweet Baby worked on these games, and then Sweet Baby employees are getting mad about it. They are posting publicly available information directly from the source, and yet somehow this is like vile harassment. Like, mm. example, like Bethesda, like all games that Bethesda made. You don't want to watch it and play any of those games. Like, you're free to make a list of that. Why do these people think that they have the unique authority to remove people from uh, from collectively deciding not to consume their content? 
Because since they're trying to push an ideology, if you are collectively deciding to not consume their content, you are rejecting their ideology. And that's not good for them. They need to force you to consume this stuff. And I got, I got a clip for that. I got a clip for that. I think, I think we can actually go over there now to get a little bit of an understanding. Is this the right clip? No, it's not. It's this one. Oh no, page refresh! Clipu! You hate Twitch so much, you can't delete or edit your typos. You know, give people stuff you know they want, so you can inject things yeah. that maybe they aren't familiar with, or maybe they don't know they want, but make them like that stuff. What happened, my nigga? Give people stuff <laughs> you know. They I love, I love Zio. He made, he made a good song during the hog leg stuff, and it, it lives rent free in my head. <laughs> but it's like. Want. So you can inject things yeah. that maybe they aren't familiar with or maybe they don't know they want. It's like they're, they're literally telling you how they are being subversive with the IPs. We're going to give you something you want, like a new Spider-Man game. But we're going to put things in there that maybe you don't want. And you'll get slowly used to them because they're going to keep happening. You agree with this guy except to make them like that stuff? You cannot make people like something they don't? These people think otherwise, and that is, again, part of the bridge initiative. With embedding DEI into company cultures and making it part of the job for everyone who works there, making it part of thinking of new products, how to sell those products, how to make those products, how to make those products available, the pricing of those products, they're also going to be trying to change consumer opinions. If consumers have no way of escaping this ideology, you must accept it. And eventually it will just become normalized and, and this is really what the problem is here is that it's it's always it's not enough for these people to have their own perspective and try to change narratives in their way but whenever you say no i don't want to hear your narrative then you're harassing them then you're attacking them then why do why do you care why do you, why do you it's changed why do you care that's, not, that's always the response. It's just like, well, you cared enough in the first place to change it. So what is this kind of rationale that you're trying to throw back at me, fucking weirdo? How you're breaking the rules. These are people who were hall monitors in fifth grade. They asked the teacher, you forgot to pick up our homework in the ninth grade. Uh, they were trying to, you know, do extra work and like, you know, senior year and making everything more fucking complicated, telling on people in 11th grade. If Twitch was ever to kick him out as a partner, that's a great way to prove Asmund right. I don't know what you mean by that, but also uh, Asmund streams on a Twitch channel that is not monetized. Every time Asmund goes live, he costs Twitch a fuck ton of money because there's no ads on his channel for like being on their phone like these are professional hall monitors that add in my opinion uh literally no value to anyone or anything and so true? and actually that's not true uh not only do they not add value but they actively take it away they it's do it's one thing to just do nothing and be useless but it's another thing to take something that's good and then ruin it which is what a lot of people are are accusing them of now, I do well, like again, if he knew this, if he knew that they are taking things that are good and that people like and they're ruining them, why not talk about it sooner? I think that it's a legitimate concern. He has two channels and his main channel is monetized, but he doesn't stream on the main channel. And he's talked about the anxiety that he has revolving around going live on his main channel, which is why he uses the Zach Roar channel instead. And it's actually true that Sweet Baby is getting kind of scapegoated in this problem. And I think that they are a symptom and not the disease. This is just- No, 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 no. They're not getting scapegoated because they're doing exactly what they say they're doing. And we are pointing this out. They're not, they're not a symptom of the disease. They are part of the Hydra. They are simply part of it. And that's why I have a million tabs on them. Simply a massive zeitgeist that's happening in media right now anyway. And because they're the ones that people have decided are the ones that are wrong, then, well, now everybody's going to be talking about them. That's it. Yeah. No, because Sweet Baby isn't made up of the true believers, quote unquote. They, these aren't people who have been propagandized and just push talking points they don't understand. These are the disingenuous liars who need to make more useful idiots to believe in their cause. Everyone working at Sweet Baby deserves no benefit of the doubt. No forgiveness. They, they, are, they are 
not worth thinking a second thought of. These these are actually the bad actors that you need to get rid of in the in the companies. Yes, they're not the only company for this, and it is definitely like kind of. He's right though. They are not the that. only company. They are just Whiny the status horrors, most main prominent yes, one right I would now. Say pretty much that. And so, anyway, kindly report the fuck out of this group and report the creator since he loves his account so much. This is also going to be important. Remember, remember that this Chris Kindred, sweet baby employee, not only wanted to brigade the group and have people report the community Steam group, but they also wanted to report the creator's account directly. These people wish to harm you, and they don't care what they have to do or lie about in order to do it. And this is going to be important as we go down the Gamergate rabbit hole <laughs> in regards to Sweet Baby. So it, it's not enough for them to remove the, uh, which, by the way, I think they have no justification for doing so. But it's not enough for them. See, it's already gone up by 100 followers, literally, in the time that I watched it. Uh, it's not enough for them to remove what they think is breaking the terms of service. And this is the problem with these people, is that they are vindictive and vengeful. Yes. They wield power not as a shield for, uh, you know, the downtrodden, but as a as a sword to hurt and attack the people who they think have wronged them. This is not about... Not even to hurt and attack the people they think have wronged them, just people who disagree with them in general. Protecting people, it's about attacking people and protecting them at any means necessary and going even above and beyond by trying to have their account banned. There's no risk of anyone's account being banned if we join in there? No, I don't think so. I don't know. I mean, I've, I have no clue. Literal censorship, yeah. You yeah. brave for speaking out about these people, dude? We need more people like you? I'm not brave at all. This is just a tweet. Who cares? <laughs> what do you think? This is some kind of like fucking bravery thing? Bravery is, is, is being a fireman, okay? Well, while I agree that obviously there are people who are doing braver things, you take a risk by talking out against these people. And I, I think, again, Kiwi Farms is a good example of this. When they host information about people like Liz Fong Jones and they get relentlessly attacked and harassed for it, have face like threats of lawsuit, they face crazy amounts of just like bullshit from these people. Uh, it's like you, you are putting somewhat of a target on your back when you shine a light on these people. They, they will try to strike back against you. It might not be immediate, but they'll try to find a fucking way. Criticizing Fong Jones got the farm's black hold from the entire public internet. Yeah, it's a dangerous name. Like, th this isn't brave. I, I, and also, like, I'm, I'm preaching to the fucking choir here, okay? Everybody agrees with what I'm saying. It's, it, like, it, like, everybody is gonna, everybody's truing this. Everybody thinks that I'm right about this. Like, the only people that don't are people like this. Uh, like, and it's unfortunate that the people like this, quote unquote, are the people who unfortunately wield power in the industry. That sounds fun. Which hornet's nest is the biggest? That's a good question. These are people who do not care if they shoot the messenger, you put a target on your back if you talk about them. Yeah. Yeah, Kiwi Farms is back up. I mean, they have been for a while. Uh, uh, Jersh made a uh, fundraiser for legal fun shit. Old Liz consent accident. Was it me that posted that the other employee that also got into this was in cohort with Zoe Quinn for doxing of an event that was about helping female developers? Um, I I haven't posted about this because I've been saving it for stream. But yes, that is that really, is true. That, that's that's what it is. Yeah, this is a basic fucking take that I think that ninety percent of people agree with. Yeah, I mean, has he has he not stopped to think that if this is a basic take that ninety percent of people agree with, why is it still happening? Why are these people still wielding so much influence over games and the game industry in general? Like, has... Has that... You could... Hmm. You know, the, the brave takes are the ones that everybody fucking hates before, right? That's the difference. Of course, the censorship taint group wants to prevent people from finding out where they're involved. Which is kind of ironic because only one or two years ago, companies were proudly announcing that they were working with these companies. In they were proudly announcing because they got them good boy points. Can we out from Minnesota and bring in Jersh from Serbia to fight the good fight that needs to happen? <gasps> yeah, Jim, Jim was instrumental in noticing stuff in, in Gamergate. Same with, same with Sargon. I don't... 
I don't think I would be able to talk to any of those people, but hopefully, hopefully, uh, some of them will bring up these, uh, noticing things as well. In order to, uh, get special bonus good boy points. And now Not so much Jim, because he's dealing with cancer aids, but the other again, ones. <laughs> people are assuming anyone at Sweet Baby actually believes what they're saying. They don't. This is a scam. Company being full of XGG figures is smoking gun proof. It's about the finish to Neil video. Get hyped. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they push this stuff because it's an end to a meme. Or a means to an end. I can't English. I'm like Asmin. He just like me, for real, for real. It's just like... They, they don't necessarily believe in what they're pushing. It's just the easiest way for them to subvert the landscape and bring more people into the Marxist ideology that they're trying to push. Shame that a lot of the Gamergate people turned out to be grifters. I mean, I, don't, I barely remember the names of anyone that I watched during that era except for Sargon and Jim. Now, uh, they want to hide it and actively uh, censor people who were talking about it in the first place. And I think that uh, I, I think groups like this are great. And I think that whenever these people want to engage in culture war, I think that they should be uh, absolutely expecting for other people on the opposite side to take up arms as well. Uh they should, but it's unfortunately considered harassment every time it happens. You bet V would help with the networking with me with Sargon. Sargon is adamant about never talking to VTubers or having VTubers on his show. That is... You, you will never see a VTuber on, on Lotus Eaters. V, v has tried. V, v has very much tried. Chris Raygun, Mundane Matter, if you... Oh, yeah, I forgot about Chris Raygun. I forgot about that, dude. You miss legally obtaining my VHS animus way back when. And then, uh... I have a couple of videos of Kim Belair. And I have a couple of other things that mention Kim Belair. But here is a video from... 2022, her talking about story, narrative, and design, and Kim Belair is a co-founder and CEO of Sweet Baby. And here's a person talking with her, is a founder and creative director of Heart Machine. Heart Machine, I guess, is this game that they are playing. ...created because of those five years at Ubisoft and then those, those, those other things, and the idea was truly like, I'm going to get... I have to keep working because I love to work. I need to, to write, I need to tell stories, I need to, to do whatever I can to, to stay in my role as a narrative professional because it's what I love the most and I love games and I love all this, these elements of it. But those six years, ultimately, of, of, of negative experiences, like back to back, created a space where I didn't feel like I was safe to do that in the way that I had been doing it. Hmm. And another thing that kind of happened at the same time was at the end of that, I realized that I wanted to work on lots of different things and that wasn't something that was available to me. So initially it was just, it was the intention was to, to exist as some contractors who were gonna work together because we can make a safe and happy and, and, and collaborative room. And if we're working together, there's nothing that I can, I can be told by a client that's gonna destroy me mm. or there's not a toxic situation that I can enter because I'm gonna have accountability, safety and support and security. That's a little weird to say. She's not she's not going to have a client that can get mad at her for changing things. She's going to have a, a group of accountability, safety, and support to support her against the client. That's, that seems a little weird. Pretty around us. And so early on, we got called in um, to, a, to a job, and it was, it was actually just me at the time. And it was an Afrofuturist project. Mm. And I said, like, oh, hey. What is an Afrofuturist project? What does that mean? Um, where are your black writers? And they said, we do not have any. Um, we have these three white guys who are, who are writing this Afrofuturist story. And this was like not long after Black Panther. This was 2019. Okay. And I was like, well, why? What, ha what happened? <laughs> because I feel like this is a necessary step. Right. And their thing was like, well, we tried. We, we tried to, to, to get a bunch of black writers, but... None of them had the games experience. They were talented, but they didn't have the, the, the years of, hmm. of uh, or the credits to get there, and we don't have time to train them. And my response, be, you know, because at the time, it, the, my response could not just be like, sounds like BS to me. It was, it was that I can help with that. And mm -hmm. I can say, well, I know how to write a game. I have a lot of years of experience behind me. So anybody theoretically who was working under or with me would have to 
acquire those things or would be taught them by virtue of working with me. Hmm. So she's claiming in this clip, apparently, but it seems to me that she's claiming nepotism hiring because she wants people who worked under her to get jobs that they weren't qualified for. And also that it's a good thing to give them jobs that they're not qualified for. And that the company, if they claim that someone's not qualified, is just lying. They're just, they're just, that's just BS. By virtue of working with our team. And so the offer then becomes, we'll, we'll take that on ourselves. Because I think fundamentally, I, I do not believe in the credit system at all. I don't believe in, in you know, the years of experience because mm. even, and, and I can say this with the utmost certainty right now as someone who is working on different things and who, who has in the past worked on a ton of different things, no one is writing games the same way. No one has the same pipeline. No one's doing the same thing. So there's no reason that, that somebody who worked for X years at like this company has necessarily that much more functional knowledge of how to do it from anybody else who's doing it for the first time. That is a crazy, you've been doing this for 10 years? You know, someone who hasn't done this at all has the same exact amount of experience as you. <laughs> doesn't believe in years of experience. Yeah, meritocracy doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Black Panther with Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Isn't some of what she's saying borderline admission of illegal hiring discrimination? Yeah, but they can get away with it. Nobody cares. <laughs> McCock, thank you for the twenty dollars. Glad to see me on side scrollers. You've been telling them to get me on for a while. Hopefully, I come on Cobra Cast next. You and a lot of other people from the one ninety nine want to see me talk more about politics over there. I have no idea what Cobra Cast is. I'm sorry, my dude. Come on. Atlas is owned by Sega. Yeah. Why would they need protection against their client? Because once the client realizes they're missing money, they will ask them what happened, and they consider that harassment. That's true. That's true. This woman is as smart as a goldfish. That's also true. And so that was kind of the gambit that I that I chose to believe was true, and 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 it's since paid off. Because what that opened my eyes to was, well, why don't we just do that a lot? Why don't we bring people in who are talented, who want to who want to work, and who want to do this? And if they can't get She's in, if there's a wall for them. I need to go for today. I'm going to go act like a vampire in front of a bunch of strangers. I'll catch the rest of the VOD later. Good good luck, question mark? Thank you for the $10. To be fair, Pal World came out and dev group stated that they have too little game dev experience. An exception does not make the rule, right? Just because some dev teams can make it with very, very little experience doesn't mean that hiring people with no experience is going to be good for you over hiring people with experience. Vampire LARP, have fun. Master Gala, they give it the $2. How do you know someone is talented if they have no experience? If they have like a very fleshed out portfolio, it would make sense to be like, oh, I can see the talent in this person and I want to give them a chance, right? But it's like, if, I, I can understand the perspective of, like, giving someone a chance if they show that they have talent and also wanting to hire on, like, this person has years of experience, so they probably know what they're doing. Talent is just another word for skin color to them. Yeah. And it's like, when it, when it comes from these, like, sweet baby DEI people, there is no benefit of the doubt that they're talking about equal hiring practices, trying to get talented people to break out into an industry, that's not what they're talking about at all. They're talking about hiring based on skin color, based on gender, based on sexuality. They don't care about the meritocracy or what you can actually do or provide. And there's a door for me, then I can step inside and I can just bring in whoever I, I want. It's, and that's gonna, that's the accountability that rests with me to make sure that that product that we're gonna produce is gonna meet the client's expectations. Sure. But that for me can be done as long as, you know, we keep a good head on our shoulders. And so with that in mind, we, we started growing the company and in, in, tw in summer of 2020... What an odd thing to say. Yeah. What an odd thing to say about the client. What a crock of shit. Isn't she admitting to Trojan horsing here? Yes. And that, again, we're going to loop back to what oh, Polt fan said. A lot of these Japanese companies don't realize what the translators and localizers are doing I might have to their work. In the thank yous, but I want to thank you for being the push to make me give up alcohol. I've been a little over a year sober now. Oh, liquor, licorice, thank you! I'm glad you were able to get sober. Good fucking job, my guy. 
I hope you're continuing to improve your life on that track. Thank you. People with 25 years of experience can be fucking stupid. Another problem with the software industry? Yeah. There, there are people with, like, a gajillion years of experience who can get, like, egotistical and lazy and try to fall back on their knowledge instead of being able to adapt to new situations. Like, just having years of experience isn't an end-all, be-all. But again, these people are insidious and should not be given any sort of benefit of the doubt that they're talking about something that we think should be applied equally. Japanese people need to take their English classes more seriously. There's, there's an expectation in Japanese culture when you're working in a professional setting to expect professionality from the people you work with. And unfortunately for them, localizers do not have that. I operate on meritocracy in a field that has been corrupted and ruined for 10 years by these people. There's no merit anymore. AAA games are Nepo Baby Central. It's made not by people who have passion, but by people who just want to make it about themselves. That's why Pal World, Helldivers, Deep Rock, etc. do well. They're made by people who are doing it for the sake of games. You are you are repeating my take back at me. <laughs> like, this is this is what I've said every time we loop on game development. Like, the people who are passionate about games, even with little experience, are going to do their best to try and deliver a good experience to people. I, like, of course the AAA industry is all Nepo Baby Central. Of course it's all people who are insidious with their ideology and trying to put dumb shit in it. Uh, I was like, uh, you, you literally repeated almost verbatim what I have said on this before. Now, if only Helldivers would remove the Korean MMO rootkit. There was a confluence of, like, everything that all the me too stuff that was going through the industry there was um the global pandemic that is that imagine is believing still in me ongoing. too and there was um there was the black lives matter protests that were becoming like really really loud and as a result there was this like uh this outpouring i think of of, of nominal or at least like performance sometimes performative support from a lot of games um game developers and companies basically saying hey let us mentor you. We, if you show us your portfolio, and that's cool for me. I, I'm like, I was happy to see at least people acknowledging it. Sure. But the thing that it's I that's a very weird thing to say. Well, like, oh, after after the Me Too movement and the Black Lives Matter riots, games companies uh, paid more attention to wanting to look at my portfolio. That's that's a little weird. <laughs> I think with these mentorship deals is like. One, do you have the time to actually invest? Because chances are you don't. And the mentorship for me is very vague. It's very, it's very just like, I'll try to talk to you. But then there's the other thing for me that I think a lot of people but don't time? answer, which is, well, what happens when you offer a portfolio review and your marginalized like writer comes to you, hands you a portfolio, and the portfolio is really, really fantastic? Hmm. At that point, what do you do? Because you have to realize that, like, hey, this isn't a, it, it isn't a meritocracy. So portfolio reviews from here are super helpful for young folks, but they they also presuppose that the problem is your portfolio and not mm -hmm. like the immense walls that that go up anytime a yeah. person who is marginalized comes into one of these situations. What? So, what I did at that time was um, I started. I didn't know what else to do. I started an, an email address called talk at sweetbabyinc.com. I have literally no idea what she was saying. She's like, what do you do when they have a good portfolio, but then, like, the walls get thrown up? Like, what do you... What do you... Like, if they have a good portfolio, if they're capable of doing the job, unless you are literally only Nepo hiring, what does she mean? I don't know. What? I'm lost, dude. It was just like, you want, you want to talk about something? Like... I don't have any answers for you, but what I can do is provide like 30 minutes of conversation. And that, that sure, that might look like a portfolio review if that's what you need, but I want to make it more practical. You should take your meds. And so meds, hey! from that you point, we started, me! I think, really focusing on. Is she actually complaining about meritocracy while wanting consideration for marginalization? Word yes. salad bullshit. Yes, Sorry it, is, it is an absolute word salad. And okay. How do we do this? How do we bring more folks in? And, and part of that was just growing it, growing the company from the inside as, as well with people who are in our community, people we really want to work with, um, people even who are already in our lives who are interested in that. And we started with, with, with them going, okay. So Nepo hiring, grow, grow the industry from within. Yeah, okay. Doesn't matter if you've never written a video game before. You're talented, you're really good. We're, we can teach you the, the ropes. It's a skill and, and you can bring the talent and meet that. And then as we, we started rolling with the talking mills, we met a ton of different people and started just realizing that the problem is access. The problem, I mean, we knew, but the problem is what? officially access. It's, it's that the first person who wrote to us said that 
No matter what, he had never gotten a response from a game dev. He had never gotten anybody to talk to him for even 20 minutes just to tell him how to approach these things. Mm. So from that point, we just said, okay, let's what What entitles you to have other people's time to tell you how to approach them? Like, I was just like, all of, all of us have to kind of fucking deal with this how do I do it kind of thing. And nobody... Nobody is going to explain it to you. You just gotta kind of fucking flounder around for yourself. If you get a response, great, wonderful. That person didn't have to do that. She lives in a video game. Let's make that what we do. And so we have kind of a combination right now of we have 13 in-house folks, right? Who are, who are there all around. It's, it's folks who we just saw. And then we also have like a roster of, of different collaborators who are from a number of different walks of life, different like varieties of experience. Oh. And our aim is to, if we have a project that we think can help somebody who's young, who's, who's, who's really talented, who really wants to do this, Wait. we'll bring them in. It's buzzword Caesar salad that ends up stabbing the company in the back for every eating on the salad. For that, and the way that we approach it is going, we have this much work to do on a given project. I always use the $10,000 figure because I'm not good at math. So if we have ten thousand dollars of a of a of a project, and internally we can handle seven thousand dollars of that project, then that for me is three thousand dollars that can go to somebody who embeds with our team, make sure that they only do whatever work they 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 need to do to be fairly compensated, right? What? And then at the time, at the same time, they're learning, they're getting to see from the inside. So so if you have ten thousand dollars on a project, and the project only eventually costs or only will cost seven thousand. You want to allocate the rest of that 3000 to bringing someone onto the team who functionally can't do anything, but will be there to learn. I don't... I don't understand. It's just normal! All these different games, all these different projects, and how they come together, how they're formed, and that for me... I literally hire my friends and give them a bunch of money. Is either, you know, there's going to be three outcomes of that. One, we've, we've hired some folks that way, like um, a couple of the people we work with now are people who we work with on individual projects who were like, this has been wonderful, let's, 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 let's sail together. <laughs> and then we also have like folks who ha we have just helped to get credits m multiple times who want to stay contract and just kind of collaborate with us on the regular. And we also have people who, this is my favorite one, is they'll come in, they'll work on a project or, or many with us, and then we have gotten them cash credit and and everything else that they can use to go somewhere else and all of a sudden that person who you said no you're not going to come in because you don't have enough credits has more credits than the other person that you so so you're inflating someone's experience by not really having them do much of anything and making them look better than other applicants who might have actually had the applied experience but just less time i was like what the fuck how about write a good story? Yeah. We've infected them and now they can slip into other companies? Yeah, pretty much. They're cooking the books in a way. Yeah. That's fucking experience boosting in real life. <laughs> Thought you were going to hire. That's great. I mean, that's a bit of like the revolving door model that um, some places have like SNL, for example, where it's like there's a lot of these YouTube houses or whatever else for like becoming a celebrity and all that and like there have been some pretty terrible deals uh, where people like end up taking a stake in them for offering this fame but like that revolving door model the one that you're talking about that SNL does is like you don't get anything except like sure you get paid and the whole thing is you get experience you get exposure you get all these different elements and, and like hooks into the industry and access to things that you wouldn't otherwise have on that end and so it's really interesting to have a model somewhat like that uh, for marginalized people and voices in this industry in particular, because that's not something that's done very often or, or at all, besides you all. What? <laughs> As a... I guess that's why Indy is kicking AAA's ass. Why would you want a revolving door model? And why would you use, like, Hollywood and YouTuber companies churning out people who get popular and then you look at them and you're like, why the fuck are you popular? I don't understand this. Like, you don't make- you don't make anything interesting. You aren't an interesting person. How- how are you this popular? I was like, I don't- I don't know if that's the argument you really want to be making. <laughs> Churn more Nepo Marxist into the system. Holy shit.
it is it is wild how little, how little it's done and also how easy it is and that's what i think like you know you and i've talked about this already in 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 life is just like it's not that hard to take that that risk on of you know that risk of 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 a new person because right that time is is not wasted and and truly like yeah i th i think this the standardization of this idea of like well you need x amount of training you need x amount of this as long as you on your side can take a little bit extra on to provide that, I think that the first and foremost, the most important thing to me at any time as a result of all my experiences is just, do I like working with this team? Is this collaboration? I think the craziest thing to me is just like, she's talking about these people getting experience, but like what, what entitles them to be working on like AAA titles? I, like, I just, I don't get that. Actually. Now that I think about it, this is worse than just nepotism. It's literally saying dedicate an entire chunk of your budget to hiring someone I vouch for because eventually they'll be someone talented. It's yeah. budget siphoning. Yeah, it's it's budge I agree with you. Budget siphoning, dude. Almighty Lolly, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Do I like working with this team CEO? That's just it's really weird to hear this laid out and spoken about like this, because it's I was kind of gross. I mean, it's kind of like how I know the the voice acting industry works, right? Like you're not you're not going to get hired unless you know people. And so it to an extent, like I understand this like poisoned mindset, but it's also like that's not how you're going to get good products. And that's again why things like Pal World with devs who don't have a lot of experience are taking off because they're people who genuinely want to work on video games. Not people who are trying to push ideology or just trying to get a paycheck because they know someone. Gotta understand, they're socialists. They think people are interchangeable. Jesus. ...healthy and fun, and are we, in, are, are we happy together, and are we enjoying it? Yeah. Everything else can come secondary because we have to, we're going to figure it out. Like, I feel sometimes that it doesn't matter how much experience I have, I can look at 50 different games, and then one will show up, and I'm like, I cannot write this paragraph. Hmm. And so that if that can happen to me, I'm, I'm well aware of how much it ha can happen to other people. And I just want to always be, be cognizant of that and be a helping hand. That makes sense. Um, <laughs> well, do you mind if... Yeah, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut her off. I'm going to cut her off here. I'm going to cut this lady off here. Hero, thank you for the $20. All the stuff needs control to function, a power that they might lose really soon. With all this BS happening, you'd like to give a white pill. Look up Moody versus Net Choice and Net Choice versus Paxton. Something's coming in June. I'll have to I'll have to look that up after because I don't know I don't know what those are. I don't know what those are. And so I'm bringing up I'm bringing up the the Chris Kindred thread. He obviously deleted this because of course he did. And then, uh, those who tried to corrupt our beloved hobby, somebody making fun of the group existing, and he's just like, like, you don't have anything else to be doing with your time. Just, just let us take over your hobbies so you have nothing to enjoy. Just deep throat our cock and don't complain. Gatekeep harder. Gatekeep harder. Okay, so devil's advocate? No, don't fucking devil's advocate these people. Don't, don't, don't try to give them an inch because they will hang you with it. What kind of bottom of the barrel response is that? Is there such a thing as the invisible pill? No. No, dude. Targeted harassment towards those alerting unsuspecting customers to your nefarious ESG consultancy and the developers who associate with your terrible company. You've done too much sensitivity reading, going mask off over a little bit of criticism and consumer advice. Spineless prick. Now yeah, they got the mark of the fucking sweet baby beast, dude. <laughs> Isn't it past protein time? I skipped protein today. Moving, uh, moving right along. Chris Kindred, continuing to make horrid tweets. <gasps> he deleted this tweet as well. Nope, oh, time to go to archive. This wasn't deleted before. Give me a second. T it's time to go to the archive. Archive. But your bones. No devil's advocacy. Only helicopter rides. So he said this. We can't see the replies because archive doesn't work as well as it used to. I don't care about somebody disagreeing with the company. I care that this is the extension of a targeted harassment campaign against me and my peers. 
you have not been harassed yet, and I would not advise people to harass you, but if it happened, I wouldn't say you don't deserve it. Your favorite part of current timeline is the method of attack hasn't changed aside from some small name changes. He thought we wouldn't notice, but we did. Targeted harassment and inventory of their work from their own mouths. And interestingly enough, when you look up Chris Kindred, again, as the guy who works for Sweet Baby, he is an employee of the company. Uh, he had a blog. He had a blog here, and you see uh, Washington Post, other mixed race in America, is, uh, for the Washington Post that he wrote. Uh, here's a, a brief history of driving while black, a series for BuzzFeed Reader. Uh, click here to support. Uh, send Chris to Game Developers Conference. I find it interesting. I see this often. And this is an old one. I'm pretty sure this is, yeah, seven years ago. This is an old blog. I find it interesting that I see a lot of these game developers who set up GoFundMes to send them to Game Developers Conference. And it's like, I don't know, that's kind of weird. That's kind of weird. Literal who from Sweet Baby sticks his head up and draws fire from his opponents. Why are they targeting me specifically, right? Hey y'all, I'm Chris Kindred, an illustrator and as of recently, a journalist. Since interning at NPR last year, I've taken a huge interest in reporting, especially after finding my beat in games writing. GDC, or the Games Developers Conference, recently gave me a low-income expo pass to attend the show completely free. This is a huge deal to me to attend the largest games industry event. There I can learn how to develop stories from experienced journalists, talk to game developers, and show my portfolio to recruiters. The catch is finding out how to get to and stay in San Francisco. I freelance from home in Virginia and quite frankly don't make enough money to travel across the country. Your donation will be used primarily to cover the round trip airfare and lodging while there, whether it's an Airbnb, hotel, or hostel from February 28th to March 4th. Any amount over the goal will be used for food and transportation. With just over a month until the conference, getting funding within the next 10 days is ideal. I can't stress enough how much this support means, especially in this stage of my career, where finding access to educational <laughs> and experiential resources are critical. The work that I'll be able to make from this trip will set the foundation for a strong body of art, criticism, and reporting. The leftist cries in pain as they strike you. Yep, yeah, pretty much. Thank you for the two dollars. Driving while Asian might be a better read. <laughs> All, all need to stay in San Fran is just be homeless. Oh my god. Used for food and transportation, but there's no expiration date on when they can use the money for that. I was just like, it's it's interesting that he got a free pass to go to the GDC. I'm, wonder, I'm wondering how that happened. And like he said, uh, he wrote for NPR. And he's got, he's got the NPR stuff down here. Uh, yet again, it's Society of Illustrators New Visions podcast time. We're recording episode two live from the Society of Illustrators tonight at 7.30. Can't catch it. Wrote a post on NPR's training blog about how to hire an illustrator when you don't know where to start. Exit through the NPR gift shop. So he's got, he's got, he's got some uh, insider credentials already from being a journalist to a... Uh, Somehow being a games writer and now working for Sweet Baby. Once again, journalists proving that they are scum of the earth. We move, we move on a little further here. We move on a little further here. Please don't be deleted, man. <laughs> Thank God. Sweet Baby Inc. is sending goons to attack a pro-consumer community. And so you can see, I'm sure it's blown up a bit more now. This is the Sweet Baby Inc. detected back when they had only 10,000 members. If you're against Sweet Baby Inc., you are racist. Video games are not for right-wingers. Let's defuse the situation. Interesting. Interesting here. I know this group claims it isn't trying to kill Sweet Baby Inc., but this is exactly what will happen if you don't stop now. Where's the incentive to stop? I want Sweet Baby Inc. to die. I want everyone who works for Sweet Baby Inc. to no longer have a job. This is my outward desire. Do not hire these people in the games industry. Not all SBI employees are as unreasonable as that one random person on Twitter. They have actual jobs and families to support. It's not like they're hurting anybody. 
Please consider closing this group. No. Fuck you. You made this bed, now lie in it. If you're against SBI, you're racist! Sweet Baby Inc. is a narrative development and consultation studio based in Montreal and working around the globe. Our mission is to tell better, more empathetic stories while diversifying and enriching the video games industry. SBI is only dedicated in the story part of a game. They don't work on the gameplay. So my question for all the anti-SBI people is why do you think Sweet Baby ruins games? Isn't gameplay the important part of a game after all? The truth is, you hate Sweet Baby only because they add diverse characters. People of color, non-binary, etc. Anything else is just a cheap excuse. Your curator list is as racist as if you made a list of games with black people in it. This group is against Steam rules and you should be taken down. Hopefully the moderation acts quickly. I'm gonna go back to when we were watching uh, the Game Awards together. I was freaking out during the Alan Wake portions, because Alan Wake is a game with Sweet Baby credits that has been diversified and equityified into a way that affects the story and makes it bad. There were people who didn't understand that and tried taking me out of context. And there were also people who just saw, like, a different game. I can't remember what it was. They saw a different game that was being highlighted, and it had, like, a, 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 a black... I can't remember if it was a black woman or a black man, but it had a black main character... And they were just like, oh my god, ESG. And I was like, you guys, you, got, you guys, black protagonist does not mean the game is an infected ideological, like, slop. If they're making a game around a good character, that's a good thing. And this isn't a AAA game, this is an indie game. And it looks like it has a reason to be the way that it is. It looks like an actual fun game. It's not changing the story, it's not being subversive. Is the game literally credited Sweet Baby? Alan Wake? Yes. Alan Wake is a Sweet Baby project. It's not allowed to hate shitty games, apparently. Apparently. Everyone loved Half-Life. <laughs> Alan, Alan Wake 2, yes. I'm just gonna keep calling it Alan Woke, dude. <laughs> you meant the other game? No, the other game in the VGA that had the, the, the like, person of color protagonist. Again, I can't remember the name of the game or I'd use the name of the game. It, it wasn't a Sweet Baby game. It wasn't a sweet baby game. It was just like some indie title that they were showing off and it looked like a decently cool game. Uh, so it's like, there are some people who will just call anything uh, like fucking sweet baby ESG and that's just not the case, right? Uh, you know, you thought I was gonna finish the story and then it turned out that the game was reeing about a sweet baby game. No, <laughs> if the black character isn't a race swap and actually written well, then that's good. Yeah, yeah, I don't give a shit what a character is as long as they are well written. And typically in AAA slop, it is not. The other game was a Sweet Baby game? Was there one that was a Sweet Baby game? I know that there was another one that was a Sweet Baby game, and I was We're like, sure I, oh, I'm wrong about this one. The DEI we add to video games. What's that? A list of games we worked on. Shut it down. This there was is one that racist, did have a Sweet Baby sexist, logo on it, and there was also the African mythology bigotry. platformer. Yeah! You guys have bad memory, be better memories than me. That wasn't a joke. It was a Sweet Baby game. I was reading chat when the Sweet Baby logo came up. Mm. I think I'm wrong about that one then. <laughs> if it's a sweet baby game, it's definitely paused, but it's just like, just because there is a person of color as a main character. I yelled at us and then the sweet baby emblem popped up. Sometimes chat's right and sometimes I'm wrong. But I think the point still stands that like having a diverse character doesn't necessarily make it slop. Was the game Sable? I don't remember. Apparently I can't even remember the whole situation. My brain is soup, dude. If there's a curator pointing out right-wing devs in a negative light you'd follow to buy those games? Only the wicked fear of being exposed. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The African mythology game has you interested. Their mythology is interesting. I agree. I would like I would like to see more mythology games from other cultures as well. I like I like playing some of the Japanese and Korean and Indonesian horror stuff for that reason. Diverse character. What did you mean by that? It's like I don't know how to explain these things. Having a black protagonist doesn't make the game ESG slop. Having a poorly written race swap or something shoehorned in that's poorly written does make it ESG slop. Old Bungie used to love Africa. Tales of Kinzara was presented as a labor of love from Ab Abu Bakar Salim. I vaguely... That's the guy that had like the cool fucking carpet thing on him, right? The name of the African game is Tales of Kinzara Zao. Fate made you interested in Indian mythology, especially Indian religion, as essentially TBZ, what? San Andreas is still a big favorite of yours. 
African mythology game better have Yakub? I don't think it would, you silly. They, that may have been the Blade dev? It might have been. I'm like, I'm trying to recall the game's trailer during the- I'm gonna open this. I'm gonna- Ah, oh, fuck. Oh, I don't know why my browser just doesn't fucking work. Thank you, Ziz. Thank you, Ziz. You have to be my memory for me since I can't remember shit, chat. That's why it took me ages to do all of this tab opening for Sweet Baby. The what did you miss? Nothing. They're just the doing the pre-show right now. Everyone bitches about being DMCA'd every year. Oh, okay. Alright. I hear a cat touching things. Imagine I cat. Want the One World Government, the CCP, and who? I have so many vaccines, I can't even walk anymore. <laughs> this game is awesome. Why is the spooky ghost thing being nice? Yeah, I just- I didn't even fucking notice the Sweet Baby logo. I was zoned the fuck out. Not the Luigi Mansion ripoff. Oh, it's the same idol thing. I genuinely could not tell. Not on screen. Oh my I'm god. Streaming today, the day of your day. Why do streamers never look at chat? I don't want to mod it yet. Sponsored. I have been paid. <laughs> Is this, is this okay? Is this not like too crazy? I'm just gonna refresh the page so I don't have to find the timestamp again. She hates reading! They're just doing the pre-show right now. Everyone bitches about being DMCA'd every year. Oh, okay. Alright. If you buy if they a look fox, at chat, they'll miss the SBI the logo. That's what house. happened this time! It's gonna I do love fox the One things. World Government, the CCP, I and who... In summer 2020, I watched many of my co-workers drink deep from the Kool-Aid. Much respect lost. We haven't hired any new engineers since because they can't find the right ones. I might the caution. Do- do not! I have so many vaccines, I can't even walk anymore. <laughs> what is this frame rate? I was like, I just awesome. Yeah, I was reading. I was reading someone saying the game is awesome in chat, and I completely missed the fucking nice. sweet baby logo. I completely fucking missed it. Just like a June bug. Hello, June. Is this an ESG game? Chat. Just because a game has a black woman doesn't mean it's ESG. Which is true, but unfortunately for me, I was wrong in this case! I was wrong because it's a sweet baby fucking game! It is indeed an ESG game. It is indeed both- both. I was wrong and I forgot that I was wrong! I was tricked into saying it in front of the logo! Look up the socials of the guy who was calling for the Steam Curator to be banned. He's an artist writer who could be perfectly replicated by a free AI tool. The paragraph in his bio credits him as a writer has two grammatical errors. They aren't sending their best. I'm just gonna have to believe you. I'm just gonna have to believe you. And I just like, I, re I remember, I remember people getting a bit like weird at my chat for like calling out the ESG stuff, but like unironically chat was correct in this case. I was wrong, right? Like I was wrong in this case because it's an ESG baby game. <laughs> they felt like they don't have to send their best. I mean, they don't. Are they don't like who's calling them out right now? A, a fucking dementia-ridden, brain-damaged fox. Let's be real. <laughs> back to back to the Steam group. Video games are not for right wingers. Sorry, guys, you're not the audience companies care about, nor the side that creates video games. Otherwise, you would not need to create groups like this. Well, I mean. They're not wrong. The right has a problem with creating things for some reason, because to people on the right, it seems like anything that invokes any kind of culture is cringe. Kirsha was wrong and chat was right. Actually, not many such cases, but it happens sometimes. So why you guys need to be my memory, and why you shouldn't gaslight. Why did you create Sweet Baby? Moya, moya. Move.
moving, moving along from the, the sweet baby. The last one directly praises the trans school shooter. This is the kind of comments that make me praise Audrey Hale and his shooting of that Republican school last year. Oh, uh, you can say all the weird shit you want, it still won't make you a real person if you're a communist. You feel it? The games these people make aren't for right-wingers like me. True and real. <laughs> we have Felix at home! Felix at home, thank you, Cerberus, for tagging me in this as well. I get to see a lot of tweets somehow blaming diversity as the reason for layoffs. Genuinely, as if the economy was doing really great and capitalism simply worked before Miles Morales was Spider-Man. They also don't recognize Miles as Spider-Man. The weirdest part is when I see these takes from developers, or people who have dev bios. At least I don't know, it seems wild that a dev would see thousands of layoffs and blame not the game industry giants, but a 15-person narrative company founded by a black woman. This Felix at home, Lego Butts, is one of the OG Gamergate people. Uh, they hung around with Anita Sarkeesian and Zoe Quinn, and were also involved in bullying a developer to suicide. So it doesn't surprise me that this is the take that they're having. These people think a company of narrative designers that freelance on projects have somehow single-handedly caused the employment collapse in games instead of, you know, the insane notion of infinite growth or capitalist greed. It's easier to blame diversity than that somehow I still think it's way more likely that they know that's not the case and are just fine with looking stupid so long as it justifies them being loudly anti-woke. Whatever that means. We all know what it means. Are you trying, are you trying to imply that this is a dog whistle? That being anti-woke is a, is, a, is a strange dog whistle here? What do, you, what do you mean by we all know what it means? What did you mean by this? Why is it in brackets? Hmm. The other part of this, and it doesn't matter if you tell them the truth, they think DEI just steps in and changes whole games. That creators are forced by some unseen hand. The government? BlackRock, I guess? As well as just POC in general. To make games more inclusive. How dumb do you think we are? Like, yes, there are companies that are getting BlackRock investment to do this. There are people, like you, dear Felix, who have spent the last decade plus trying to push your ideology in these sectors. It didn't just suddenly appear out of nowhere. Uh, DEI didn't just step in and change entire games. You and your ilk have infiltrated an industry to push you your ideology. Your meds. meds, hey! You can't make me! The trend shows they 100% know they at least caused part of the situation with the layoffs and are panicking. Mm -hmm. Whenever they rant, what they're angry about is usually true. Fighting misinformation would be great, but social media on YouTube is not equipped to hold people accountable to doing real research in good faith. Wow, have I got some tabs for you! <laughs> Just getting hits and proving their point in the absence of confirmation. It's wild out there. Nothing has changed. Nothing. Sorry, no one. Sorry, no. You forgot a comma, dear writer. One thing has changed. The number of people who understand that spreading misinformation just lets them be racist in public with no consequence, like Uki Violetta. It has increased dramatically, and that has changed probably requires some fighting from those with authority. Probably. Sad face. For example, Steam doesn't have guidelines for curators, as far as I can tell, that would prevent someone from starting a curation group that focuses on, say, Sweet Baby Inc., and warns people to not buy games they're associated with, which could just list any game at all! Except he posts literally the credits that show that Sweet Baby works on them. If the game doesn't have a credit attached to it, he would be held accountable by the people in the group asking him, en masse, why is this here when Sweet Baby didn't work on it? It is community policing at its finest, and... Ooh, the cherry on top, this dumb bitch got community noted. The curator uses Sweet Baby Inc.'s website for their source. Also, it should be noted that at Lego Butts works for Sweet Baby Inc. Get fucking noted, idiot. 
Which, listen, I'm not sure who uses curator lists, but my guess is it's people who would never, ever buy the games any of us work on. Well, you're right. I don't want to buy the games that Sweet Baby works on because you fucking ruin them. You add nothing and you remove soul. Except they do and don't list those particular games here. The guy outwardly stated that he's not listing games like Alan Wake because they're not available on Steam yet. There's just nothing preventing this, even though it's clearly not what curators are for. This is a curation list that is able to help us curate games out of our buying spectrum. So it is helping us curate. It is doing exactly what it is proposed to do. You had high hopes for Starfield. Lesson learned. It's doubled in followers overnight, and we get to see exactly what people are describing it as. A way to avoid inclusivity. We want well-written characters and well-made games, not your slop served up on a platter for the sake of it existing. They're just saying it, and there's no one challenging them. That isn't a complaint, it's just a fact. And I can't stay quiet about it, nor should I have to. Really gotta charge my phone. Anyway, remember that these people do exist. And while ignoring it goes a very long way, boosting those you know are affected and targeted is the other side of it that needs to also happen. Not even Sweet Baby, just everyone existing that they're angry at for existing. If you know, you know. These people are angry about their games being fucked up by companies like Sweet Baby, and they're like, please boost everyone that does the job that Sweet Baby does. Not just our company, all companies and people like it. If you see something, say something. It's pretty funny to see a note on my Steam Curator post. I guess they need to defend themselves because they're completely wrong about everything Sweet Baby or any narrative team does and have no interest in finding out. Yeah. Yeah, no, like, imagine getting community noted for being fake news and then trying to claim that, no, I'm still right. Don't worry about that correction. I just don't worry about it. I'm always right. What is with the word cope and why do these gamers in my mentions think it means something? Is this their new word? Imagine pretending to not know the word cope when you're in a position of this fucking Lego butts person, dude. We've seen the interviews. You can't lie to us. Good fucking God. And then there's another quote retweet. This is also not even a dig at Steam, to be honest. It's just the state of the audience right now. And the way social media works, this might sound wild, but I don't necessarily have anything against lists or curators for games that you don't want to play. <laughs> Say with trigger warnings, etc. I like how they had to make this clear because these people also curate lists of things that they shouldn't buy because they're problematic. And they would have looked like they had a hypocritical thought if they didn't say that. What I am angry at is the fact that they get to use a tool that should be for building communities to simply spread misinformation fueled by racism on other social media sites. Like, it's such an inherently difficult part of social media. Sigh. Hogwarts Legacy streamers would like a word. I was just like, they get to use a tool that they're using for the express purpose of being able to curate Jeez, your games list the way that you want to. Way. And you're upset that they're allowed to use the same exact tools as you? That's kind of Let's fucked up. Let's listen to the ESC people and hire a bunch of people that probably don't actually have the skills needed only to get let go later due to no money. <laughs> Felix, none of this is our fault. Now give us more jobs to destroy another company. It's butt time? I was just like... It's also telling that they believe that this is spreading misinformation because that's exactly what they do when they curate their lists of, oh, these games are white supremacist Nazi propaganda. <laughs> They're power hungry, but can't handle power level reveals, right? Someone said that they reported it and Felix is like, please don't worry about talking to Valve about it. Thanks for tagging folks, but try not to bug them on my behalf. Not trying to throw anyone under a dumb gamer bus. Yeah, go, go harass this group and the people that made it. Go report them and get them taken down. But uh, don't, you know, don't bug them. <laughs> mm. 
I find it interesting they talk about capitalism and infinite growth, when capitalism is about constant competition and new companies replacing faltering companies. Meanwhile they think their communist system will always flourish. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to agree with the, uh, the Papa Uwu here. He said, personally, I won't rest until Sweet Baby Inc. goes broke. We failed to gatekeep gaming from bad faith actors, but in 2024, we take our hobbies back from you slop sellouts? I fucking hope so. I fucking, we failed with Gamergate, and these are all the Gamergate parasites who embedded themselves from their journalistic contacts into the game industry. Hopefully we can fucking take it back, dude. And here is... Here is Felix at home retweeting oh, Rebecca Valentine, who wrote an article for IGN. You might want to keep tabs on Silver String Media. It sounds like the same thing as Sweet Baby Incorporated. If oh, I have the a website is anything to indicate, our aim is to bring diversity and hope to our stories and culture. Rebecca Valentine said, A few weeks ago, I ran a story where I asked game developers for their perspective on why the industry is undergoing these mass layoffs. Those same developers also told me how all of this has been impacting them as people. Here are those stories. Instantly blocking anyone who sees this as an opportunity to bring in the weird, Oh no, game's too woke crowd, or say shit about Sweet Baby Inc. I am begging you people to examine your hearts and put your energy toward real problems. The second I block someone, I forget they exist. I will never remember any of you weirdos. And we're shutting down the replies. I am begging people to get a real hobby. Holy moly. Please read a book or make a friend or do anything else. And it's funny that not only is she running the fence for Sweet Baby, but she's wanting us to examine our hearts to not wish that these people get fired. I wish these people get fired. These layoffs, mm, beautiful. We need more of them. Lay off more people from the games industry, please. You haven't done enough. You haven't gone far enough. And your article about people complaining about having to live on unemployment isn't gonna make me feel bad for them because these are people that do not like the industry they work in, do not want to make games, are not passionate about games. They're here for ideological reasons or paychecks. And I just don't want that kind of person making video games. I was, I was just like, I don't know, I don't know what else to tell you. I stopped believing in myself. Here's unstable ground. Losing a job can take a major toll on a person's health. It's especially hard on disabled workers who are capable of working on games but have special health needs. One disabled developer I talked to spoke of the hardships faced after being laid off as they struggled to find a new job. Disabled how? Are, are you going to tell me it's like some sort, some sort of like anxiety issue? Because like, again, as someone who had to quit their job due to that, I'm not going to have much sympathy. It was super depressing, and what made it worse is that it was really hard to find a new job, said one disabled freelance developer who has struggled to find work since their last contract ended. This isn't even them getting fired! They just didn't get a contract renewal! What do you even mean? I had the added problem that I could only do a four-day week due to mental health reasons. Why would I hire you over someone that can do a five-day week then? What the fuck do you mean? This hadn't been an issue in the past, but with the sudden increase of desperate applicants and only a few open positions, it became abundantly clear that I couldn't afford my handicap. I've had to pay out of pocket for my anxiety meds ever since I started getting them because I cannot afford health insurance. It feels like you're forced to underbid other applicants. Even for individuals without explicit health problems, layoffs take a hefty mental toll. One former CD Projekt developer told me that while they were relatively secure financially, their self-worth took a serious hit from being laid off. I stopped believing in myself as an artist, they said. I started to question my career choices and if I even wanted to continue on this path. It was really hard for me to start creating anything again. I felt pretty burned out. Maybe, maybe, I don't know, have passion about what you're creating and then you won't feel like you can't believe in yourself? I don't like, what do you mean? Local Zoomers discovered job market. <laughs> they weren't a, a former ZeniMax employee described similar feelings. It was what they described as a dream job. It was my first AAA studio position. The team was amazing. I loved the benefits and I worked hard. 
I wondered if there was anything different I could have done. I was emotionally and mentally crushed. I just couldn't believe it. In one Wednesday, I had lost the entire reason I moved to Maryland and started a new life in a new state. Another person who was laid off from Xbox last year told me that even though they had found a new job since then, the lingering impact of the layoffs were still sitting with them. They had been working in a role that was normally considered to be a stable one. They liked their job and wanted to stay there long term. Hot. Hot take. If you put out something that not only doesn't make money, but ends up being in the red, maybe your job shouldn't be a stable one. Maybe, maybe you shouldn't be guaranteed to stay there if you can't actually do the job. You already have new work and you're still whining about having work again. <sighs> As, it's just like... A year later, I feel an incredible amount of anxiety. Even though my team just released a 90 plus Metacritic score game, I don't feel safe. That's because critic scores mean fucking nothing. Who takes critics seriously in current year? Come the fuck on, dude. Come the actual fuck on. Our CEO even said it's an all hands that he wasn't expecting any layoffs this year, but how am I supposed to believe that? Fuck, dude. No artist is entitled to an audience. No artist is entitled to financial support. The audience decides the art's worth. Now, the survivor's guilt for not getting laid off. Roles impacted by layoffs. Uh, design, production, art, marketing, programming seem to be hit hardest. QA, community management, UI, other, management. Uh, it's just like... Another common refrain is that the layoffs are disproportionately impacting members of marginalized groups. Though a recent Take This study suggests this may not be the case across the board. The survey found that the layoffs were hitting most demographics roughly evenly, but with one exception. Women. I also reviewed a smaller survey of at-risk UK game developers taken by Code Coven, Code CEO Cinzia Musio, in October of last year that suggests the impact to all marginalized groups may be more drastic. This is kind of like, we were doing diversity hiring and we got burned because we ended up churning out things that customers didn't like, and now we're having to trim the fat, as it were, but it's making us look bad in the ESG rankings, eh? <laughs> Several people I spoke to noted that their studios had increased diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts in prior years when funding was robust. Imagine that. When you have a surplus of money, you can hire useless people to do useless things. And when that money dries up, well, <laughs> they just gotta fucking go. Resulted in improved hiring initiatives and greater diversity in junior roles at major studios. There shouldn't be improved hiring initiatives as far as DEI goes. You shouldn't, you shouldn't have initiatives for hiring people based on their skin color or their gender or any of that bullshit. Like, it, it shouldn't be a thing. But when the time came for layoffs, the developers who benefited from those initiatives often lost their jobs. Good. Good. <laughs> what? what else do you even say to that? Former employees of Epic Games, 343 Industries, and Bungie all told me that their company's DEI groups had been hurt by layoffs, with key employees losing their jobs and companies making little effort to fill the gaps. This has left marginalized developers trapped in an overcrowded job market with few opportunities to get back on their feet. And why the fuck should I care? Why, why the fuck should I care about a marginalized, quote-unquote, developer more than I should care about a developer who might be white. Like, why, why, why should more precedence be put on how they feel for getting laid off than someone else? Like, I just, I don't understand your fucking logic here. Fuck them. <laughs> Not sorry these clowns are getting fired. Absolutely. It's like, it's funny that they just admit that the DEI people are getting fired, dude. Oh no. Oh no. How could that happen? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, you can't make me! I kept saying this over and over again. You can ignore money, but you cannot ignore the consequences of ignoring money. Mm -hmm, These mm -hmm, people mm -hmm. thought the company budget was an infinite money fountain and learned the hard way. I have a thread in that Steam group? Fucking why? <laughs> huh? back, back to the Rebecca. It's funny that they admit in the article that she wrote that the DEI people did take a hit, but she's like, don't bring up Ono oh Games 2 Oak and Sweet Baby. 
<laughs> and then the the fucking smug ass we're shutting down the replies. I'm begging people to get a real hobby. We had a real hobby until you scum fucks came in and tried to rewrite our programming. Get the fuck out. We don't want you. People from 343 literally did nothing to improve Halo once the layoffs happened. The game improved. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And then uh, we have another we have another Felix tweet here. I'm glad that Felix doesn't know how to delete their tweets. I'm going to be real with you. Really lovely messages from folks, and I want to say I'm grateful. Earlier, I said nothing has changed since 2014, but that's not true. A lot more people are able to speak up and show support, and I'm still pretty happy to be in this industry, despite the misinformation issue. You. You are the one with the misinformation issue. Oh, and it's funny that you oh, say 2014, as oh, that is the it. era of Gamergate. Oh, that's fu That's funny. That's real funny. <laughs> and we have, uh, we have a screenshot from Felix as well. I didn't know that this was the same person. I saw this screenshot going around and it didn't click in my head because I wasn't thinking about old Gamergate at this point. But Felix said, I'm so mad. This is a quote, so they're mocking. I'm so mad they killed the billionaire who turned evil that I'm going to show how racist I am is honestly a pretty funny take to have. This is in defense of Suicide Squad and how people were upset at how Harley Quinn shot Batman in that one cutscene that was leaked. That is that is a really fucking funny take, dude. One of the tragedies of all this is that your average woman, black people, gay people, etc., who are competent and want to make good games are never going to be free from the diversity hire stigma. It is. It's really sad. You thought she was talking about Epstein. <laughs> Can't be racist to Epstein. He's white, remember? <laughs> Hello, fellow white people. Lugzin, thank you for the 2,500 clips, dude. You can stay moe time uninterested that they can stand solvent? What? Check DM. Based fox lady, sweet baby ink detected. Checking out the comms. Slamming sweet baby. We're, go we're going through the dirt. We're driving through the mud, dude. I gotta go find my place again. I'm not, I'm not checking DMs because I, I have like a a list to keep myself on track of where the fuck I'm going. Where the fuck I'm going? I have to, I, I can't, I can't change my DM. I've lost it. I don't know where to find it. Help. Hit, hit. Okay. <laughs> and then we move on to another guy who was, who was big during the Gamergate era as well. Based on yesterday's poll, you have voted no mercy for cancel pigs. Here is Sweet Baby Inc. alternating between begging for forgiveness and threatening and insulting you. Decide. Fucking based grums, dude. Based grums. And this is the, the Sergio post that we, ha that we read earlier. Do not forgive these people. They, they care about you in a bad way. And they hate you. They know what they're doing. They deserve no forgiveness. They deserve no devil's advocate. They deserve nothing from you except ire and scorn. And that is what you should be giving them. Based, based grums. And then we had, I saw this, and this is what uh, kicked off my digging. Here is Sweet Baby Inc.'s employee Lego Butts admitting to illegally DDoSing a charity event that was trying to promote women indie developers. This is who Sweet Baby Inc. likes to hire. And this is uh, the fine young capitalists in an APG, uh, APG nation. I almost fucking screwed that up and said AGP <laughs> interview. Matthew Rappard of the fine young capitalist alleges that Maya Kramer, in coordination with Zoe Quinn, performed a DDoS attack on the fine young capitalist website. Maya and Quinn both confirm that they are responsible for the downtime that the website received during this time. Zoe Quinn stated on February 28th, 2014, at Lego Butts, oops, we DDoSed something on accident. Additionally, Quinn said a few minutes later, I like how a conversation between me and at Lego Butts resulted in accidentally killing an exploitative startup's website. Maya Kramer replied on March 1st, 2014, at Zoe Quinzel, we exploded their site. Oh my God, us. And this is, this is similar to like the male feminists who attack women. 
a woman is only useful to these people if they drink the slop and believe in the same cult ideology that they do. If you are a woman who doesn't hold the line, you are just as bad. You are an enemy. Maya, now Felix Kramer. Imagine all of these people becoming, <laughs> becoming the opposite gender. And that, hearing, hearing Zoe's name here, hearing Zoe's name and hearing Gamergate references made me, made me go back to Silver String Media. A writer and an architect walk into a bar. Harmony between story and design is the core concern of Silver String Media's leadership, who fuse writing, transmedia storytelling, ludology, architecture, and design. Supported by a teller, stellar team of created and savvy people, Silver String is ready to tackle any challenge. And you have all of these soy men above her. But we got Maya Felix Kramer, PR and marketing coordinator. Maya Felix Kramer has worked for eight years as a creative in the entertainment industry with experience in writing, filming, editing, creative direction, journalism, PR, and games development. Maya has had an extremely wide and applicable skill set. Maya is also deeply concerned with issues of inclusion and diversity in the entertainment industry, specifically within the games community. And it's, it's a wonder that... This person has managed to work in the games industry at the time of Gamergate for eight years. And now that's adding, what, another 10 years onto it, give or take? Eight to 10 years? They've worked in the industry for so fucking long, but because their main point is to drive ideology and not to create, but to destroy, they haven't actually made anything. I cannot name a single thing that this fuckwit has worked on. These people are fucking why you can't dye your hair. <laughs> To think a boulder picker's video and a burger franchise would open a can of worms. We don't need to hire people based on merit. Here are my merits! I ironically. <laughs> and then to loop to loop more on the past, to understand the future, we must look to the past. And I must open another bottle of water. Have I drank all of my water already? Jesus Christ, I'm fucking nuts. Alright, I'll just try to power through. <laughs> If Asmongold was a female VTuber, you imagine? It would be this Twitch person. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. I mean, we, we have a lot of tabs. I definitely, my hairline's not as bad as his. <laughs> it's also eight already. We're going over because I'm not stopping these tabs. This train fucking goes, dude. Felix Kramer at Lego Butts. Are you trans slash gender queer slash fluid? And this is on Ask FM. Uh, for those who don't know what Ask FM is, it's like a... Uh, it's kind of it's kind of like a marshmallow, except uh, sometimes it can be not anonymous. You can ask anonymously, and you can ask with an identity attached. We're going over. Felix Kramer said, "Yes, it's a process. I'm figuring it out. I know that's tough for people because it's confusing. Help to those around me, but it's been a struggle for me for about twenty years, and I sometimes worry it'll be something I'll never figure out. Let's go into it a bit." I am not my assigned at birth gender. I would absolutely refer to myself as part of the trans community and trans myself. I have thought long and hard for many years about transitioning, but in the past three or four years, there's been much of a movement in the trans community to talk about non-binary as a reality. And the truth is, I think I fit more in a world where the binary shifts into a spectrum where we think about gender as more than just men and women. And I hope there is room for non-binary individuals to exist. Yes, gender is complicated. It's tied to all sorts of things, social norms and acceptance and bodies. My body needs changing. That much I know for sure. And I still sort of struggle every day with pronouns and what to do with my gender. But the main thing right now is that I know it is my gender, my choice, and my journey. Everyone else might feel awkward being on it with me, but everyone else needs to remember that I'm the one who was sent to quote unquote therapy as a teen to be straight, to be cis, which is a type of therapy and thinking that stays with you a long, long time. I don't think Felix Kramer is like too crazy older than me, right? Like I'd, I'd probably put them at like maybe seven, eight years older than me, potentially. I'm not sure what their age is, but like based on where they were in the Gamergate sphere, like that's what, that's what I'm thinking about. Are you trying to convince me that you were sent to like conversion therapy in, in like the, the mid 2000s? I feel awkward, so everyone else deserves to feel awkward <laughs> instead of me. God damn. 
Zoe went after the fine young capitalist because they were competing with her game jam called Rebel Jam. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure the competition is part of it, but also women who don't agree with her. Isn't Zoe Quinn the woman who me too her ex, which led to him unaliving himself and then went quiet after learning about what happened? Yes. Yes, and uh, this butts person who works for Sweet Baby was also involved with that. When people recognize my journey by using they and them gender neutral pronouns, I feel so good. For someone who has had to hide who they are for so many years in gender and sexuality, it's amazing when I'm offered the chance to feel like it's okay. It's okay that I'm not a man or a woman. That's just fine. And the friends who do use female pronouns for me, they're on this journey with me. And we'll all figure it out together at some point. No one I love today has ever maliciously misgendered me. And for that, I'm thankful and so, so lucky. I'd like to clarify, not every gender neutral or gender queer person is figuring it out. Many are gender neutral and this is their true and real gender. For those friends, she or he is misgendering, and we should all try our best to incorporate they them into our diction so we can respect our trans friends no matter where they lie on the spectrum. Having said all that, nothing makes me happier than being mistaken for a boy or being told I'm a cute 90s boyfriend. The idea that my straight boyfriend is super into me and feels a little funny when I'm in boy mode, I'm living the dream, folks. Living my personal dream. Every now and then a cutie will slip in he instead of they and I pretty much melt into a puddle of smooches. In conclusion, all I want to be is remembered as dream phone boy caliber. <laughs> Tumblr got away with destroying a generation of autists. Unlucky Tumblr hate. Moving, moving right along. They made something called cuties killing video games. Lego Butts, back in the day, said, I'm ending the Cuties Killing Video Games campaign tonight. If you miss it, don't worry, we'll do a reprint later. Not sure when this all blows over, not sure when the later is. Have you killed video games lately? Announce your pride in murdering video games by wearing this shirt, you cutie you. Killing video games has never been so cute. More detailed description on what Cuties Killing Video Games means here. Proceeds go to feeding hardworking game devs at conventions. How ironic is it that they had a campaign called Cuties Killing Video Games, and now this person works for fucking Sweet Baby? Come on, dude! Like, the jokes write themselves, chat! Jesus Christ. And here's, a uh, forgive my ignorance, but what exactly does killing video games mean? And Felix Kramer responds, Dear fellow cutie, there is a theory you might not be familiar with that has been circulating the gamer community for quite some time. That some people have the desire to kill video games. If you're unaware of how to determine who might be killing video games, I've started a list for you. People who are attempting to kill video games by Felix. Developers of games about feelings. Developers of walking simulators. Developers who support the developers making these types of games. People who write about games. People who like pixel art. Anyone in AAA who makes any change to AAA FPS. Feminists. Quote unquote, casuals. People working to make games more accessible to those with disabilities. I'm not even kidding on that last one. Mobile game developers. Mobile game developers are an entirely other pot of fucking sounded worms. Dear lad and or lass. All right, okay. Like... <laughs> Mobile game developers are garbage because they've pushed so much microtransaction loot box bullshit into other spheres of gaming where they don't need to exist. Well, I don't even know why you included them on this list. Good writers, minorities, many, many more. The rest of this can all be lumped together in we want good stories. We want, we want good stories, not stuff shoehorned in, but these people can't understand that. And even if they do, they're ideologically driven, so they don't fucking care. He's very true with the mobile game dev one. I'm saying it doesn't fit in their list because everything else is a complaint that's way outside why people complain about mobile game devs. Every time Kirsha brings up sounding, you're going to bring up how many himbos are whacking it to Fuda. Well, they're not a himbo if they're whacking it to Fuda. They're just gay. <laughs> Mobile game devs, otherwise called non-stop ads. Essentially, it's becoming more and more apparent to me that we, as developers and friends of developers, are constantly killing video games. And then it dawned on me. I'm into it. If I'm killing video games, I may as well own it. 
and look cute while doing it. So we made a shirt so that cuties everywhere can tell the world we are killing video games. I hope this helps. And back in the Gamergate days, we just thought this was cringe and funny. We didn't know what it meant. We didn't understand that these people would be the ones setting up Sweet Baby a decade fucking later. And that they were serious about killing video games. That they were serious about using their ideology to poison anything they could get their fucking tendrils on. Is that slack? It's Ask FM. It's Ask FM. Ling ling. And we got a. Uh, we got the objection? Someone said, Depression Quest spoke to me, and so did your activism, but what you did to the fine young capitalists is disgraceful. That's what people don't like. Zoe Quinn responds, I posted four tweets saying I didn't know how I felt about their approach. And here is a list of 43 tweets showing the harassment that Zoe Quinn was doing towards the fine young capitalist. Depression Quest is such a gay name. And Zoe Quinn saying, I posted four tweets. Four, four tweets, eh? Why do people use Twitter as a diary? And it's also interesting, if you look at some of these tweets towards the fine young capitalists and talking about them, there, Zoe Quinn is adding Lego butts in multiple of these. And they're adding Lego butts. Oops, we DDoS something on accident. And they're adding Lego butts. Maya, look at what we have rot over here. So it's like, they're not only admitting to doing it, they're bragging about it. And it's just like, how, how, dude? How are you like this? I can't believe I'm talking about this in Year of Our Lord 2024, dude. How does one DDoS on accident? Oopsie poopsie, I definitely didn't mean for so many people to go to your website. <laughs> you think I'm going to have to drop out and hope to watch the VOD? Don't worry about it. Walking simulators and games about feelings and disorders and such are fine if they're well written. None of these people are good writers. Highly agree. Highly agree. I've recommended several that have to do with like mental illnesses before, dude. Rotting wood, thank you for the five pounds. Thank you. And we got uh we got this this fun Heat Street article. We got this uh this fun Heat Street article. Alright, okay. Feminist and social justice activists call for video game developer censorship blacklist. Thought policing is alive and well in the new media as social justice activists ramp up their crusade to silence and deplatform wrong thinkers from producing content within their medium, citing issues as nebulous as cyber violence as reasons to censor those who oppose progressive ideology. I fucking the bully hunters was such a crazy arc, dude. Following the explosion of outrage against an independent game developer who once expressed views critical of feminism in the video game industry, outrage warriors are now calling for the industry to enact strict rules against hiring and associating with developers whose views do not align with the feminist orthodoxy. The target of their ire, Tim Soret, is producing a game called The Last Night, which went viral at E3 2017 after its revival. It's ironic that a guy creating a Steam curator group is literal violence and harassment, but them calling for an in-industry blacklisting of developers who associate with certain indie devs is completely fine. And not only fine, it's the right side of history. As developers, collaborators, publishers, we have to vet those that we work with, wrote Maya Felix Kramer, a queer activist and PR person in the indie game scene. Kramer, who lists they, them pronouns in her bio, excuse me, that's a, that's a microaggression. You literally list their pronouns and either you're going to misgender them or you... <laughs> and sits on the board for Feminist Frequency and manages Fez developer Polytron, has worked with Zoe Quinn, Christine Love, and numerous other large personalities in the gaming scene. Her words have been magnified and retweeted by hundreds of game developers and high-profile game journalists. And this, sh this probably should have triggered some fucking brain activity in all of us who were, like, laughing at these people. Because it's like, if people in power are retweeting this literal who and are giving this literal who power over what they're saying when they want an industry fucking blacklist on people, that is kind of crazy. 
I don't, it's like now that we're calling out someone like sweet baby for this, do not give them an inch. Do not allow them to play victim. Do not allow them to gaslight you into believing what you're doing is harassment. You are, you are literally playing by the rules they wanted to set for you. They wanted the blacklist first. We will finish that blacklist. I hope everyone at Sweet Baby loses their fucking job. Show no mercy. If that sounds too bleak, you're in a position of privilege, continued Kramer. We have to make our entities, companies, and studios have public policies and then hold our collaborators to those policies. We have to. I wonder, I wonder how much Kramer knew. I wonder, I wonder how much this, uh, this Felix person knew about the embedding of ESG policies, but it wasn't called ESG at this time. That's, a, that's an interesting correlation to make now that we have future knowledge. That's, uh, that's interesting. We can no longer afford to say we didn't know or they seem nice. Many people haven't had this luxury in a long time. Welcome to 2017. I would urge those who want to see this world grow and progress to make sure they align themselves only with people who share those dreams. And you know what? I got, I got to agree. I got to agree with 2017 Lego butts. And to 2017 Lego butts, all I have to say is... Welcome to 2024. Our empathy has run out. Referencing Soray, who had a good reputation prior to Zoe Quinn's call to arms against him, Kramer wrote, We can no longer afford to say we didn't know. We already read that. Essentially calling for a blacklist or the creation of a sort of games code authority against developers guilty of wrong think, Kramer and her supporters are outraged by game developers and products that do not partake in their crusade for social justice. I would urge those who want to see the world grow and progress to make sure they align themselves only with people who share those dreams, wrote Kramer. Censoring media to fit a narrative is an impediment to creative expression. As it was with comic books and the Comics Code Authority in the 1950s, history shows that institutionalizing rules and forcing compliance for acceptable or prohibited content only condemns a creative medium to rot in the ghetto of hollow art. And wow, all of the video games we have in recent years are hollow, worthless pieces of shit. They have no soul. They have no care. There's no artistry there. It's just ideological slop and a paycheck. The country's rotting, not just games. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is, this is a symptom of our larger culture. Also, these are the world's favorite sex positions. Why is this in fucking related? <laughs> <laughs> what the what the heck? What the heck? And I thought this was interesting. I thought this was interesting. And of course, you guys know how bad my memory is. I had to I had to go to the flightless birds because again, they compile all this information. Everything is archived. As much as I hate doxing, as much as I hate the weird fucking faction of people on that website who will go on to dox random people for no fucking reason, Kiwi Farms is important. And of course, I was doing my refresher crash course on Gamergate with their fucking archives. Because I feel like if you're, go if you're going to robustly investigate something, typically the fruit farmers already have that information. And if you're a large YouTuber who's going to be doing an expose on, say, I don't know, Keffels, maybe you should talk about where you got your fucking information from. Maybe, that, maybe that's just me. But we had this guy in 2017. Say, I really wish one of these developers would tell these people to fuck off for once. Like, literally do what Notch did and tell them to fuck off. Unless the publisher butchers the game to appease these, I had to censor it, it'll, it'll sell well. It would sell even better if the guy told cows like Chelsea to take a hike. In 2017! This guy said, unless the publisher butchers the game to appease these, I'm gonna call them freaks. And unfortunately, unfortunately, his worry became manifest. The publishers did not fight back. The publishers did not tell them to fuck off. The publishers gobbled up the ESG money and said, yes, we will butcher our games. We will censor our women. We will beat the women with the ugly stick. We will arbitrarily make characters gay and non-binary and trans. We will change established lore years in the making for characters to appease you freaks 
who want nothing but to ruin what we have built. <laughs> you like his profile pic? At least these people are waking gamers up. It's just unfortunate, right? Because there was such a large pushback against all of the shit going on during Gamergate. But it's like, we didn't get anywhere, man. We absolutely fucking took an L with that because these people embedded themselves. And now, now we have to try our best to uproot the disease. Is that pick of heifer? Yes, cow and chicken. <laughs> cow and chicken. We got we got more more tweets here of Felix from back in the day. This is 2016. Her being friendly with Anita Sarkeesian. No fair. You pulled out the bitmoji um on in your home on your couch with your cat five feet. You could just look at me. I miss you already. It's establishing establishing how deep the relationship with these people went. They weren't just like one off. I met them once and never spoke again. <laughs> Cow and chicken, you mean Rocco, right? I mean, both of them had similar fucking, similar fucking art styles. <laughs> Rocco, modern life, not cow and chicken. Either way, I I talked about how bad my memory is already. I'm sorry. I watched both of those as a kid. <laughs> Kirsha brought back memories covering this. Thanks. Some were pleasant. It's just, it's just unfortunate that these are these are the the situation that we have to talk about this again. Twenty two thousand two hundred twenty two hiccups. That's a lot of hiccups, dude. Her remembery, it doesn't work. My remembery gland, it's broken. At Anita Sarkeesian, come home soon, please, says Felix. Uh, we got Anita Sarkeesian with Felix Kramer. Too, too cute to be allowed. Photo of the year 2016. And we got uh, another, another photo. Some of my favorite shots from tonight's book signing and Q&A. At Feminist Frequency, at Unburnt Witch. Obviously, Zoe Quinn and Anita Sarkeesian. Andre Sierra, thank you for the five dollars. You wonder if the last night could get crowdfunded? Be nice, uh, f you to these characters, and we'd get a game out of it. Felix Down says, as the night goes on, I grow increasingly bitter that it took this long, and as many people suffered as they did to make this ban happen. They're talking about when uh, Milo Yiannopoulos, another name I thought I would never speak out loud again, got banned. Zoe Quinn, same two thinking of you. Uh, Lego Butts responding, and you, heart, it's just, I wish we could enjoy this, but oh well, I guess. And someone else just saying, love to you both. I literally cannot believe how people are taking this whole thing. Imagine, imagine, imagine literally having a cultural victory against a perceived enemy that you have and not even being able to feel happy about it. They're just like, oh, we won, but I can't feel good about it. Oh well. Zoe Quinn, yeah, I don't want to shit on this too much, but again, he did this to me and my family for years. He did it to a lot of people that never got the coverage I did. What matters is that the TOS has to apply to people without a platform. Milo was right. Gamers were the first one to tell these people no. Yeah. Imagine my shock. <laughs> Those people got the normies on their side during Gamergate. Unfortunately, that's the problem right there. There's no scenario where it's enough. Yeah. It has to apply to chronic abusers that don't make headlines off abuse. It has to apply to everyone or it's a band-aid on a bullet hole. It has to stop taking years. This can't be where the line is. There's a pretty huge hollow feeling to this. Like, he's not unique. Hell, my ex stated his account or started his account to stalk me and he's still here. Just, just, just like Spess Monkey said. There is no scenario where these people will feel like they've won. There will never be enough. You cannot appease them. And this is exactly the same logic you have to apply when a Twitter mob comes after you. If you apologize to a Twitter mob, that is blood in the water. They will see you as weak and they will see as having conquered you. Do not apologize to Twitter freaks, dude. Terminally miserable. They're miserable and they want you to be as well. I could name so many like him, and I worry he'll only be removed after years, and only if their list of targets includes someone well-known. I don't know, I'm tired, and it's hard to feel like this is anything more than hitting the top of the hill before the boulder rolls back down again. Systemic change is needed, but I'm glad one abusive piece of shit is defanged on here. Anime avatars are filling my mention, so that's my cue to leave for a bit. Love to anyone else who has had their life fucked up by him and doesn't know how to answer, why wasn't the abuse against me enough? Look at this fucking pity party, dude. 
the anime avatars once again <laughs> filling her mentions. That's as more time goes on, the more it loops. Not the anime. Oh, it's it's nuts to me. Especially like this was the attitude these people had during Gamergate. And they're mad at a fucking Steam curator group now. Lit literally the smallest amount of pushback. The smallest amount of us trying to take back any sort of power over getting rid of these fucking people and telling companies with our wallets, we don't want this. We don't want Sweet Baby. We don't want these consultations that you have. We don't want these tentacle tendrilled freaks that you have hired to ruin your IPs. That's not what any of us want. K Drake, thank you for the $10. Amen. Never bow down to these people. Anything but don't go waving the white flag. They'll just strangle you with it. Absolutely. Unfortunately. And then we have, uh, I noticed you have Iron Galaxy in your bio on Twitter. How long have you worked there and what do you do for them? Great seeing you on the big live live show. And Felix responded, Hey, so I started on contract with Iron Galaxy recently, just after the game developer convention, doing PR, logistics, and other such nonsense for their indies. They're publishing three games this year, Gunsport, Video Ball, and Capsule Force. They're all competitive multiplayer games, wicked fun, and they're all coming out later this year. Thanks for watching our ridiculous hungover faces on the big live live show. It was a blast, and I hope to do it again sometime. This is already showing way back then that they're trying to entrench themselves this heard of none of i've heard of none of them either but it's just like if she if she's getting this kind of work back then it was only a logical conclusion that in so many years time they would be hired by actual studios it's not even pushback it's acknowledgement their roaches scurrying because someone turned on the light yeah pretty much i like i like how grums called them cancel pigs it's a pretty, pretty great way to s talk about these people. Polter, guys, thank you for the memba. Thank you. <laughs> the sweet baby shrieks in pain as it hurts the gaming industry. And that brings us to game creator suicide after feminist Zoe Quinn accuses him of abuse shows peril of Twitter trials. The unraveling of Alec Haloka's life in the days after facing unproven accusations should remind us why, at some point, civilized society turned away from mob rule and embraced due process. Not only is your social media feed becoming a live broadcast of an execution of the lost and the vulnerable, but the people handed the axe and the hood may be no saner than the ones they are beheading. And as we saw during the Hogwarts Legacy fiasco, they had no problem setting up lists to find streamers who played the game. They had no problem harassing streamers, harassing Twitter users who tried defending streamers. We saw they even had no issues lying and claiming that they had a trans person in their life that committed suicide because of Hogwarts Legacy. Outward proven lies that are archived and documented. Let's leave for the moment and we'll return here. Whether the claims against Holoka are likely to be true, any other circumstantial evidence or the credibility of his accuser, Zoe Quinn, one of the most high profile activists on the internet. Instead, let's chart the fatal sequence that perfectly shows how not to handle any sexual abuse allegations, including entirely plausible ones. And what is, what is nuts to me is that anyone would have believed her after the entire Gamergate shit kicked off because of the Five Guys Burgers and Fries nonsense, her cheating, and it coming out that she was sleeping with games journalists and developers. Uh, it's just like lit literally the stereotype of a woman sleeping her way to the top and sleeping her way to success. And now you're going to believe when she comes out with an unsubstantiated allegation? Uh, come on, dude. Come on, dude. Instead, let's chart the fatal sequence that perfectly shows how not to handle this. August 26th. Zoe Quinn, the feminist game developer whose conduct had sparked Gamergate, the five-year ideological war between online communities, accuses Holoka, the indie co-author of cult hit Night in the Woods, of mistreatment via a lengthy Twitter post. Quinn somewhat insidiously blurs the line between routine poor relationship behavior and bona fide criminal acts, between literal descriptions and metaphors. Although Quinn has since deleted her post and her entire Twitter account, obviously the signs of someone who's innocent, the full text has been preserved. 
The gist is that Quinn, already vulnerable after another assault in Toronto, was bought a one-way ticket to Winnipeg after flirting with Holoka and began a relationship with him. In the month that she stayed, he had physically confined her to his apartment, slowly isolated her from other people in her life, and degraded her while they were alone while acting normal in public. <laughs> oh, I thought you guys wanted me to look at Chad for some reason, so you just screamed at me. I was like, what? Holoka would throw things and jam his fingers inside me and walk me around the house by them when I told him it hurt. As well as telling her that the earlier assault was her own fault during mean and violent sex. After her friend paid for a flight back to Toronto, she broke up with Holoka by email, at which point he lashed out and complains to other developers in the community that she was a bitch, thus ruining her career in the Canadian games industry. Fucking puppet fi- Imagine puppet fingering your woman around the house. How does that even work? Was he shorter than her? I don't get it, man. <sighs> Writer's barely disguised fetish. Now, if Quinn feels that she was the victim of sexual assault or other forms of abuse recognized under existing law, she would have done well to go to the police. She alleged in her post that other people had confirmed her stories. That's Alec, what can you do, she was apparently told. So surely, within the current climate and her prominence, she and other victims would have been listened to. And I think that would be incredibly correct if it was true and real. If you, if you want attention and if you want to ruin someone's life, you hang them in the public opinion of Twitter. If you want something actually done about it, you go to the people who can actually do something with arresting or a lawsuit. This person's a liar. For someone whose stock in trade is the claim of misogyny, and who has graphically detailed other similar instances from her life, it is somewhat unfortunate that Quinn was apparently too scared in this particular case to even mention it for the best part of a decade since it allegedly occurred. If, however, Quinn thinks this was insufficient to go to the cops about, what purpose does her airing on Twitter of these vague grievances serve? Quinn has received tens of thousands of retweets and likes and positive media coverage, but she has headlined entire conferences on cyberbullying and complained on dozens of death threats. She would have known that these voices would be turned against the accused. In fact, she means that Holoka had already said he'd kill himself over her behavior during their relationship, and that Alec is likely not well and I always believe in rehabilitation over punishment. Does disgracing a troubled person in front of millions constitute rehabilitation over punishment? Was Twitter 10 years after the fact the most productive way? She wanted to ruin this man. There is like literally no other interpretation of this. And ever since like a lot of this shit happened, Whenever any sort of allegations come out on Twitter, I, I will not believe them until there's corroborating evidence. Notice all these 5 out of 10 in the best light women all love spinning stories about how men desire them so much they're willing to molest them and confine them, just do anything to keep them as a sexual object, which they love describing in lurid detail. Meanwhile, actual abuse victims suffer severe distress even thinking about the things that happen to them. And it's like... Even, even with some of the stuff that's happened, right? Like, I've talked about, like, getting, getting groped when playing Pokemon Go. But it's like, I, that, that's not, like, crazy traumatized. Like, it was awful, right? But it's, it's like, how do you do that in full daylight, in public, in a park? Like, what is wrong with you? But it's, it's just, like, it didn't, it didn't fucking change the trajectory of my life. Night in the Woods was dog shit, but not bad enough for him to die. Alan woke too, however. <laughs> You've not heard that particular story. Oh. <laughs> She's a liberal woman. Are you surprised? Is that all of your lore? Is all of my lore cursed lore? My dad's a really good guy. Well, my grandparents are great. <laughs> August 28th. The colleagues with whom Holoka developed his last hit game cut ties with him and canceled his current project after some agonizing consideration. A lengthy Reddit post from his Night in the Woods co-workers emphasizes that the team is heartbroken, but sheds little specific light. Enough of the allegations are extremely plausible, writes Scott Benson, adding that the things that Alec did during the bad times were worse than we know. Getting rid of someone and, like, cutting ties with them because allegations are plausible seems kind of crazy to me. Right? Like, especially if I worked closely with someone or if I was good friends with them, I'd be like, you're going to need to show me something. I'm going to I'm going to need some kind of proof. I'll, I just I don't even know, man. 
We aren't trying to prove a point or appease a mob or show we're great, he reassures, adding that he is depressed. Thus, we are none the wiser as to whether they would have verified the accusations, nor if they are aware if their actions will contribute to him being viewed as guilty. I, I feel like they know. They know that their actions would contribute, man. You gotta believe all women. Only believe if you're given proof, man. They have washed their hands of him. August 31st, Alec Holoka commits suicide. Alec was a victim of abuse, and he spent a lifetime battling mood and personality disorders, writes his sister Eileen Mary, but became a new person working towards rehabilitation and a better life. In her words, Alec wished the best for Zoe. A call for sanity. Surely the sequence of events represents a collective disaster, although no one intended it to happen like this. I don't know if he would even say that. Like, it's speculative, right? You have to be, like, allegedly. You can't, you can't, you can't defame someone, but, like... From all of this happening, even back then, I always felt that this was something that she intended to happen, and it was sort of a test of how much power she could wield. Allegedly. At every social, or at every step, social and ethical norms were violated. There are some lessons here, basics that need to be relearned for a new tech technological and political age do not spread life-destroying stories of past relationships to strangers just because social media exists any glorified gossip that you disseminate will go far beyond your shared circle and that will be your fault unless you're actually looking to destroy lives do not make judgments about people you don't know on the basis of one-sided stories you read on the internet. Do not accept something as complete truth due to an accuser's gender alone or any other inherited characteristic that does not guarantee trustworthiness. It is, it is insane as well how much this still holds true. So many people will make snap judgments on someone without knowing anything about them. Like the amount, the amount of like just incorrect information and blatant lies and misconstruing of things that I've said that happens on a regular basis is insane. And I've had to repress my autistic urge to correct all of these idiots saying shit because it's like, they're probably doing it on purpose, right? They're probably purposefully misconstruing, misinterpreting and lying about me because that's, that's just what they find fun. So correcting them would do nothing. Zoe Quinn, most hilarious accomplishment, convincing anti-Gamergate pics she took herself, constituted revenge porn. I don't remember much about the revenge porn arc, and I don't have any tabs on that while I was, uh, while I was digging through here. Do not ignore due process. An accusation is not enough. Fairness is paramount, particularly when lifelong reputations are at stake. It's no longer just about dropping a difficult friend when the world is watching. Do not use unwilling individuals as pawns for your ideological games. This is quite literally the M.O. of people who are progressive. Those on your side are not always perfect. Those you oppose are not inhuman. All are capable of sustaining trauma from the thousands of anonymous pinpricks they receive. Zoe Quinn named herself after Harley Quinn. This is where it comes back to Zoe. She did not kill Alec Holoka, but she owes her entire present day career to riding the wave of social media and political activism that has no respect for the above principles. Dozens of independent accounts exist of her questionable behavior from reportedly fabricating sexual assaults, claiming that she was once assaulted and stabbed the attacker to death, to systematic emotional abuse, detailed by her former boyfriend, Iran Gr Joni, I don't know how to pronounce that, to accepting $85,000 in funding money for a game that she has not begun to produce. Oh, this kind of reminds me of uh, some crowdfunding that Keffels did. To being a keen member of a message board that specialized in online harassment. A picture emerges of someone manipulative, ruthless, vindictive, self-serving, and unreliable. Of course, the accusations against her come with the very same caveats as the ones she herself makes. But the point is that her own reputation and credibility are no better than those of her accusers. And I would, I would beg to differ, actually. The accusations against her, I wouldn't say come with the very same caveats, because we have, like, detailed archives of some of the shit that she's done. You thought that was just her name? Her real name is Chelsea Van Valkenburg. Part of the extremely wealthy and powerful Van Valkenburg family that helps to explain why the media can't let Gamergate go. It's not so much the media can't let Gamergate go, it's that it never stopped. It, it never stopped, and that's why we have the consultation companies like Sweet Baby. 
They just kind of scurried into little tiny cockroach holes. The call is not for her to be victimized, there's enough suffering here already, but for her to be treated as a real human being, with some worthy opinions and some obvious personal flaws. Holoka was obviously no saint, but neither is Quinn. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just gonna not agree with that. I'm not, I'm not gonna agree with that. And this is just defense of Quinn down here, which I don't need to read. I don't need to read that. And we, uh, we move on to... After Ale Alec killed himself, we got Lego butts here. We got, <laughs> we got Lego butts. Talking about people speaking out about sexual assault as well. I'm proud of and believe those who speak out. I cherish and believe those who cannot. I know what it's like to fear telling the truth for having done nothing wrong at all. My heart goes out to everyone affected by the stories being shared and the ones that aren't. I'll be quiet for a while. <laughs> My luminescence is increasing on its own, big sister. Most most of this is stuff we already knew. We're just recapping it because it all it all comes back to what sweet baby is doing now. At all it all comes back to the sweet baby. And uh in in my searches for this, I'm just gonna show because this blue spark, this archiver man, I appreciate you not adding N-words into your archiving so I can show it on stream. In in my search through things, I found I found this guy who archived just like a whole bunch of other people, like Sarah Nyberg. And a couple of people were getting uh, Sarah Butts confused with Lego Butts. Uh, Sarah Butts was the dog fucker. Lego Butts was not. You know, all right, we gotta, gotta keep things straight here. But I was like, I was scrolling through these. I was scrolling through these and then I saw, I saw this name. And I was, As a white hetero male, I demand a holiday where I can be an insufferable shit with no consequences and walls of candy. And I was like, why does this name sound familiar to me? Why does this name sound familiar? That's kind of weird. Why is it? What? Why is it? What? And then I looked it up. I looked up the tweet. And it shows up as this, this G-op guy. And I was like, wasn't this, wasn't this someone that was like playing John? Don't I know this person? Don't I, don't I know who this rock VTuber is? What is happening? What is fucking happening? And so I, I found a couple of more like retweets from this person back in the day. Again, Blue Spark, th thanks for not, thanks for not having end words. <laughs> Chelsea Clinton sided with a bunch of deranged bigots and helped incite an Islamophobic outrage mob against a member of Congress like two weeks ago. So she and the liberal dipshits defending her shouldn't be surprised that a grieving Muslim woman wasn't happy to see her today. G up retweeting support for people who were harassing Chelsea Clinton at an event for the victims of the Christchurch shooting. Uh, and then there's like even more. G up also upset that white supremacist violence is allowed to continue. I'm so sick of this shit. Democrats and Dem controlled cities and Dem controlled countries and Dem controlled states never do anything about white supremacist violence. The FBI under every Dem president in my lifetime has targeted environmental activists more than white supremacists. The Zimmerman trial showed us that you can go out with deadly force looking for trouble. These are all those things that he retweeted, but it's still just like, wow, well, that's weird. I did not expect the name of someone that I like tangentially was aware of to show up here. That was fucking, that was fucking crazy. The blindness. This tangent has fucking layers. You feel like you're in a Nolan movie. <laughs> I did say I had a metric fucked on a tabs. <laughs> I did say. And, uh, I found I found something else Move, moving along because like G, uh, G op is really only tangentially related to someone who knew these these people on Twitter. I don't think he was involved in anything, but I was just like, wow, I didn't expect to come up on that. Moving right along, we got a uh, a Twitter user speaking with Felix about the cuties killing video games thing, and I was like, that's interesting. Uh, they want they want to get the shirt, but like ten more people need to buy it. That's interesting, and then just at Lego butts, I got the shirt ready to kill some games. Ready to, they got they got a picture of Halo. Halo's dead. That's fine. Like how they use Zimmerman over and over again as an example of a white supremacist. Yeah, let's just you ignore the fact that meds. Meds, he wasn't hey, he wasn't white, but that's okay. <laughs> Man, clown world we live in. Just wake up, but we'll say that side scroller episode with you was very good. Oh, well, thanks. Thanks. I had a fun time. It was a great it was a great time with those people. I had a fun time. Wait, Zoe Quinn tried to run for Congress and lose? Why, well, yes, yes, it did. I don't remember Zoe Quinn running. Maybe they did. I remember Brianna Wu running. 
I remember Brianna Wu. My, my memory is not so good, which is why I went down this rabbit hole again, so I could refresh everyone, including myself. But, uh, this person... Al Alex... Alk Iggins... I found this. Cuties killing video games, gender politics and performance in indie game developer subculture, a thesis presented to the Honors Tutorial College, Ohio University, in partial fulfillment of the requirements for graduation from the Honors Tutorial College with a degree of political science by Alexander Higgins, April 2015. I have the word porn loaded up in my fucking search. In addition to serving Gamergate's mascot, Vivian is often reduced to a sex object. It only took me a few seconds to find sexualized images of Vivian on Twitter, created or shared by Gamergaters. There's plenty of Vivian porn throughout the internet, although to be fair, there's porn of everything on the internet. It is worth noting that Vivian is not sexualized in most depictions of her. This is to be expected, as her original purpose was not to serve as a sex object. However, porn of Vivian is not uncommon, and even when she's not sexualized, Vivian is a mascot, an objectified body that only does and says anything that Gamergate wants her to. If Vivian represents Gamergate's ideal gamer girl, then her lack of autonomy as a person holds interesting implications. And this kind of follows in the footsteps of people trying to censor female bodies in video games. Those females in those video games cannot consent and are simply having their autonomy taken away as an individual virtual being by the male gaze playing them. A drawing does not have autonomy because it's not a person. I agree with you, chat. I'm just explaining their crazy fucking perspective because it is crazy and it's unfortunately affecting our games today. This explains literally everything, even the ugly stick on women. It, it does, and it's kind of crazy. It's, it's kind of crazy. And, uh, let's see here. I had a, I had a few interesting things. I don't want to scroll too much in case they put, like, actual porn in there. I don't, I don't want to scroll too much in case they put actual porn. But if we go, if we go back up to the beginning, this is 210 pages long, chat. So I'm not reading this whole thing. But we have the chapters the sad state of gender politics and video game subculture or why video games need to be killed the history and manifestations of inequality and the egalitarian potential of alternative spaces gamergate observed or my experience as an undercover social justice warrior how to kill video games and look cute while doing it and then chapter five's conclusion on 187 let's see if i can get all the way down here 187 Implications for democracy, by the way. Why does it matter when women are given equal opportunities as men to express themselves through games? It's not about equality. You guys have moved on to equity, and equity is bad for everyone. 187. 187. Patriarchy in video game culture was born of the patriarchy of general culture, but maintained through the mode of production by which most commercial games are created. The earliest games were generally created by men, and many of them reflected masculine values. As video games became increasingly expensive to produce and distribute, marketing decisions, by necessity, became conservative. A masculine, hardcore gamer demographic became the primary audience for games, and the games that are sold generally cater to that demographic. Both developer and play culture, as a result, are patriarchal. I've been playing video games since I was, like, five years old. I started with my uncle teaching me Gran Turismo, all right, okay? I played, like, Mortal Kombat. I played Sonic. I, I played so many of these games, and not once, not once did I have the independent thought of these are for boys and I shouldn't play them. I had people make fun of me for it. I had people make fun of me for being a nerd and playing video games, telling me that I wasn't, you know, girly enough. I had people who made fun of me for for doing like a boy activity but it didn't make any sense to me because it's just like i have fun doing it so why what does it matter you didn't go to a liberal arts college how dare a thing exist it's a black french canadian can we go back to the white dudes in basements making bomb ass shit right dude you were laughing at this in high school now you're seeing this in disgust yeah yeah that's sort of like it was all fun and games back in the day we didn't know that it was going to become fucking crazy we didn't, we didn't know how crazy this was going to become, unfortunately. Um, yeah, this is this is 210 pages, and I'll, I'll post, like, all of this in my Discord as well, in case somebody actually wants to, like, go through 
all of this nonsense, but it's it's like they they model their college thesis after the cuties killing video games thing that fucking Felix did. Again, the sweet baby employee. The sweet baby employee. And I want to make sure that I don't uh, show the wrong thing. So after after their college thesis from Ohio, uh, Alexander Higgins became Alexandra Higgins. And they started working at the uh, Temple College of Liberal Arts. Uh, and it says... Uh, <laughs> I can open this page. I can open this page. We got uh, Alexandra Higgins is a PhD student in the political science department. She grew up in Baltimore, got her BA from Ohio University, Honors Tutorial College in 2015, studying American politics and political theory, but she is more specifically interested in LGBT activism, information and communication technology, democracy, and gender. How do you be interested in democracy? Currently, she teaches quantitative methods when she isn't teaching or tending to her coursework, she likes to make computer games, showcase them at local festivals, and maintain her blog. And back when we were laughing at Zoe Quinn and all of them for being indie developers before they vastly impacted uh, the gaming industry in general, this is another person who was basing their entire philosophy off of what these people did during Gamergate. Uh, the site was born out of my belief in a decentralized internet and serves as a space for my writing and creative work. Most of the work consists of games, usually digital, sometimes not, that I started making video games when I was 12 and have been releasing them online for almost as long. I also showcase games at festivals, events, and conventions, sometimes by myself, but sometimes as part of Underground Arcade Collective, which I co-founded with Stephen Thomas in 2017. John D. Moore came along for the ride shortly afterward. Some of my games are collaborative projects, but I usually also work solo, making me by extension a designer, writer, programmer, artist, animator, and composer. And because this is a person that completely believes in what Gamergate was for, perpetuates the cuties killing video games thing, believes that video games need to be changed, these are the people who should be gatekept from actually being in the industry. If they want to make their indie games, they could do that, they can have fun with whatever they're wanting on their own. Please don't hire these people for, like, actual projects, because it will ruin them. It will absolutely ruin them. And that's incredibly unfortunate. And I couldn't, I couldn't find any links with this Alexandra person other than knowing Felix, who works at Sweet Baby. I'm not, I'm not like, a, a deep cover autistic investigator. I can only do some basic, some basic stuff. But we have, uh, we have another part of their itch.io blog uh, that says, Change is coming. The ants march. It is a bad day for gender and capitalism. Mandibles, Change is Coming, is a short twine game created in an hour by me and my undergraduate thesis advisor, Susan Burgess, <laughs> professor of political science at Ohio University in 2015. <laughs> Help! I finished writing a thesis on democratic communication, gender, indie game development, Gamergate, and the queer game scene. And to celebrate its completion, Professor Burgess and I decided to make a game in an hour in the spirit of my research. This piece of if is silly and rough around the edges, but it's a fun little thing. What a surprise. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just like a little text-based text game. Be attracted to a cartoon fox I said that you are in a room, it's like a scratch your head. You scratch your head, it feels good, look around. You notice there is a gamer gate in the room? Oh God! Thankfully, it's just a giant ant. Wipe spread off brow. You wipe the sweat off your brow. It feels good. The ant finds this culturally insensitive. Oh shit. The ant approaches. Move. You run. The ant is not pleased. I am not pleased, the ant says. Why are you not pleased? Actually, the ant says, I just lost my job. I can't pay rent. My husband snores. Gender and capitalism suck. I can relate. Want to start a revolution? Hell yeah. Shit's going to go down. Where do you begin? Destroy the institution from within, shall we? Sabotage is fun. Throw a bomb. Watch clerks, lawyers, politicians, and CEOs flee into the streets. Change is coming. There's no way this could go wrong. The cops have arrived. For some reason, they're sporting assault rifles with grenade launchers and armored trucks. These are normal cops. Don't move, you're coming with us. Hey yo, fight the power! 
You come at the cops swinging, your fists of justice are too fast for them to track. Ultimately, however, you fall to the might of their armored vehicle. Any last words, hippie? The sergeant says, his standard issue pistol reflecting the sun into your eyes. You spit into his face. Before he can fire a shot, you hear an insectoid voice cry out from the crowd. If you're going to kill that human, you'll have to kill me first! A pair of mandibles grip the gun and crushes it into tiny flakes. The cops flee in sheer terror. Their weaponry is ineffective against the mighty insect exoskeleton. You flee to safety. Ants emerge from the ground, descend from the sky, and erupt from office buildings, forming a protective barrier between you and the police. Change came that day. That was years ago, and you now bask in the light of your perfect utopia, sipping a glass of cream soda, remembering the sacrifices made for the revolution. You never heard from your friend, the ant, again, but you raise your glass and your fist in the air in remembrance of her, as the sun sets slowly upon the new world. Well, apparently you won't eat the bugs, but you'll use them for your own gains, and then whatever happens to them doesn't fucking matter. Not your problem. You're in utopia now. <laughs> Man, and I thought 4chan was weapons-grade autism. You hate that they try to call this game? It isn't a video game. Well, I mean, text-based video games were a thing. I'm gonna be real. <laughs> Roughly mad! Thank you for the hundred biddies. They want to fuck the ants! A 4chan at least can write. Sometimes. Sometimes, dude. Fuck the Western cultural communists. And then uh, a little a little bit after this, I was I was curious, right? I was I was uh I was curious about some more conspiratorial things, so put your fucking tinfoil on for this chat. This is this is the tinfoil segment of the tabs. Be be heavily plated in your tinfoil. Gamergate still thinks DARPA is funding DIGRA. Any, if any Gamergaters follow this back here, DIGRA is funded through membership fees. It's a Finnish research association which does not get support from the U.S. beyond what American scholars may pay in fees. The conspiracy theory is based on a job ad on the DIGRA website for a position at an American university. This position was connected to a research project which is funded by DARPA. None of that money, not even the payment for the ad, as such things are posted as a service to the members will reach DIGRA. My DIGRA. <laughs> I can't remember what the acronym stands for, so we're gonna, we're gonna get to that in one of these tabs, I'm sure. I'm sure we will. Uh, so we have the Gamergate page here. Immerse is a U.S. military-funded program to simulate social interactions using the Unity game engine, as described by Dr. Joshua Allen McCoy. The goal of the project is to produce a game-based training environment that teaches people how to interact as good strangers via practicing the skills necessary to have successful social interactions in unfamiliar languages and contexts. This will be accomplished via virtual dramatic scenarios realized within the Unity game engine in which the player interacts with computer-controlled autonomous characters in high-consequence social environments. Learning how to quickly recognize and navigate the social interaction norms in these environments. We build upon the autonomous character and story management technologies successfully demonstrated in the interactive drama facade. And the social simulation system successfully demonstrated in the experimental game Prom Week. This way Unity committed Sudoku last year? I don't know, man. So we've we've got the five teams who worked on Immerse. We have the the director. We got names here. I didn't look up any of these people, so I don't know if these people have any ties to Sweet Baby or if this is just completely nonsense. No, I I didn't look up these. I didn't have time. I literally didn't have time. <laughs> and we have the conspiracy theory. A Popito at the Escapist forums alleges that Zoe Quinn's friends are funded by DARPA through the Immerse project. Based on Digra having posted a job announcement for Immerse and Maya Kramer having attended Digra. Zoe is friendly with Maya on Twitter. Maya works for PR for Silver String Media. An employee and an advisor of Silver String Media attended the Digra conference. Staff members of the Immerse project have volunteered for Digra and the Immerse project is funded by DARPA. So that is, that is the conspiracy theory. We got, we got the conspiracy theory. We have the immense project here. We have immense. 
It is a project funded under the DARPA Strategic Social Interaction Modules Program. The goal of the project is to produce a game-based training environment that teaches players good stranger techniques. Via practicing the skills necessary to have a successful social interaction in unfamiliar languages and contexts. This just basically describes what we read in that other article, and you can see, like, the, the real people here. This- this guy? This guy just looks like a game character, but outside of the game. Like, he doesn't look real. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> Literal Metal Gear Solid 2. And, uh... Let me- let me see where the next tabs bring me. I gotta make sure I'm staying on track here, chat. Gotta make sure I'm staying on track. Alright, so... We- we have, uh... We have, like, this entire... This entire conspiracy theory image, right? Talking about Immerse. Zoe as Maya as a PR agent. Maya works as PR for Silverstring. Silverstring Media sends people to the DIGRA conference. DIGRA is funded by DARPA. Blah, 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 blah. The Center for Playable... Or the Center for Games and Playable Media. This is, like, linking together agencies funding game research at UG, or UC Santa Cruz include the MacArthur Foundation, Knight Foundation, National Science Foundation, Intelligence Advanced Research Projects Activity and Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA. And I'm assuming they're circling these people because they work for uh, DARPA and they're also on the Immerse Project and they're highlighting their names, workshopping and like game stuff. And here's Digra making more connections between people. Did, did I find the docs that killed Gamergate? I just like, this is, this is tinfoil territory, chat. I'll repeat it as much as necessary. Very tinfoil territory. Digra 2014, the playful is political, a fishbowl conversation on identity and diversity in game culture. And so this is, this is like, part, part of when they were pushing the diversity, equity, and inclusion stuff at Digra, unfortunately. And I have a Medium article from your ally, a plea to gamer gators to drop the Digra connection and some to Sargon and Jenny. Hi, I'm Aqua Pendulum, one of the archivists who document this event at Know Your Meme. This is mostly an update to a paste bin post I made, now in Medium for easier linking. The purpose of this post is to clear up the origin of where the connection to Digra came from. The connection to Digra as some sort of cultist scholar group that is manipulating Silverstring was not very tangible. I mean, you really have to grasp at straws in order to create this connection. It was mostly born out of paranoia when gamers were bombarded with the chain of Gamers Are Over articles on August 28th. During the confusion and paranoia of being overwhelmingly smeared, many of us started digging through the connections among all the people we kept our eyes on. And this is, this is exactly what you should be doing. Because like, like Asmongold said in his video, this, this isn't like the big fish, right? Uh, this, uh, this isn't like the people behind everything. There's people pulling their strings. Connections were found and we traced the PR woman Maya Lego Butts Kramer back to her place of employment, Silverstring Media, which is consulted by the two figures of Feminist Frequency, Anita Sarkeesian and Jonathan McIntosh. This reinforced our belief that this agenda to end gamers was being pushed by feminist ideology. Not so much feminist ideology, but feminist ideology is the useful idiot wing of Marxist ideology. A blog post on September 1st confirmed Silverstring's agenda to us. Up until this point, the connection still seems plausible. However, it started getting shaky from then on. The pastebin post was made and spread around earlier on September 1st. One disturbing paragraph reads, This PR group Sarkeesian is tied to is fairly creepy, heavily ideological, and they hold retreat workshops for SJW concepts with a sharply activist tone. Reminds us of Jesus Camp. They do workshops for game devs where they discuss dismantling hegemonic masculinity in the gaming industry and do weird training activities like state torture Jenga, hegemonic masculinity. It's like they're quoting Gramsci's prison notebooks. It's creepy. And this, this was like the foundation for the kind of stuff that Sweet Baby is pushing and successfully getting into games nowadays. Back then, they weren't successful at pushing this into games, and it was just workshopping and stuff that you could find. But nowadays, it is. It is in the games they have successfully finished infiltrating. 
The source for this can be seen by scrolling down several blog posts on Silverstring's site. One particular blog post caught our eyes, which led to the theory that Silverstring is part of Digra and that they're creating creepy games together, which led to the creation of this. Funny picture? Content not found. All right, okay. All right, okay. I took, I took a risk opening this and it feels like I'm safe. <laughs> the paranoia was perpetuated among us fast, especially to the ones who just read that picture but didn't double check the full context. The fact is Silverstring has no official affiliation with Digra. Silverstring CCO Andrew Grant Wilson went to a Digra conference on August 5th for the first time, making this the first and only contact between Silverstring and Digra. If you can even count that as a contact. It was also Andrew's first attendance since Silverstring's establishment in 2010. Through our lenses of paranoia at that moment, the Digra conference must have looked like Jesus Camp indeed. Especially when Andrew created a game about torture, it's unclear how it plays from three still images, but Andrew had bad taste, I can say that much. That's Andrew's own creation, and we must have imagined the entire Digra conference were full of people having similar creations, which is highly implausible, and it's a far cry from an actual Jesus camp. And so this is just in defense of, as a KYM user, you've never seen any admins named Aqua. You just go to check now, and it's a user who only joined to post about Gamergate and never even made an avatar. And that moves us on to Digra Feminism and Gamergate by Shira Chess and Adrian Shaw. We are all fishes now. It is likely unnecessary and in such a short space impossible to offer a recap of Gamergate. This is true, and unironically, this would have been something I would have loved to run down with someone like Sargon, who was much more heavily into this stuff and probably remembers a lot more than I do off the top of my head. Most of you already know about the string of events and topics associated with this hashtag. Conspiracy theories, the harassment of women, the attacks on feminism, the defense of gamer identity, consumer revolts, and the never-ending insistence that this is about ethics and games journalism. For those of you who need to catch up, we have written elsewhere on the topic that there are also many recaps of it in the news from the fall of 2014, and many other researchers are working on ways to contextualize and understand the topic. We would be very surprised if there were not many Gamergate panels at Digra in 2015. Although it was not central to Gamergate's machinations, our fishbowl, an event we collaborated on the 2014 conference, pushed Digra into the periphery of Gamergate's vision. As such, after we wrote on the conspiracy theories around academia that came out following links made via the fishbowl, Chess and Shaw 2015, an interesting point was posed to us. Given the negative backlash our fishbowl seemed to have wrought for Digra members and the organization writ large, would, ha would it have all have been better if the reviewers and conference planners had just rejected our submission? After all, it has caused a great deal of grief to many academics that were not primed for this fight. The fishbowl was quite literally called the smoking gun that implicated Digra in the supposed feminist or social justice warrior conspiracy to dismantle hegemonic masculinity, whatever that means. Digra members whose research is funded by DARPA and other U.S. federal government organizations fueled accusations that all games researchers were somehow using games for feminist behavioral control experiments. So it's interesting that the previous, the previous counter argument was they're not being funded by DARPA. That's, that's, merely, that's merely fees that are paid to get in the door. There's no, there's no DIGRA funding by DARPA. And here you have, from their own mouths, DIGRA members whose research is funded by DARPA created a conspiracy that all games researchers were somehow using the games for feminist behavioral control. I don't remember anyone claiming they were all being used for that, but okay. Digra itself was accused of conducting such research directly using games to push a social justice agenda rather than merely being a professional organization where some game scholars presented their work on occasion. Some of the more stalwart gamer gators were eager to hunt down the organization's tax records, while others sought to engage Digra in a dialogue hoping to ensure that future games research had only gamers' best interest at heart, i.e. finding out what makes games fun sans critical research. I feel like that's a, that's a good thing to, to go look into their tax records, honestly. 
Others initiated Operation Digging Digra, getting people to read and summarize articles to find material that might be objectionable to them. Why is this why is this a bad thing? This is a good thing. If you find something wrong with a company, you should dig into them. You should find things from this company to see what they're doing. It's just like it's crazy. That's crazy. By the way, remember how the entire Korean government was discovered to be secretly controlled by a massive conspiracy of weird hyper-radical feminists? I can't help but wonder if there's a connection there somehow. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Can I have the cum cream? Please, the acronyms hurt my pudding brain. I know Digger is like a games developers conference. I just can't remember what the fucking acronym stands for. My brain is so bad with acronyms, dude. Um, several Digra members who were not at Fishbowl or present at the conference, and even game scholars, <laughs> help, who are no longer official members of Digra, but might have once presented at the conference and thus their work was in the digital library, became the targets of harassment for the seemingly unforgivable offense of writing about sexuality, gender, race, or other categories of difference in video games. I like, I like how they're basically just like, well... Well, none of this happened, and they're eager to find things that reinforce their biases. But also, these things did happen, and these people were harassed for it. I was like, please, dude. Keep, keep, your, keep your story fucking straight. And also, I don't believe any of these people when they say harassment anymore. Like, show me the proofs. Like all, like all of these VTubers who like to write themselves fake hate DMs so they can get updutes on the Twitters. Show me, show me the proofs that it's happening, dude. Digra, as an organization and feminist game scholars around the world, were suddenly mired in a surprising and unnerving kind of infamy that they were not prepared for. Given all that has happened, we've been asked and occasionally ask ourselves, should we have even done the fishbowl? Was it worth the toll this has taken on us, our colleagues, and our friends? Although everyone who is harassed is told to simply ignore it, though we have our internal support systems. Avoiding vitriol is an exhausting or is as exhausting as reacting to it. For feminist game scholars in particular, we know many people have had to make the active choice of continue or start, in the case of some graduate students, to do their work in the face of potential future harassment. Criticism is not harassment. Criticism is not harassment. And saying we don't want your feminist dismantling of a patriarchal hegemony, whatever that means, from our video games is not harassment either. Gamergate has had a chilling effect on our online discussions, and it has raised the stakes of doing this kind of research. If we imagine for a moment that without the fishbowl, Digra would have never been a Gamergate target, which may be giving our little event more credit than it deserves, was it worth it? If we knew what was going to happen, would we still have hit send on that submission? Although occasionally we throw our hands up in frustration as our Twitter mentions become crowded with anger, and what it isn't always or about what it isn't always clear. Because of a new accusation, a new video, a new finding from GamerGator Research. It is hard to say we regret the event. Certainly on the day we regretted how off-topic it became, how mired in the inside baseball of academia the discussion regularly found itself, we regret that the notes were taken in such a way that they were mistaken for a transcript. But do we regret the event or that the notes were, for a time anyway, publicly available? For a time anyway? What do you mean by this? We do not. For the reasons we described below, our fishbowl at Digra 2014, the playful is political, ended up being both important and necessary, not despite the ramifications, but because of those very ramifications. How dare you notice our covert attempts. Now this, this gets into current year. This is still from back then, right? But this is like, we see the effects now. For years now, many feminist scholars have debated and analyzed tensions in the video game industry in regards to diversity. Early work in this field gave nod to the complexities of getting younger girls more involved in gaming. Others debated over the hypersexualized bodies produced by hegemonic gaming culture. That's why women need to get hit with the ugly bad in games nowadays. As time moved on, scholars began focusing on diversity topics more specifically on gamer culture. Not only the positive aspects, but also some of the negative aspects. Shaw has explored the ways marketing has constructed gamer identity in a way that shapes how people understand their relationship to gaming culture, leading even people who play a lot of games to not always call themselves gamers. And this is... 
This is the same kind of new speak that I almost fell into when I was younger, where you say the, well, I'm for equality of the genders, but I wouldn't call myself a feminist, right? And people who perpetuate that kind of language are just giving in to the reappropriating of terms that have a definition, but they want that definition to change to fit the ideology that they're pushing. Jason are, and et al. argue that gaming innovation should bear in mind feminist ideologies, while Harvey and Fisher recently argued for post-feminist perspectives in game production. And remember, with Bridge, with Bridge, their whole purpose is ESG did not go far enough. ESG as marketing has failed. We need to embed this in company culture and make it a part of production. As far back as 2014, these people were espousing post-feminist perspectives in game production. That's kind of crazy. Still others have begun to pay attention to casual markets that are specifically geared towards women gamers. Dozens of important articles and topics in this area that space does not allow us to cover here. At the Digra 2013 conference in Atlanta, a feminist track ran parallel with a larger conference. As the same people kept attending the same panels, we felt we were in an echo chamber. Feminist scholars expressed that they felt excluded from the larger conversation, and scholars that didn't specifically identify their research as feminist did not always feel welcomed in the feminist track. Although the topics of intersectionality and diversity were a primary theme of these panels, as has been true for a long time, it is easy to assume, if not actually true, that in game studies, gender is the only category of difference we ever discuss. At academic conferences, generally, it is not uncommon to hear someone say, I'd like to do intersectional research, but the studies I conduct are about white males, so how can I? Much work is left to be done if scholars do not yet realize that the white male identity is an intersectional identity. All identities are. <laughs> oh, fucking course! These people that intersectionality is good, it has in fact been the destruction. Yeah. This, uh, this reminds me of, like, all those articles talking about how white people also need to have a racial awakening. And I was like, that sounds fucking weird, dude. What do you mean? What do you mean by this? And this, this has, like, six more pages. Like, this is pretty long. So I can't, I can't read all of this. Right? I can't, I can't read all of the stuff from here. Uh, but I do, I do have more tabs. I do have more tabs. I, uh, I found this person. Meghna Giants Digra, India 2021 keynote, white protagonism and imperial pleasures in game design. And uh, you might recognize this woman or not from being a writer on Horizon Zero Dawn. Close the fucking tabs, you psychopath. As I attempted to structure and restructure this talk, trying to organize the various imperial pleasures in game design I wanted to talk about, I've tried to work out what's important to include, how deeply to examine certain ideas, how systemic I should be, and how playful or concise. There are parts of this talk which are not fully developed and parts I'm less sure about, but that I felt compelled to include. I dearly wish I had slides, but this week has been a difficult one in the games industry, and the recent investigative report into worker abuses and cover-ups at Activision Blizzard King blamed Bobby Kotick for my lack of slides. Okay, all right. I'm Indian, I'm British, I'm so British, I'm Indian, trying to find myself. Video games are only made possible by the kinds of technologies, knowledge systems, collaborations, platform structures, and even excesses of capitalism, colonialism. In a world of technologically mediated alienation and proliferating images and globalized culture, I would go so far as to say that video game is the highest form of capitalist art. It is in terms of sheer revenue, bigger than Hollywood, and its aesthetics and influence have seeped into movies, books, television, internet culture, and even global politics. It's, uh, it's very interesting that they point out how important they think taking over and infiltrating the video games industry is in order to shape culture. And even, even in the paragraph prior to this, like I haven't read this article fully, for me it is impossible to talk about decolonizing video games without talking about the world and how it's structured. Our world is profoundly shaped and ordered by Anglo-American imperialism. The American empire of global capital and racial and colonial hierarchy is a continuity with British and European colonialism. We do not live in a post-colonial world. And that's ironic 
because what these people participate in when they change Japanese games made for a Japanese audience to suit a more Western sensibility audience, quote unquote, they, they practice this colonialism that they claim to be against. If they did not have double standards, they would not have any at all. It's not impossible to see the video game as a particularly imperial pleasure. Many technologies that power video games were developed by American military funding, and the global industry is still dominated by the Anglo-American imagination. That's weird that they bring up uh, they they bring up the uh, the military funding again. I thought we were supposed to ignore that. Hmm. The tin the tin foil it grows. So she has she has this whole like it's long, dude. It's hella long. It's it's so long. <laughs> what is this? Brings me to the idea of the white protagonism. Umberto Eco talked about the model reader embedded in the text, and various game scholars have brought these ideas into our understanding of how games work in terms of thinking about the model player. That is imagined by the game's designers as they encode meaning into the work. The model player of the video games is the white man. Video games are by cultural default and deeply ingrained designed prejudice. Shaped by the white and male imagination. Man, I wonder, I wonder how culturally uh, cucked the Japanese and Korean developers feel reading this. <laughs> Literally just being told, you guys don't matter. <laughs> I would argue that there is a conscious or subconscious conflation of the model player as the white player. There's an entire talk in that, which I don't have time for today, but the interactive and embodied qualities of video games, I think, cause a deep slippage Jeez, in the concepts Sally, of player and protagonist. Have two comms? The white player has resulted in the white protagonist as the model protagonist. White protagonism is, I would argue, an ingrained and at times even unspoken set of rules, instincts, tendencies, design frameworks around the very idea of protagonism in games. Why can't all commies just have fun in a helicopter ride? That's what I'm saying, dude. That's what I'm saying. The white protagonist is a hero. This leads to the next injunction. The white protagonist is the only entity that matters in the world, which is to say the only human in a world of objects. And like, no wonder fucking sweet baby style narrative games fucking suck if that's how they view them. They're like, my, my protagonist is the only thing that matters. Everything else is a world of objects. I just wanted to play video games. I know. I know. The white protagonist will increase in power as the story unfolds. You fucking cishet white males and your power fantasies of gaining experience points and leveling up. How dare you? <laughs> That's called progression. The white protagonist experiences limitation of their power solely in order to overcome it. Is this why they keep writing Mary Sue characters that have like literally no obstacles to overcome? They have no training, they have no character arc, they just can do everything all at once. The white protagonist must act and rarely be acted upon. We could also say, the white protagonist will decide. Well, that's just not true. There are plenty of things you don't have control over in video games. What do they mean by this? What do they... <laughs> what do they mean by this? Shadows of Mordor, where domination is a key ability slash pleasure offered to the player. These people are so far off of their rockers, dude. What the hell? Confirmed never played a game. The white protagonist will be forgiven. <laughs> the white protagonist is an individualist. Well, yes, it's supposed to be. How are you going to have a protagonist as a collectivist? What do they mean by this? Character development is inherent whiteness. What did they mean by this? Probably the same thing that fucking museum that promoted that like aspects of white supremacist culture. The white protagonist is uniquely suited to protagonism. Like look how fucking long this is chat. The white protagonist wields a gun. I don't think this one requires much more contextualization. Does she only play Call of Duty? I don't understand. It's all Marxist crap. It really is. 
The white protagonist does not see race, nor does the game see the white protagonist through the lens of race. Good? Like, when, when games have race being a factor that is seen, it's usually because there's some in-game culture that's been oppressed or genocided or they've had to do something weird in the world and it, it's cohesive in the lore. Like Albed in Final Fantasy X. You miss the mind-breaking orc gameplay? <laughs> Conclusion. <laughs> What's like the last paragraph here? What's like... Literally the la- she's an award-winning writer and narrative designer. Her game 80 Days, an anti-colonial retro-futurist retelling of Vern's classic novel, won the help, Independent Game Festival's Narrative Award, earned four BAFTA nominations, including Best Story, and was named Time's Game of the Year. She won a Writers Guild of Great Britain award in 2015 for her work on 80 Days and a Writers Guild of America award in 2018 as a part of Horizon Zero Dawn's writing team. I have never fucking heard of 80 Days. What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? You can give me butt scratches like I'm a real pet! Their one example of a game that the protagonist controls everything is Shadow of War slash Mordor. The game you have zero power to if slash when your mind control orcs will betray you and fight against you. Sorry to hear about your bussy. Yeah, sorry to hear about your bussy. So. That's, uh. <laughs> uh that's, that's that woman's introduction. Alright, and we had. We have another, we have another one. The genre mashup Thirsty Suitors was a refuge for its developers. Outer Loop Games founder Chandaya Ekanayake, a narrative designer Megna Giant on Thirsty Suitors. And this was, let me see if I can control F and find it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we pulled all of that in. Ika loves to call this a baby Yakuza, which I really love as a description. There's really a sense of joyful abundance, like we're presenting you with all of these delightful things to do, but hopefully it has some focus as well. With regard to skateboarding, it comes into the story as well. It's the same with cooking. Do these parts grow throughout the production? It grew through production, but we also knew the narrative was the focus of the game. We wanted all of these, and this is where the baby Yakuza comparison is, disparate game mechanics to weave in and out through the narrative that came through iteration. So as, as you can see, this is another really long article where they compare their game to Yakuza for some reason. Uh, <laughs> and it's again the, the, the Meg Megnanya Jayanth. I can't pronounce this woman's name. And that brings us to some some Polish paper. I'm pretty sure this is Polish, written in 2023. Digital games and the category of auteur, an intersectional approach. And I thought this was interesting as a paper that was written. This also has 247 fucking pages because of course it does. And uh, down here, let me let me move my browser to the side a bit so you can see. I have, I have Jayant's name here. I have Jayant's name in my search field. It pops up 140 fucking times. This woman was quoted in whatever the fuck this, this research paper was. 140 times. And I was like, Jesus fucking Christ. And so, one of the ones I wanted to highlight, because I obviously cannot go through 247 pages... Was uh was this this little uh this little piece here? Tramis, at least until Cocktail Visions 1992 took takeover by Sierra Online, had considerable freedom of expression, and her pivotal post-colonial titles were intended for Afro-Caribbean audiences for educational purposes. Even Jayanth, who participated in the production of some AAA games such as Horizon, primarily created scripts for indie developers. Love and La Pense particularly benefited from tools that facilitated game creation for small groups or individuals and distribution, like itch.io. Without these tools, the re-emancipation of females in the gaming industry over the past decade would have been challenging, if not impossible. 
Since their games were mainly destined for niche audiences, all mentioned autrices had limited funds or creative possibilities at their disposal. However, they overcame technological or economical constraints by relying on more textual means of expression than on images or video sequences. Video game creation involves constant struggles with software, hardware, and dominant ideologies. Hence, Tramis, Jayanth, Le Pense, and Love expressed their ideas through the most creatively accessible modality, text, and did so successfully. Nevertheless, these autrices, autrices, I don't know how to pronounce that either, were not afraid of narrative experiments such as incorporating full motion videos, rewriting well-known gaming and literary classics with a post-colonial perspective, or employing meta-commentary on digital surveillance and game conventions. I like the uh, re-emancipation of females in the gaming industry. What is that? What does that even mean? I like how it mentioned the Sierra while ignoring the existence of Roberta Williams. And I also, I also thought this was interesting because in this, in this, if I clear my search field, DIGRA, DIGRA and their conference texts have been quoted in this uh, research thing 20 times. I fought the law, transgressive play and the implied player. Uh, Gamergate's avatar in DIGRA slash FDG, abstract proceedings of the first international joint conference of DIGRA and FDG. We got, we got like, Horizon Zero Dawn, the educational influence of video games in counteracting gender stereotypes. And I was like, okay, we got, we got some search queries for Digra in here. We got some search queries for, for that Meg lady. What about, what if I, what, what about, what about if I just type in Kim Belair? That woman that we watched uh, several hours ago, the the CEO and co-founder of Sweet Baby. That's interesting. Screenshot from Sable Shedworks 2021 depicting the cell shaded graphics and omnipresent desert landscape. Following Falcon Age, Jay Ant contributed to another project resonating with her life. Echoing renowned philosopher Rosie Brydotti's concept of nomadism. In Sable, developed by London-based Shedworks Digital Limited, Jayanth served as a narrative designer. Kim Belair and David Bedard handled the writing, while Greek developer Ionis Pitsitkatalis, I can't pronounce that either, acted as the lead designer. During development, Jayanth described Sable as a project combining elements of speculative fiction and the ancient world set in a canyon desert filled with ruins of bygone civilizations. It's, uh, it's very interesting that Kim Belair and this Jay Anth woman worked together. That's, uh, it's ve it's very, that's very interesting to me that first we're told that it's a complete tinfoil conspiracy theory with no merit that DARPA had any funding in DIGRA, and then we learn from DIGRA's own mouth that there was indeed DARPA funding for some of their members, but that doesn't mean all of their members. And then we find out some of the people involved with Digra have now worked closely together with people like Kim Belair, who went on to co-found Sweet Baby, and people who were involved in the Silverstream Media Group, which had this entire conspiracy around it, with the Lego Butts Felix person, are now working for Sweet Baby under Kim Belair, and it's, uh, it's all this, like, tangled, tangled fucking web of string. Funny how that works, isn't it? This, you bought Sable a while ago, this is making you worry about it? Sable was one of the first things that Sweet Baby worked on. And that, that led me to a few, like, stray, a few stray things at the end here to sort of wrap this up. I found someone named Rourke Bywater. Uh, of course, they're going to the uh, game developer convention. And they're a contract narrative systems designer for a group called Hexagram IO a global remote game development studio using social simulation to drive new forms of play. So this person, this person, they retweeted the Rebecca Valentine IGN of the developers crying that they're getting fired because nobody cares about ESG. It's not making money. They also, they also retweeted, there's like Palestine stuff, that doesn't matter. Uh, they also retweeted the sweet baby harassment nonsense. So they're, they're on board with Sweet Baby, baby. Uh, they retweeted specifically Felix here as well. And so you have Hexagram, which says that it's a social simulation to drive new forms of play. 
which is what Silverstream was doing, which is what Digra was talking about, which is what the supposed tinfoil hat DARPA funding was also part of with their immersive project. So is Hexagram another form of Sweet Baby? Is this, is this even worse than Sweet Baby and we just don't know about it? I just, I don't know. I didn't have time to look into Hexagram. I just thought this was interesting. I thought that was interesting. And there's even an archived page on DARPA for the strategic social interaction modules. In contemporary military operations, service members are called on to act as street level diplomats, negotiators, peacekeepers, law enforcement officers, and relief workers. Because of their military training, however, focused primarily on kinetic operations, many service members, especially those junior in age and experience, find those roles unfamiliar and challenging. Most existing training for non-kinetic operations is limited in time and scope and typically emphasizes general familiarization with language and culture. Rather than building fundamental skills that enable such specific knowledge to be implemented successfully, while well, some highly effective military training programs focus on enhancing service members' capacity to function in non-kinetic social encounters. The Strategic Social Interaction Modules program seeks to develop innovative, cost-effective methods for training warfighters in the basic human dynamic skills and proficiencies needed to enter into social encounters, regardless of the cultural, linguistic, or other contextual parameters. And it's also interesting that recently we've gone over articles on this stream about the Department of Defense claiming to have dismantled its ESG apartment or department, but however, they didn't actually dismantle it and they are still pushing ESG doctrine through K through 12 schools in Washington, DC. We also found that the Pentagon claimed the same thing, that the Pentagon had closed down their ESG sector, but all they did was exactly what Bridge said they were going to do, which is remove all of the focal point of the diversity officers in operation and make it a point of everyone else who's hired there to have to push the ideology together. And so I thought, I thought, you know, I thought it's, an it's an interesting connection. What, uh, why do these people talk like a shitty early gen text AI? <sighs> oh my god. And uh, I think uh, I think we don't have we don't have time to watch it. But here's another video in 2022 of Kim Belair, co-founder of Sweet Baby. And Megna Jayanth, back from back from the Horizon Zero Dawn, back from the Digra India conference, having having a fireside chat. This is the background, and I, I think it's it's super interesting for me to to ask you about what you thought was it was important to kind of put across, or yes. um, what what you can hold back, because I think that's something that we don't talk about as narrative designers a lot, right? Like what we hold back from the player. Um, and what informs our work, but doesn't necessarily get communicated. I think I, I feel like I left you huge numbers of documents about like culture, history, cosmology, um, you know, the types of crafts that people were using, types of materials, um, how that, you know, kind of um, formed the, you know, family structures, things like that. And, yeah. and you know, but all of that, again, is like, this is the background. And I, I think it's it's super interesting for me to, to ask you about what. And it's interesting that she mentioned, you know, the having having to like sort of put stuff in there that people aren't aware of. Because, again, we have this the Sayel post over here of this guy at the Spider-Man conference. Give people stuff you know they want so you can inject things yeah. that maybe they aren't familiar with or maybe they don't know they want but make them like that stuff. What happened, my nigga? Give it all, it all comes full circle to current year, chat. It all comes full fucking circle. Uh, it's, uh, I did not intend to have this many fucking tabs on Sweet Baby, but like it just, it just kept getting wildly out of fucking control. Like, the more I, like, looked into one person, the more I found another connection, like, with the sweet baby CEO and, and, uh, the, the Janaya person. It's your crime boss here, Kersha, your favorite Rock A City streamer. That's me! I love crime bobs! Aware sweet baby is just a start? Sweet baby is just one of many Hydra heads. Maybe, maybe that Rourke Bywater person who's in the, uh, the Hexagram IO company? Maybe that's something to look into as well. 
I I was like killing myself. <laughs> I needed sleep, dude. I needed sleep. I used to be a man. You've made me into a crumpled ball of steel. Thank you for doing all this digging. I hope I hope people use like the digging that I've done as a branching off point as well. Cause I know I know there are people who are far more capable than me who will be able to find out things much better than I will and remove some of the tinfoil from these conspiracies, right? Because, like, uh, again, the, the, like, the DARPA digra funding, that's still, that's still very tinfoil. That's still very tinfoil. It's like when you defeat the boss, but he reveals he's actually the weakest of the four fiends. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring up another post, because, uh, once again, you guys know where I got a lot of the initial information about the old Gamergate stuff would be, would be very hard to go down this rabbit hole if I didn't have but all of time? that old information about Anita and Zoe on hand. Uh, but these, uh... This person saying, I love how these people think they still have any power. Oh, my sweet summer child. That is, that is unfortunately what we all thought. They had way more power than we had imagined, unfortunately. And now, now we need to, now we need to fix it. Now we need to fix it, man. <laughs> just play good games. It's not hard. People freak out about Gamergate and whatever, but the issue is just that they can't think hard enough to not buy AAA games. Buy solid indie games. They're out there. It's that easy. You can do that on a small scale, but you're not going to convince all of the, like, console lord normies to stop buying their Marvel slop. So you have to, you have to fight it a bit more smartly than just don't buy the game. Never forget DARPA and DOD also had hands in G.I. Joe and Transformers comics and cartoons. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, like some of the stuff we read today, uh, they even admitted themselves. Like, it's, it was normal for, for the Department of Defense to have a hand in funding video games. <laughs> Help. Some of the indie devs are 100% behind this, too. Yeah, I mean, they start as indie devs. They don't start as AAA agents. They have to start somewhere. Remember Honorable Chatters never spend more than $20 on a computer game. What's that? $20. Now is the time for the $120 video game. It's entirely a culture war raid, uh, waged on social media. 99.9% .9 of people who play video games do not know or care about this issue. They should know and they should care. Because this doesn't have to just do with video games. Video games being infected and co-opted is a symptom of our culture dying in general. The people who don't want to pay attention and don't care will be swept up with the tide. It's going to affect them. You, you might not want to care about politics, but politics has an interest in you. Don't forget to play Raid Shadow Legends. When your video game releases, hopefully the end of the year, it'll cost $2.99. Hell yeah. It's not the only form of media. It's not the only form of media being controlled. And if you have control and influence over entertainment, over the cultural identity, you're able to f terraform the culture in the way that you want. Make games, that's how you fight back, yeah. Kirsch is the best final boss. DARPA stole mods made by players back in the day for the military version of Arma? What the fuck? I mean, I'm sure there's a ton of shit that I don't know about in regards to that, because it's like, this was... This was all on the fly researching people. Like, I, I went down, I went down the, like, Gamergate uh, info that Kiwi had, because I was like, oh yeah, Felix, I remember that person from Gamergate, so I might as well bring up their connection to that, because it, it's relevant to them working at Sweet Baby and being a shit cunt now. I did not expect to fall down an entirely uh, horizontal rabbit hole adjacent to all of that. That was fucking holy shit. <laughs> And people get way too schizo about things they have no control over, to be honest. I mean, I would rather know what's going on and see what I can do to try and fix things I disagree with than say, this is a scale larger than myself. I might as well give up and let my ideological enemies take over the country, essentially, right? Like, it's like, I can only fix things on a small scale. I can only have influence around, like, directly around me. But that doesn't mean that I can't be a butterfly that flaps my wings and makes a wave, you know? It's the main thing you hate about politics. You hate them and you want nothing to do with them, but you have to actually pay attention to them because they do this shit, yeah? Knowing about something that you can't control is how you work to shield and dodge the direct assault of it. Keeping, keeping yourself ignorant is not a way to win anything. That's not a way to win, dude. It's no longer a rabbit hole. It's a foxhole. <sighs> Nerf footballs, grenades were a thing. Military pays attention to what prospective recruits have interest and innate skill with. Yeah. 
Better to go down fighting than to kneel in submission. Hard, hard agree. Hard agree. I, uh... I'm gonna see if I can open my browser, because we are... We are almost two hours over my stream time. And I had my, my main browser closed, so I can... I'm gonna see if I can open that so I can find someone to raid. God, thank you guys for staying strapped in for this... This long foxhole exploration with me. I think it's very important to remember the connections that these people working at Sweet Baby and working at these other companies had with Gamergate, how it went out of control, how we didn't win, we very much lost, and how we need to do something about it now. It's not just about the video games anymore, it's about them injecting ideology. I just wanted to play video games and these people did not want to leave me alone. Let's stay here 24-7. Need another donathon. I'll have to, I'll have to once again <laughs> catch up on thank yous tomorrow and hopefully we can take a break we can take a break from nonsense uh in the in the political realm and in the news and i can i can play some fucking peppermint patty man i need, I need my peppermint patty man after this dude my my one good glowy my one good glowy it's been us versus them for decades now yeah but it gets it gets like people have to do the work to figure out the connections these people have and typically, it's it's only been, you know, the underground autists who are uh, very much resoundly hated who do that kind of thing. You love Deadly Prem? It's such a fucking good game. It's such a fucking good game. I My throat is sore as fuck because I ran out of water like two and a half hours ago. <laughs> I'm sorry, donos have to stop until next month. Don't apologize. Don't apologize. I want you remember. Don't ever feel pressured to like dono or sub or do whatever here. Uh, if you if you Welcome want to, to and if you can, sluts. I'm very grateful. But always put yourself first. You always always come before me. Do not ever feel any pressure. I I appreciate you spending time here and hanging out. You don't don't need to don't need to do that, man. Take care of yourself. <laughs> oh God, my computer frozen. What's new in Chrome? Oh, it updated. Oh no. Oh no, not like this. Still alive? Am I blue screening? I can't tell what's happening. Ow, mow, mow, mow. Everything is gonna like fucking skyrocket into action and I'm either gonna blue screen or it's gonna st Oh my god. What a way to end stream! <laughs> I hard froze! What is it? I'm being pressured to dono. Please let me go, Findom! No! I don't even want to make a Findom joke right now. As big, sincere! <laughs> don't go into the light! I opened my browser and everything died, chat! <laughs> All the tabs! Let me let me just uh, find some booty to raid. Is P is Peeba live? It's not- I know she starts at 9 p.m. Is, P is Peeba live? Enjoy your stay. <laughs> Have a good night. She's not. What? She took the day off. What? I thought she wasn't streaming yesterday too. Oh no, I hope she's okay. She's feeling sick. Oh no! I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking lick that Benoit. I'm gonna lick her. Worked out that I went long? I guess so. I guess fucking so. <laughs> Don't spook me while well, I'm not looking at I'm you, not chat. I'm into the frog vomit butthole, but like, I'm curious if he's done it. Meow meow. Thanks for being the fox that goes down these horrifying rabbit holes. Thanks for accompanying me down horrifying rabbit holes. And hopefully we'll be able to pick out conspiracy theory from actual fact. You know, hopefully hopefully more people will look into the connections between like the sweet baby employees and whatever else might be happening. A shit's a shit's gone fucking nuts. A shit's gone kinda nuts. Let's see, Homestead is online at the moment. There's a there's a fillion. There's a fillion online. I can go I can go and touch her since we, we're still in the talks about what's happening. Phil yeah, we could go Filipino boy time. I love I love my, my Filipino boy apparently. <laughs> Filipino Frank! Every time I hear Frank, I can only think of filthy Franku. Also, Revenant! Reven Revenential taxes! 50 gift members! You're fucking crazy, dude. What the hell are you doing? What the fuck are you- That's- That's-, that's fucking 50! That's a lot! 
You can't, you can't fluster me at the end of stream, dude. That's not fair. That's not, that's not fair, fluster. Anya. And Michael, Michael Stewart, thank you for the, the fucking last minute $50, dude. You both are on crack. What the actual fuck? What the, did you high tier moral us? Now I have to dono? No, don't do that! No, don't. Gabriel, thank you for the $5. I will, I will catch up on the thank yous that I have missed uh, tomorrow at the beginning of stream. And then hopefully get some peppermint patty, man. I tried my best to stay on topic, chat. I tried my best to keep my tangents in check so we could get through all of my crazy, weird, sweet baby Gamergate tabs. I'll make- I'll make a thread- I'll make a thread for all of this shit that I dug up in Discord so you can peruse it at your leisure since, you know, some of these things are like 200 plus pages. Can't- can't read all of that on stream chat. It's impossible. I forgot to load up the raid because I have brain damage. I have brain damage and I'm- I'm trying- I'm trying to keep talking with my broken throat. Oh god, everything is so slow, my computer hates it. Look at a flippin' Foxu raid, remember? To be normal, non-glowy people when we when we raid others. Wanna be very, very nice and kind and non-glowy in their chats. Thank you for hanging out with me on this makeup findom Friday. Cause uh yesterday I was on a side scrollers podcast. Check that out on their channel if you haven't. It was a fun ass time. I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. 